How you doing, boys and girls? I am Tony the Wizard, and today I will be conversating with Sonia Balcazar, and today she will be dining with the Wizard. Welcome, Sonia. ¿Cómo estás? Good, good. How are you? Good, good, good. Let's get hyped up. Let's get amped because <laughs> I like to eat, I like to drink, and I like to talk shit. So if uh, you guys are tuned in because you guys like to hear us eat, well, maybe not hear us eat, but know what we're going to eat. <laughs> What we're going to drink and talk shit. Uh, believe me, this is it. If you guys like a lot, a lot of uh, hypothetical scenarios, if you guys like a lot of like real true stories, and but I will not mention no names to protect the innocents, if they are innocents. <laughs> <laughs> but we will be having a good time tonight. You guys have tuned in on a Thursday evening. So, okay, so here's what we did. Uh, uh, I hit you up early today and I asked you, what do you want to eat? You know, what did you have in mind? You go, my favorite food is? Mexican food. Mexican food. Is it because you're probably Mexican? <laughs> no, well, okay. You, I grew up eating Mexican food. Right. Right. But that's not the reason why. Like, I grew up eating Mexican food and then, you know, you're like, okay, I have that food every day, all the time. Right. And then when you get older, you try different things. And I, I mean, growing up, I was really picky eater, so I didn't try a lot of things. But uh -huh. when I got older, like um, high school and like after I turned 18, I was like, you know what? I'm going to start trying different foods. Uh -huh. and, well, okay. I didn't eat seafood before 18. Now, when you're talking about seafood, seafood, are you talking about like ceviche, mariscos, or salmon, and anything. lobster? Just anything had to do with I the sea. I was seat. like, mm, seafood, no. Mm, no. Okay. And then when, I don't know, for some reason, when I turned 18, I was like, I want to try me some seafood. Okay. And so, and then I tried, I tried shrimp and I was like, okay, that's not bad. And then my sister's like, shrimp is amazing. I can't believe it you is. don't even eat. I'm like, okay. So I tried that. It's good. I tried salmon and I was like, oh, that's, that's good. Pretty good. Yeah. You know? And I started trying different things and I'm like, well, I don't even know why I didn't try this stuff when I was younger. Like, why was I so picky? I don't know. What about tuna? Like chicken of the sea? Mm. Well, <laughs> I mean, I can eat it. I eat it for protein if I have to, but I mean, I don't like tuna. I like, you know what? Uh, okay, I'm going to tell you a quick story. Oh, my God. I was buying tuna sandwiches from fucking Subway for a good, like, year, maybe year and a half, okay? And then just recently, they came out that a study shows that they found no tuna in those tuna sandwiches. What, what was it? Just like fish. <laughs> but we they, they, they can't even identify the fucking fish like a secret meat yeah like i guess mystery, mystery meat, meat. <laughs> exactly just like the no just like the the jack-in-the-box tacos Ooh, mystery meat i don't even know what's in the, you know what but i still eat jack-in-the-box tacos like but they're good late at night it's like 2 a.m you're like what i'm gonna have me some tacos yeah somebody <laughs> told me that it was soybean probably so i go so it's actually healthy <laughs> an excuse for it. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce my food. Okay. Um, I got some camarones a la diabla, which is pretty much shrimp, like and sauteed in some hot sauce. A la diabla means like, like, if I were to translate it, for those of you who don't speak Spanish, camarones a la diabla means like deviled shrimp. Mm -hmm. That would be the best. Mm -hmm. And then rice and beans, of course, traditional, uh, the best dynamic duel. Uh, uh, there's no better couple than... Rice and beans. Beans, there you go. Don't say Kanye and Kim. No, <laughs> rice and beans, okay? But now here's one thing that I don't like about every restaurant that makes camarones a la diabla, mm -hmm. okay? They always, I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to prove it. There it goes right here. They always leave the tail on. Oh, yeah. So we have to kind of like pull it and then yeah. eat it. Yeah. I don't like it. Get all that. messy in your fingers exactly. and everything. And, like, and then I got my mm -hmm. corn tortillas. I like corn. I only have I'm a flour. flour girl. I, like flour. I like flour every once in a while, but all depends on what I'm eating it with. Mm. So then, say, well, what do you have with corn versus what do you have with flour? Flour, almost like if I'm just making more of a burrito, you know, uh, okay, like yeah, yeah, like yeah. flour, rice, you know, like or some beans, rice, mm. maybe some fucking guacamole con queso or whatever, mm. and I just fuck it up like that. Yeah. But uh, uh, usually, if I have like what I'm having now, I'll have it with. You know, corn. corn yeah. yeah. But I love them both, you know, mm. flour and corn. So I'll have, I'll have corn, like, are you, are you done introducing your food? Yes, I'm done introducing my food. <laughs> let me introduce mine. <laughs> Go for it. Okay. All right. So, oh, Mexican food. Okay. So I wanted Mexican food because yes. that's my favorite. Um, but, but like I, I was saying earlier, like 
when I got older, like when I was 18, I was like, I'm gonna try all these different foods. I started trying all these different foods. Uh -huh. I started trying Thai food. Um, I like Thai food. You know, Japanese food, like yeah. just venturing out. Uh -huh. And then I realized after trying all these different foods, I still like Mexican food the best. Me, so I came, exactly. I'm like, no, nah, um, Mexican food's the bomb. <laughs> I, I mean, I know some people disagree, but in my opinion, this is just me, I think Mexican food is the best food in the world. It is. But that's just me. And if you don't like my answer, then who gives a shit? Well, it is so. the best food. So I have some tacos, carne asada, uh -huh. tacos. Um, she wanted no onions. No onions. I can't stand. Okay. Okay. I know it's supposed to go on your tacos, but right. I can't stand <laughs> onions. Okay. I love them. I like sauteed onions. Okay. That's good. But not raw cut onions. They're just... Ooh, the oh, crunch no. and the... I love it. And then, and then you, you get like, onion breath. That's good. You have onion breath for like ever. <laughs> you brush your teeth, it still tastes like onion. I'm like, oh, yes, no. Yes, exactly. That's why I just, I do carne asada, tacos. Okay. Right? That's my go-to. You only wanted two, but they said they have, the, um, the only special they have is the three tacos con arroz y frijoles. So, and then I brought the salsa on the side. Mm -hmm. So you can pour the salsa if you want. I think we have, there's two of them. So I don't know which one supposed to go. This one looks more like it goes on the tacos. This one over here looks like it goes more on the right, chips. But it's up to you. What it tastes like. However you like it. Mm. And these are tortillas hecho a mano. Like they made oh, them. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah. That's why I like going over there because they, they make it right there, right in front Wait, of you. Wait, that's corn? It looks like it, it, it's corn. It looks but like flour. Yeah, it does. Hmm. So I like it. But which salsa is better? Mm, this one. This one has more flavor. Uh -huh. Oh, wait. That one's a little tangy. Spicy? No, it's just a little tangy. Like, has like a lot of lemon or something in it. Mm. That's good, though. But, yeah, I think this one's better. Mm. Now, since we're eating, do you cook a lot? Are you a great cooker, Sonia? Am I a great cooker? Mm -hmm. mm, that's a good question. Um... I will tell you this, I'm a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. So if I can't do anything that's <laughs> perfection or bomb or like really good, I won't do it. And so like, I love to cook, but I gotta have time uh -huh. and I gotta have the ingredients and I gotta have, you know, um, I just gotta want to be in the mood to cook. So I have a few specialties. I have this- um, Cup of noodles? <laughs> in college, <laughs> I was eating cup of noodles to survive. Wait, I was eating bread to survive in college. <laughs> um, but no, I make this. The I actually probably should have made them today. I should. I probably should have made it. It's these um, chicken chili tacos. Okay. Oh my god, it's so good. But I cook the chicken with um, the chilies in a in a, a crock pot, like uh -huh. a slow cooker. For hours, and so then all the chiles are like they they like marinate with the chicken. It just oh my god, it tastes so good. It's really? hot. It's hot. Okay, but it tastes so good. And so I put um, I put that with the cheese and everything afterwards. It just it's really good. I have to I have to make you some. All right, I have to make you some. And That'll then work. Um, so I love making that. And then I also love desserts. So I like you know. Um, baking different desserts and making different desserts, but I have a specialty too. And all my friends know, cause I, I bring it to, actually they request that I bring it to the potlucks and the parties and, and stuff, but I make this really good bread pudding, mm. but the bread pudding has rum oh, shit. and butterscotch. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Oh my God, it's so good. But cause you could taste the rum in it and, um, and the butterscotch and it's not your average. Does it get your buzz or is it is alcohol burned off already? It's. A, you can taste it, so you you know there's alcohol in it, but it's not um, overwhelming. Hmm. You know, it's really sweet. So um, that's my other specialty. But okay. um, oh, I also make this really good mac and cheese with jalapenos. Oh, it's good. That sounds interesting because I'm not really a mac and cheese person, mm -hmm. but the jalapeno part sounds interesting. It's good. It's it's hot. I mean, it's hot. It has a lot of flavor in it. Um, but it's it's good. It takes forever to make. For real? It takes forever, but I do it. <laughs> well, I'm not that much of a cook, but if I have to, I'll make something to survive. Yeah. But I don't really, really cook a lot. 
That's why I have to make money so I can buy whatever the hell I want. <laughs> well, okay. So that's the thing. I'm a perfectionist, so it's not like I'm cooking that stuff every week or right. anything. It's just, I mean, those are just when I'm in the mood to, like, get down in the kitchen. Otherwise, I'm I'm buying quick eats. I'm going to the taco place around the block from my house. Exactly. Like, I'm there. All, they already know my order when I walk in. <laughs> yeah, give me the usual. Okay, Alex, introduce your food. Yeah, I got a burrito de uh, carnita. Carnitas. Carnitas. <laughs> um, with, um, what is this, guacamole and uh, sour cream? Yep. It's pretty good. It has um, rice and beans and cilantro, everything. So it's pretty good? Hell yeah. Yeah, Thank this you. food is from Los Compadres. It's off of Anaheim and Pine in the city of Long Beach. If you guys ever want to go and check it out, tell them uh, Tony A sent you and the promo code is Rolling Radio. Give you 20% discount. I'm just kidding. <laughs> they don't know my ass. But just try it they anyway. Might you know, never know. If you have enough people going yeah, in exactly. there. Yeah, exactly. But, but you know what's crazy? Okay, because at least once a day, at least once a day, somebody comes up to me and goes, Hey, you're from that rodeo, radio. <laughs> Rodeo, radio. And I'm like, nah, bro. Get it right. Yeah, exactly. Right. You're the rodeo, wizard. Hey, the and Tony A, the wizard, bro. You know, and then they're like, oh, okay, what do they call you wizard? Because I got the magic stick, homie. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, but but at least once a day, but somebody recognized me over there and they were like, hey, you're that guy from the rodeo radio. And I'm rodeo. Yeah, yeah. I watch you. Tune in tonight, dining with the wizard. Hell yeah. So if you're watching, that was me, mm -hmm. homie. Mm -hmm. So. But yeah, you know what? I like to eat. So one day, I was laying in bed, and uh, in my butt hugger, I'm only playing. <laughs> so I was laying in bed, and then I just said to myself, you know what? I want to do is do fucking something different. I don't want to interview nobody. I just want to talk shit. I want to drink. I want to eat and oh, have people watch. Oh, that's how. That's how this. Dining with the wizard came out. Yeah, so then I just thought about it, and then I called him up, and I said, hey, we're going to do something different tonight. And so I called on my boy Cujo and I said, hey, man, you want to come through and just fucking chill with me? You yeah. want to have beer there? Fuck yeah. Dope. So he came down yeah. and it was a fucking success. Sweet. So now I'm working on my other one called uh, Ghetto Sports, mm. where you get your daily uh, uh, sports analyst, uh, 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 sports analytics from unprofessional perspective, where we just talk <laughs> shit so, about every fucking team that we hate, every player that we want gone. So that's what we're going to do. Mm. And um, then... We got the verse for verse, meaning we're going to have st rappers going battling at once every month here at Rodeo and Radio. Mm. So that's that, another thing we got going on. And I want to announce, because somebody hit me up and told me, uh, uh, Mega Man, because on my last show, I said this, uh, whoever drops $100 is my next guest on Dining with the Wizard. What? Yeah. <laughs> Had a couple of people in the past that did that. Actually, one guy did that. He said, I don't want to come on, but I'm... Just requesting somebody uh this artist for you to interview okay yeah. i said okay I, I, i'll reach out to her she said yes but she doesn't live too close so she said when i'm closer i'll let you know and we'll do it mm -hmm. so i assured him that so now mega man this guy uh my boy mega man much love he uh, dropped 100 bucks and he just kept dropping money 450 10 bucks 20 bucks like he, he dropped so <laughs> much money i was like stop <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Don't give me any more of your money. Y yes. <laughs> so what happened was people are now asking, hey, I thought it. But here's what he told me because he's taking care of some personal issues, mm -hmm. personal uh, business. He said, uh, Tony, uh, uh, I still want to co come on your show, but uh, I'll give you a date soon. Mm. So for those of you that are asking, hey, I thought Mega Man. Mega Man is taking care of some personal business. Mega Man's my boy. Mega Man don't live too far from here. Mega Man will be here. Okay, so that's it. I'm waiting on his date. So don't get your panties <laughs> in a bunch, you know. Be patient. Yes, patient. exactly. That's one thing that people mm -hmm. don't have. Don't have patience. patience. Nobody has any patience Just like anymore. me. I don't have any fucking patience. <laughs> That's what I wanted for Christmas, and, and I got Damn. green socks. Damn. So. Coal. Yeah. You got coal from Santa. <laughs> I have a question about your food, because I know some people are picky about uh -huh. this. Are you, like, okay with your foods touching? Like, you know how some people... They're like, I don't want my, f on a plate, like, I don't want my rice to touch my beans, or I don't want the broccoli <clears throat> to touch the chicken, or, you know what I mean? Some people are like that, like, Sometimes. everybody's nodding. <laughs> are you cool? I, I love mixing my food all together, like. Sometimes I'm like that, and sometimes I just don't care, but there, there are certain foods that I will say I don't want them touching, mm. okay? Now, 
I've got a funny story I want to share now. <laughs> I told you I'm full of stories, okay? Go to the donut shop down the street. Two white guys walk in there. They look kind of odd because this is more of a, a Raza Mexican little city, okay? Mm-hmm. Two tall white guys. And they're arguing with each other. Mm-hmm. Fuck you, now fuck you. You know, well, well, well why you got to drive with me today? Well, you, you didn't have to get in the fucking car. Well, <laughs> well uh, you, you, you never stop here for donuts. Well, I want a fucking donut. And they were arguing. I'm like, shit. And I'm standing right behind them. So the lady says, uh, what would you like, sir? I want a long john. You know, and she goes, long john? It's a chocolate bar. Mm. He goes, that's a long john right there. Mm-hmm. And then uh, um, he goes, I'll take a long john too. He goes, why you always got to fucking copy me? So they were, and then the lady goes, you guys are brothers, right? And they go, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> so and then, here's the funny part. The lady grabs one bag and she puts both long johns in there. Mm. And he goes, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, take it out. Mm-mm. He goes, I don't want mine touching his. I'm like, damn. I'm like. I can see why. Yeah. I can see why. <laughs> but that just didn't sound right. I don't want mine touching his. I want a long john. I want a long john. Please. I don't mind touching his. Yeah. You know, you don't yeah I mean, you, you don't want to know what went through my mind. Two long johns. Okay. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> so don't see, let like, your donut. The, the moral of the story is. Yes. Don't let your donuts, especially your long johns, touch each other. Yeah. Okay. I have another story, but I'll say that was when I start drinking. Okay. See, like right now, I don't know if you saw, I always like kind of corner my I'm rice. I'm watching you, I know. You know, and I yeah. scoot this over here. Oh. So like, you're like organizing your food. Yes, yes. Like, I'm... Well, um, I do that sometimes. What do you call that, I, that OCD? Yeah, OCD. Okay. Yeah, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder with your food. Usually when I go eat... <laughs> with like my homies or whatever, I'll, they'll watch me and I'll, and I'll be like this. And I'll fix shit like this. Mm-hmm. I'll put this over here. Gotta oh be yeah, straight. You're, you're OCD. <laughs> you know, I want this right here. And then they're like, what the fuck are you doing? Don't worry about me. You know? Yeah. So. Oh, oh my God, let me tell you a story. <clears throat> I had a coworker. Uh-huh. Legitimate OCD. Uh-huh. Legitimate. And his desk his desk was fully like, like you said, everything, nothing was like off. Everything was like perfect. His pencils, like everything was just immaculate and all lined up. And then we shared, we shared the office space. And so he came in one day and he's just like, he had this, like his face looked red and he was all mad. And I'm like, I'm looking at him like, are you okay? Mm -hmm. He's like, somebody's fucking with me. And I'm like, what, what do you mean? He's like, somebody's fucking with me. I think somebody is coming in at night and fucking with me and they're messing with my desk. And I'm like, what? He's like, come here, let me show you. And then I walk over to his desk and something was like off like that. (laughs) And I'm like, what's wrong? He's like, look. I'm like, what? And like, I don't know what it was, a pencil, a pen or something. He's like, look. And I'm like, what? He's like, it's, it's, somebody moved it. I'm all, dude, chill. Calmate, wey. Yeah, like, okay, move it. Move it back. He's like, somebody's fucking with me. So I'm like, chill out, dude. Yes. Nobody's fucking with you. It's probably, you know, um, the after hours cleaning people, like cl- d- cleaning your desk for you. Right. Like, be grateful. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know what? There are some things like that that do fucking bother me. Like, I'll look at this bag and, and like, just, just one perfect example. See this line right here? I'd probably do this and I line it up just like that. <laughs> Your OCD, for and, sure. And, and, yeah, and it bothers me, like, if, if it's not, you know? So, mm. anyways, mm. Alex, I need you to ask the people on, on the live chat, are you OCD? Mm-hmm. Okay? If you don't know what it is, it stands for, you know... Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. Or... Or... or, or um, overly Complicated... OC... Um, uh, uh, overly Chicloso <laughs> Disorder. I'm, I don't know. <laughs> so... Norbert, you didn't like your burrito or what, man? Oh, yeah, I'm about to close it up for... Oh, okay. Mm. All good, all good. So, uh, uh, you, you know, you guys on the live chat, go ahead and post up what you guys had for dinner or what are you guys having for dinner right now if you guys are having dinner, <coughs> you know, or uh, if you haven't taught ramen, that's fine. You can put that up there. <laughs> if you had a warm house of most spaghetti, that's cool too. But um, are you OCD? You know, something like that. 
and then give us the or results you in a couple of minutes. Yeah. Or you think yeah, you think you're OCD. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> um, let me ask you a question. I know it's playoffs football, and I know you said I think your dad is a Cowboys fan. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I think you said you were Rams mm -hmm. or Raiders. Raiders. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh God. Oh, we, we talked about this, right? I, I mean, yeah, like, I, I know, but I have yeah. to ask you a question. And be honest. First, let me share you a story. <laughs> true story. story. Time with the wizard. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, true story. Friend, he's a um, 49ers fan. Mm -hmm. He hates the Raiders, like me. Okay. Like, he hates the fucking Raiders. He met this one girl, fell in love with her. <gasps> no lie. True story, according to what he told me. I'm not trying to get girls, but I'm trying to get straight to the point. So it came time to do the nasty. Okay. <laughs> so he finally Doing bent her nasty. over. He goes, beautiful sight. And then she had a tramp stamp. And it said Raiders. <gasps> he said, I'm not going to lie to you. That He's my like shit went like this. <laughs> and I said, you got to be fucking kidding me. Because I seen this girl. She's very, very attractive. Mm -hmm. I go, you didn't clap them cheeks? He goes, no. He goes, I couldn't. <laughs> He's like, no, it goes against all my morals. Yes. And He's you like, know no. what? I'm not lying to you. He ended up breaking up with her. He told her, you, either you get, get that. that. He said, either you get that tattoo removed. Yeah. He said, because I can't be with you. I mean, yeah. If you have to look at that and you're not that fan, like, I mean, yeah, it just, I okay. mean, if even if it was the opposite, well. Yeah. Okay. Now let me give you a, a, a question. Say you meet a guy that fucking, I don't know, he's a Green Bay Packers fan and he hates the Raiders, but he likes you. Can you okay. live with that in a relationship? Oh, shit. Like, does he have to be a Raiders fan? No, no. But, I mean, I can't think of anybody I've dated that wasn't. Yeah. So, mm, does he have to be a Raiders fan? No, but he... He might have to go to a game or a few games with me and be okay with that. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I, I, I'm also a Dodgers fan. Okay. And so um, my ex was a Giants fan. Uh-huh. And so you know that rivalry, right? Yes. Like the Dodgers and the Giants, like big time. Like, yes. Mm. And so he would go with me to Dodger games, mm -hmm. Dodger Stadium, but he would wear all his Giants gear. And I'm like, okay, well, as long as you go to the game with me, like, let's go. So he was fine with it, but um, so I guess I would be okay with someone not being a Raider fan as well. But I mean, it's not going to be a good time at the at the game. You're probably going to get heckled and like you know people can talk shit to you or whatever. Like you got to be able to take it, you know. <clears throat> so no, this guy was he broke up with her, <laughs> and she's and well, I mean, she had a tattoo in a place that he's going to have to look at. It's like that make that kind of makes sense. Like, you now. Know. I got a message for all you busters out there, okay? If you ever switch teams because of a girl, you were you were a fake fucking fan. You were a straight <laughs> fucking buster, and I'm gonna tell you why. I knew this fucking idiot, okay? <clears throat> and I thank God that I don't even talk you to his talk ass to anymore. anymore. Every okay, when when we grew up together, he was a Dallas Cowboy fan. Mm -hmm. Dallas Cowboys, Dallas Cowboys. As soon as he made a baddie, a shorty, not going, not chichon now. Yeah, knew that, all of that. Okay. The perfect woman for him. For him, okay. Yeah. Nah, you know what? Nah, nah, homie. That's what she straight told him. I'm a Raiders fan, and all my exes were Raiders fans. So if you're going to be with me, you got to become a Raiders fan. A week later, go Raiders. <gasps> yeah. Raider. And, and I'm oh like. Oh, my God. But I mean, like, why can't you stand up for your team, though? I mean, I, that I, doesn't make yeah, sense. Yeah, I, I was like. You gave up the knowledge that easy wow. to became a Ra to become a Raiders fan. Wow, so must he, have been good. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't that that good. It only lasted a couple of years. <laughs> so, so and then he gets with another girl. I'm a 49ers fan. You go, go Niners for about three years. No, they say no fucking okay, lie. And that's uh, he's just not a fan of nothing because he's right. just he's he's a fan of girls and the women and yes. you know he's just gonna yeah. Then his the, new girl now loyalty. He's like in his late forties. Just recently got with another girl. <laughs> She's a Rams fan, so He's go a Rams. Rams. Fan now. Oh my yeah. god! If you do that, you're a fucking buster, yeah. straight up. Okay, yeah. so 
Yeah, don't even call yourself a friend. Don't even submit your music. Mm. You will never dine with me <laughs> or drink with me. <laughs> Sorry, ass. But yeah, I can't do that. Mm. But um, my thing is this. If you're going to stick with your team, you're going to stick with your team. Mm -hmm. it, it'll be hard. Like, like say, hypothetically, I met some, some girl that I really like, and then I saw that tattoo. It would be heartbreaking, but I don't think... Yeah, it could be a fucking deal breaker. I'm not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I would just have to tell you, you have to support my team. Mm -hmm. If you you want to go to the games, cool, I'll take you. But would but, you take? What if she wore all her gear? Would you take her? If she like wore all her team? No, he, you wouldn't take her. Here's the way it's gonna have to be. When we go see the Cowboy, you're sporting Cowboys gear. That's it. Okay. When we go to the games, I'm not sporting no Raiders, but I'll buy you whatever the fuck you want that has to do with Raiders. Okay. That sounds pretty yeah. cool, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's a good, that's a compromise. I mean, it's, it's yeah. good. <laughs> I told you I went to, um, uh, but so my dad's a Cowboys fan. Uh -huh. And um, he's had on his bucket list. Well, my dad and my mom had this had these bucket lists, right? And so my, I mean, growing up, <clears throat> uh, my parents worked like hard. Like they uh -huh. worked a lot and they, they did everything they could to support us and they weren't home a lot, but like they they worked a lot to support the family and so we knew that and, and we weren't wealthy or anything like that. We struggled and so um my dad would always say stuff like, Oh, you know, well, I'm gonna take you guys on vacation. One day we're gonna go see, you know, the Grand Canyon or whatever and obviously we couldn't afford to do that or like they couldn't afford to take time off of work right. to take us. So it was always like a dream. <clears throat> he would say it, but he would never really do it because they were always working. And so um, once, you know, I got older and I could, I had a job and everything I could actually afford to do something like that. I was like, dad, why don't we take that trip to the Grand Canyon you keep on talking about, you know? And he's like, really? I'm like, yeah, let's go. So we like got in the car and, me, my mom, and my dad drove to the Grand Canyon, and we did it. But what I realized was that, like, they worked so hard to raise us yeah. that they didn't have time to have fun or, like, take a vacation. And, like, that wasn't even in – they didn't even know what a vacation really was, you right. know? because they were always, always working. working. Yeah. And, and vacations and so, take time and money, and a right. lot of times, right. you know what, I got to take care of you, the kids first, and then right. maybe later on. I get it. Mm -hmm. So going to see the Cowboys – Mm -hmm. in 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 um texas was one of his things that he wanted to do and i was like you know what i'm gonna take my dad to go see the cowboys the dallas cowboys yeah. how about the so, cowboys yeah <laughs> and so we went to the new stadium oh my god and i'm a raider fan raider fan but oh my god that stadium okay okay all the raider fans out there you know if you okay i had season tickets at the coliseum uh -huh. before they moved to vegas so me and my sister and my brother-in-law had season tickets. So we would go to all the games and beer line is like, you got to strategize the beer, like right. strategize the beer line because the beer line is hella long and it's going to take you a long time. You're going to miss most of the game. If yes, you're in you line. Are. So you drink as much as you can when you tailgate, you're in the game and you strategize how to get your beers. Who's going to go get the beers this time? Cause you're going to miss the game. Restroom line, hella long. The way they designed it, it's just, you're waiting in line the whole time. So most, you miss the game. And so when we went to Dallas, was in Arlington, right? Um, somehow the way they design that stadium, right. every single concession, every single restroom, everything had like no line. It was like so efficient. But they, I mean, the stadium was full. It was packed. Right, it was so people. efficient. The way they designed it, it's like you can grab a beer and be back in your seat in like less than 10 minutes. Yeah. You could never yeah. do that in Oakland. Never. You would be, it would be like, I'll see you an hour later. I'm going to go to the restroom and get a beer. I'll see you an hour later. <laughs> you, you know what to me that doesn't make sense? Okay, for an example, I went to a Raiders game out here with a friend of mine whom I love. He's a good dude. And uh, that's the only reason why I went, went, out, went with him because I got love for this dude. Like, mm. And he really, I consider this guy a friend, Okay. So we went there, and you know what I saw more? Okay, this was a 49er Raiders game. Mm -hmm. I mm. saw more fights oh, shit. with Raiders, Raiders and Raiders than Raiders and 49er guys. <clears throat> and I'm like, this is fucking <laughs> hilarious. Like, you guys are fighting each other. Okay, so, well, I mean, I ain't going to lie. Like, 
we grew like my dad brought us up like he would take us to games when we were kids and so like we we were brought up around it so like if you don't see at least a few fights in a single game then it's not right. a game like right. it's just normal right it like, is. you see the it fights is. in the stadium you see like it's just a part of the way it is it you is. know it's and true. So I guess when you see it every game, it's not really a big deal. But you're right. There's always there's always fights. I mean, usually it's the opposite team for me. Like when I see the fights, it's the opposite team. But yeah, sometimes it's... No, but the ones I saw, I saw maybe at least, maybe a good eight fights, Raiders against Raiders. <laughs> and and then, but I will say this, that when the Cowboys lost just recently, mm-hmm. okay, uh, uh, against the uh, 49ers, somebody sent me videos of Cowboy fans fighting Cowboy fans. Like, they were fighting oh, fucking shit. each other. Oh, Emmitt Smith was fucking fighting in Ezekiel Elliott. You know, they were in the jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Dak Prescott was fighting Troy Aikman. And I'm like, God damn. What are you doing? Exactly. You're supposed to be supporting each other, especially there. Ex- exactly. <laughs> Sorry, motherfucker. So, anyways. Uh, uh, um. Okay, Sonia, what would you be doing, like, right now, just on a regular date? What, what does Sonia Balcazar do <clears throat> when she just has a free day? Mm. Are you? Do you just stay productive? Uh, uh, do you just still make yourself busy, or do you just like chill at home, Netflix? Mm. I'm just gonna chill on the couch, drink a cold one, <laughs> and, and and look at Instagram and and wanting to comment on people's <laughs> bullshit, fucking liar. Don't lie. You're faking it. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, okay. So I got in trouble by my dad. I'm like, oh, I asked him, but I got in trouble by my dad recently because I got sick like a couple weeks back. And my dad lectured me. He's like, Mia, he's like, you got to slow down. He's like, you're always doing something. You're always busy. Like, why don't you just give yourself some rest, you know? Right. And um, he's like, just take it easy. You don't know how to rest. He's like, just rest. And it's true because I really don't really know how to rest. Same here, though. <laughs> and so... Um, I I, I, did, I got sick and because I got sick it made me rest like I, I had no choice I had to be at home I had to watch TV do nothing I was sick in bed for a few days um, but that's really the only time I, I can actually chill I'm not a couch potato so if I'm not sick and trying to you won't see me doing that like I I went I'm an actor mm-hmm. but I could go without watching television for a month I could go without <laughs> watching anything for a month just because it's it's, I'm not that type of person that's going to sit down and, you know, watch TV for hours on hours. I just don't, I want to be acting. I want to actually be, you know, rehearsing or auditioning or, or performing, <clears throat> but, um, I don't necessarily sit in front of the mm. TV and, and like couch potato is couch potato type of stuff. But right. I, I feel like I have two jobs. I tell people I have two jobs. Every, actually people know I have two jobs. My day job I have a day job, which is pretty demanding. And then when I get off of work on my day job, then I'm an actor. And that's when I do all my self tapes. I, um, you know, rehearse. I'm thinking of characters. I'm, I write, I'm writing stuff right now. Okay. So I just started though. I, I wouldn't say I was a writer before, but. But at least like, you got started. Yeah, at least I got started. But I'm always busy. Like I'm always, always like from probably 6.37 in the morning to uh-huh. maybe. 1 a.m. I'm like, okay. you know, and yeah. then I have to make myself go to sleep. Same here. Same here, because I could be laying in bed, lights turned off and my eyes wide open. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, that shit is dope. Beats, right? Yes. Yeah, because that's, that's your creative brain. Yes. Like, and then I start thinking about other shows and then the verses. Yeah. And then the, the Chicano rap documentary that I'm working on. Who am I going to interview next? There you go. You know, and then, I'm, and then before you know it, like, fuck, stop. I need to go to sleep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and then I just whip out the tequila, take a shot, and I'm like, I wait. NyQuil. Yeah, like NyQuil. <laughs> That's pretty much Mexican NyQuil. The gummies. The, the gummies. Good, good night gummies. Yeah, good night. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, now... Um, <clears throat> In my living room, I have a 75-inch Sony t- high-definition TV, okay? I say that because I probably average maybe 15 minutes of TV every day. A- and okay. that's just, honestly, well, let me, I- I'm over-exaggerating. At least 30 minutes, because I watch my favorite uh, uh, ESPN show called PTI. Okay, and these guys, they fucking give it to you. If your team sucks, they're going to say, your team sucks, your team stinks. I love it. Because okay. they're honest, they're, they're like... 
just real. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, there's another guy that I like, a lot of people do not like, mm. Chef Ramsey. Oh, yeah. I'm like the He's Mexican mean. Chef Ramsey. <laughs> I like. But he the, keeps it real. He keeps it real. Like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> See, I love that. Do it again. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> oh, I can't do that. You, you I know, like your accent. You, you know, there, there's there's people like, oh my god, he's yelling. He hurt my feelings. Yeah, like, <laughs> oh god, like, yeah. To me, see, that's me. Mm -hmm. But I have a good heart. I will come back and say, look, I apologize. I yelled at you. Uh, it, it was wrong, but this is we, why we would not be having <laughs> this conversation if your ass would have just listened. So. I like Chef Ramsey. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't like him. He's got a good heart, but I fucking love mm -hmm. the way he drills people. Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, uh, I think he makes a lot of people nervous. He's intimidating. Yeah. But you know what? He's a success. Look at how many fucking shows this guy's had. Right. You know? Right. So. He puts people under pressure. Yeah. You yeah. got you got to be able to perform under pressure, I feel. Yeah. Like, you you um, have to. Yeah. And he brings that out of you. Mm -hmm. You know, because you know what? You can't. Like, I've known football players that have played professionally, mm -hmm. and they say that their coaches were very, very um, soft. Many, many mm -hmm. of the coaches, very, very soft. When they got that one that was very fucking stern, and I'm like, I want all you motherfuckers start running laps right now. Mm -hmm. He said, those are the coaches that I won with. Mm. The ones That's, that are going to motivate you, yes. that are going to, like, um, yeah, push you, right? Yes, yeah, yeah that are going to bring the best out of you. Goes. Mm -hmm. And then when we win, I realize what he was doing what he was trying to do some people may not like that type of coaching shit right. i do some people don't like to hear that kind of talk mm -hmm. i do yeah. but that's just me you know i had a cross-country coach um two two cross-country coaches but uh -huh. um oh, they well, would not... always say like we would be like oh yeah i, I, I can't come to practice because i'm sick or i have the flu or you know uh, i got a cold or whatever. they're like no you're getting out here you're gonna come out and run i'm like but but I'm sick. They're like, no, you're going to come out and run. And then we, we would like be like, is that even okay? Like, can you make us do it? And then we would run. And he's like, you'll feel better after you run. And so then we would run. And then, like, you know, we, all the stuff comes out, all the mocos and everything. It all comes out. And you're like, uh, uh, coffee. And he's like, don't you feel better? I'm like, I do feel better. <laughs> so sometimes when, like, people push you to do things you're like well i don't know if i could do that but then you do it and you're like wait i could so when they put the pressure on yes and then you do it you're like okay i got this i got this. sometimes you need that yeah otherwise you just be complacent uh, i mean i don't think guys like that are trying to do it just to be fucking mean no. i truly believe that they're trying to bring the best out of you yes but yeah. i will say this you know for the other people that don't like that maybe that just doesn't work for everybody yeah for me to be honest with you i I needed that in my life. When I was in my 20s, I found somebody that actually mentored me, educated me, and taught me how to deal with people because I had that hood street mentality where I thought that I could call everybody, what's up, fool? Oh. Yeah. yeah. And, and, no, and, you know. He's like, mm, and, um, let me teach you. I remember, yeah, no. <clears throat> for an example, and this is why it was important to me because when I was signed to Disney, I was dealing with multi-millionaires that I didn't know were multi-millionaires. There was a guy there named Michael Eisner who was running all of uh, Disney. And one day he walks up to me, he goes, you look very familiar. And I said, really? I don't know you. Who are you? <laughs> and he was the guy running all of fucking Disney. What, what did his face look like when you said that? No, he, would, he just looked startled. Yeah. Like he thought, I, he looked like he was waiting for, I'm just kidding. Okay. But yeah. I never came. I said, who are you? Was just, I got this fool right here. And then when they had our meeting, he goes, oh, Michael wants to see you guys now. Okay, we walked in and it was fucking him. Oh, I was like, shit. what the fuck? So when I came home and I talked to the guy who pretty much mentored me. Told talked, him what happened. Yeah. And he actually taught me uh, just to respect, uh, not necessarily my elders, but how to treat people. Mm -hmm. He was actually the guy that told me this. And, and I shared this on, on my other podcast. Because me, I was one of these guys that I just didn't trust anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, growing up, especially in my neighborhood, there was a lot of guys that got a tattoo right here in Chinese lettering that would say, trust no man. Mm -hmm. So we lived by that. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so what happened was, that was my mentality. But he told me this, stick out your hand. And I said, why? He goes, stick out your hand. Pretend you're going to shake it. But, you know, you're going to shake somebody's hand. So I went like this. 
And, and it was funny because when I did that, I, I never really did that. Yeah. And I was a little bit nervous. And he goes, if you stick out your hand, you'll be surprised how many people would shake it. Yeah. And I was like, but that's just not me. Mm. So I remember, because I told him, man, every time I meet somebody, I forget their fucking name. <laughs> he goes, well, here's what you do. You shake their hand. Mm. If he says, how you doing? I'm James. Say, how you doing, James? Mm. Repeat the name, right? Yes. Because that helps you remember it. Yeah. Yes. So I went back to Disney. How you doing, Michael? <laughs> and he looked at me weird now. He goes, how you doing, Tony? Oh, and, and he remembered I, your name, yeah. too. And you know what I said? I'm just practicing. He didn't know what the fuck I meant. <laughs> I was 22, so. You're the first person I'm going to try to respect. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And I was like, I'm sorry that I called you a fool. You're not a fool. He goes, I, I know what that means. I go, all right, then, fool. And he, I go, no, no, I didn't mean that. But, but, but you it's know what? It's just how you grow up. It's how you talk to people. And then you yes. move, you put yourself in a different environment. You're like, oh, I got to change my, my style. Like my, you know, just you got to adapt to your environment if you want to keep your job. Yeah. Okay, here's another one. It was this one guy. Oh, my God. Because everybody calls themselves fools. What's up, fool? What's up, fool? Mm -hmm. This guy didn't call people fools. He called, he called everybody dick. Okay? Okay. He was like, what's up, dick? <laughs> and I right away, I was like, the fuck? <laughs> and then my boy told me, he goes, hey, man, he just he calls, he everybody, calls everybody that. And I yeah. go, well, I ain't fucking I'm everybody. Cool with that. You know? Yeah. So for everything, he was like, hey, dick, uh, did you tell dick about that uh, uh, about that other dick? That's kind of annoying. Yeah. No, yeah. it was. It was. What about this one? <laughs> yeah so so he he just kept saying hey dick hey dick and i find it dude you need to fucking stop homie he goes what what am i saying it, it got to the point that he repeated it so much that he didn't even realize what he was doing anymore okay it was a habit yeah but he habit. called his girlfriend dick <laughs> his girlfriend came to pick him up and he was like hey dick did you Maybe give me my food he just never like he never learned anybody's name and he was like i don't know how dick. to manage this so i'm just gonna cover my inadequacies by calling everybody the same name <laughs> exactly yeah okay alice can you uh give us the results of the ocd question yeah the question is are you ocd about things and um 44 <clears throat> said yep mm. out of 95 votes 43 percent said yep it's a lot 37 percent said nope <laughs> and 20 percent said i'm just pushing peace <laughs> You got to keep that P in it. But, <laughs> yeah, but okay. Okay, let's move along. <clears throat> I got some hypothetical scenarios that I'm going to present to you, okay? <clears throat> I wrote these down. I never really take notes because I'm pretty, I got a pretty, I have a pretty good photographic memory. Mm. But say that um, one day you're leaving the club and you stop at a taco truck to buy <laughs> some tacos at Carne Estrada, okay? And <laughs> somebody walks up to you and tells you, I can give you one ticket to one concert to these six people, but you got to choose one. And you believed him. And he said this, who would you rather see in person? Winnie Houston, Elvis Presley, Prince, Bob Marley, Selena, or Michael Jackson? Shit. I'll repeat the names again. Damn. Winnie Houston, Elvis Presley, Prince, Bob Marley, Selena, or Michael Jackson. You could go to one of their concerts. Okay, that is very difficult. <clears throat> okay, I, the two that I'm... It's difficult because it would be between two. Okay, give me the two. Selena okay. and Elvis. Okay. I got, I got an Elvis story. I'm, okay. Elvis. Mm -hmm. I was in love... Was, right? Uh -huh. I was in love with Elvis when I was a kid. Like, in love I don't even know how it came out or what, like where I even saw his picture or whatever. And then, you know, movie, like his movies are always, you could just find a movie on right. TV when you're a kid. And then um, I started watching some, I think it was like Blue Hawaii or something, some Elvis movie, I don't know. <clears throat> and then um, I started like, I was like, ooh. He cute, like he's fine. Like, <laughs> hey, being honest. <laughs> and uh, but I was a little kid, and then my dad, like, and my dad and my mom knew that, like, I guess they figured out that I liked Elvis because I was watching his movies right. when it would come on. And then, <clears throat> and then I was like, in my little kid head, I'm like, when I get when I grow older, I'm gonna marry him. Like, I'm gonna be his wife. Like, you know, All right. I'm, I'm gonna marry him. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then <laughs> I'm in the garage. I'm, I'm a kid. I'm in the garage one day just sh- doing stupid shit. And I'm looking around the garage and it's, it's all messy and stuff. And then my, my aunt had this um, like dresser drawer thing that was uh-huh. in there with all these like newspapers in it. Right, right, in, right. In one of the drawers. And I'm all being nosy. And then I go in and I'm like looking in the drawers. And then I find a newspaper and then I pull it out. And it's all these like stacks of newspapers, different kind of clippings. I pull it out and on the front of the, it's an old newspaper, but on the front of it, it says the king is dead. And it was a picture of his face. And I was like, wait, what? I'm all, the king is dead. I took the paper inside. I was like, mom, Elvis is dead? And she's like, he was dead before you were even born. Like, he's always been dead. And I'm like, what? What I was supposed to marry him. Like, (laughs) I was supposed to be his wife when I grew up. And then she's just like, he's been dead. Like, you didn't know he was dead? And my sister's like stupid you didn't even know he was dead. I'm like why didn't anybody tell me that elvis was dead you guys all let me have this fantasy watch all his movies put them on for me he was dead the whole time now the question <laughs> is do you know how he died okay so um my mom says he just like well i mean there's all these different <clears throat> theories right my mom just said he overdosed no but he was taking a shit and he died <laughs> Really? He he was taking a shit and he just went forward and he fucking Did he died. Have a heart attack with or his booty in the air and his long john sticking shit. out. So yeah. Shit. Yeah, that's Damn. what we did. Now, it, uh, I saw many many documentaries and all of them have one common tie that he was a pill popper. Pill popper yeah. meaning not that necessarily he was getting high, mm-hmm. but he had like um pains on his shoulder, headaches, depression, so he was always popping pills. But he took so many pills that in his organs, they were saying that he died of constipation oh shit his shit wasn't able to go through his fucking guts yeah. because they said that his uh, uh his uh, organs were so chalky oh, that even shit. if they would have like cut them open yeah they would have to have gotten a fucking screwdriver to drill the fucking <clears throat> all them pills mm-hmm. so he his shit couldn't go through he's taken a crap and he went forward and out came his long john yes it was a wrap Damn. What okay. Go out? okay, so here's how we're going to narrow it down. <laughs> Say the guy tells you, okay, so you like Selena and you like Elvis. Forget it. It won't be a concert. You get to sit down on a bench okay. with either one of them and talk with them for one hour. Who Selena. Would it be? Selena? Yes. Okay. Hands down. Selena. Selena. Yep. Oh, all right. All mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. That'll work. Mm-hmm. Okay, I have family na- from Texas. My mom's from Texas. So, like... It's a big thing. Like, even before Selena was known, before she passed away, Uh before she was well known, like, my family was playing her music at parties. And, like, they were, they watched her grow up. Like, Uh they watched her at the fair and at the, like, um, outdoor concerts as a little girl growing up. Like, they watched her journey. And, like, I remember my uncle was like, he had a cassette tape Uh of hers. And I remember being in Texas, we are visiting my family, and then my cu- my uncle was like, you gotta listen to her, she's really good, and it was like a cassette tape. And we're like, we would listen to her cumbia and stuff. And so this was all before she was famous famous. Right, right, like, right. And then, and then she got famous famous, and then she, you know, was murdered. But like, yeah, my family has been like a big Selena fan since, Back in the day, so okay, big, now, big time. I'd love, I would love to have a conversation with her on the bench. Okay, say that you <clears throat> were a journalist, okay, and um, somebody knocks on your door and says, "Hey, um, I got a good story for you." Okay, That's a hypothetical scenario. Okay, <clears throat> I'm a journalist. Okay. Yes. All right. They knock on your door, and you go, "Hello," and then they say, "Hey, Hello. we got a, a a good one for you." Uh, who is it? You got to cover it. You got to interview her for one hour. She only wants you. She don't want nobody else. Hmm. Okay, who is it? It's the woman who killed Selena. We got to interview her for one hour. Could you do it? I could do it. I could do it. You got to now. You got to take flight when you see her. Now, would you be able to put your your feelings aside? I I I would probably. uh, Well, I'm okay. Let me correct myself. I could do it because I'd probably take the opportunity to, like, I don't know, like, <laughs> Fuck her ass up. punch her or something, you know, like, pull her hair. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So I would 
Okay, so I wouldn't necessarily interview her. Okay, <laughs> all right. Let's give the opportunity to get in front of her. <laughs> okay. You, you, you know what's funny, though? Because, okay, you, uh, eventually I'll, I'll get into serial killers. But you got people like that have journalists that have interviewed like Richard Ramirez. Mm. They've interviewed Charles Manson, Ted <clears throat> Bundy, all these serial killers, okay? And I've noticed that none of those guys, journalists, ever get any slack for interviewing. Like for an example, meaning mm. this, I know he's a journalist, I know he's doing his job, but I've never noticed anybody say, man, how could you fucking sit across from that motherfucker? Yeah. How can you sit across that motherfucker, Jeffrey Dahmer, who used to eat people's dicks? Oh. You know, how could you, you know, this motherfucker, they used to sleep with fucking dead women, Ted mm -hmm. Bundy. Yeah. You know, I, I often wonder if those journalists ever got any fucking backlash mm. for actually taking that interview. You know, well, it, first it's their job. So, right. you know, they probably want the interview because it's going to give them the most right. exposure as a right. journalist. So they're wanting it, right? But then there's the moral side of it. Like, what what do you feel as a person? Do you feel any judgment towards that person, right? right? right. So how do you feel about interviewing them? But I would think, uh, I don't know, people might give them backlash, right. right? Like the audience, like how, like you said, how could you do that? Right. Right. Okay. <clears throat> I bring that up for this. Somebody called me up late last year and told me this. Hey, I can get you a Takashi 6 9 interview. Do you know who that is? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I immediately said, nah, bro, I ain't fucking no. with that guy. I, <laughs> I, I wouldn't either. I mean, just because you, yeah, you, nah. Yeah, I That's said, one you probably don't want to take. Right. Okay, yeah. now, but I, I have a point. That's why I'm asking. Okay. Here's my thing. I have uh, I spoke to a couple of guys that I know. Some of them are older than me. And I had told them that I said no right off the bat. Yeah. But I said, but I'm going to tell you what was presented to me. And then they told me that this, no, you, you, you said it right. Stay away from that guy. Okay, cool. I get it. But now for, uh, for journalists, maybe say a Larry King mm -hmm. or fucking, I don't know, whoever, uh, 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 Montel Williams or w Jordan or whatever, Montel mm -hmm. Williams. If all those guys interviewed him, they those would be same, like, yeah. See, and here's the and thing: then they would watch it. Yes, those <laughs> same people that told me don't do it will watch that one. Yeah, right. So why do those rules apply to journalists? But I mean, ap apply to me. Apply to you, but it's okay for journalists to do it, right? Right. Well, yeah. Why is that? that doesn't make any sense. Well, because you're doing a, you're doing, you're a journalist too. I mean, the hood journalist. <laughs> you are. It is. It's the same thing. It's just a yeah. different platform. E even though I couldn't do it. Uh, I won't mention the guy's name, but this guy was convicted of uh, uh, child molestation. Mm. He was sentenced. And uh, even though a lot of people like his music, people have asked me, when he gets out, would you interview him? And I immediately mm -hmm. said no. Mm -hmm. Well, what about the views? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I think because they apply street, they try to apply street street rules to me. Right. I, I'm, I'm fine with that. I don't care because I'm not going to sit across from that guy anyway who right. was convicted. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not going to do that. But if a guy like Joe Rogan said, fuck it, I'll oh. interview. They would all watch it. And they'd they all would all fucking it. watch it. I know. What's up with that? Right? Yeah, I'm like, okay, but those rules, is, is it, do they, do they only apply to Raza and everybody maybe, else okay, gets a pass? So maybe because we, we kind of live by different roles, right? We right. kind of live by, like you said, there's street roles. There's just right. things. Oh, let me, perfect example. Yes. Perfect example. Alex, do me acting. a favor. Bring me two beers and bring her two beers over here, <clears throat> and bring us the, the 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 little wrestler. So, actors, mm -hmm. you play different roles. You get cast for different things. Um, oh, modelo, please. Yes, yes. Uh, all, all, four modelos. And um, and the tres generaciones is about to kick in. Show. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, for acting, right? I was taught never judge the character that you right. play. So you play the character that you've been cast in. Well, you know what you're going to fit and, and yeah. what you're going to audition for. If someone's asking you to be in the role. Yes. You audition for it, you get it or not, whatever. But like, you're not judging who you're playing because if you did, then you wouldn't play anybody because nobody's perfect, especially right. in, um, in what you're, you're tell the storytelling, right? Right. So I, <laughs> Exactly your situation. I had a role okay. where my character 
snitched on her man. In in this role. In this, in movie. this role. Okay. Okay. But okay, I'm not justifying what she did. I'm just saying in in the role he she was he was on the run. Okay. My character was supporting him, sending him money to Mexico. Okay. And like keeping him afloat and, you know, uh, lying to the police and everything, just trying to help him stay away and like supporting him. Right. Well, this agent comes by, FBI, whoever comes by and is like, do you know that he's living with another woman in Mexico and he's got her pregnant and you're still sending him money and you won't tell us where he's at? Right. And so in my character, my character gets pissed off because uh -huh. she's sending him money. Oh, he's with this other girl. He's got her pregnant. What? And then she snitches on him. Oh. And so they catch him. Actually, no. They, she gives him the address. They go to his place. He runs and he gets away. But they eventually catch him. And so when that aired, let me tell you, family members like my cousins, my friends that I grew up with, they were like, what the fuck? You played a snitch? Like, how dare you? You, snitch? you can't be a snitch. I'm like, yo, I'm acting. That's not real. You know, yeah, I'm it's not acting. fucking real. Like, I'm an actor. And they're like, oh, hell no, you can't. I'm like, dude, what? Like, it was yeah, a role. Yeah. Like, you can't judge the, I mean, you can't judge the character. Right, right, right. <laughs> but streetwise, they were like, you can't do that, Sonia. Like, you can't. I'm like, Yo, so that was the first time I was like, I got to kind of watch what roles yeah, I play yeah. in a sense where people that aren't in the acting world would not get it. Right. 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 So, yeah, I got a lot of I got a lot of shit for that one. A lot. That's like, crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, I guess us being Latinos, you know what? A lot of shit comes with being a Latino. Yeah. So, OK, here's another one says you're in the acting business. This one blew me away. OK. Here you have Bruce Willis in real life. He's married to Demi Moore at the time. Mm. Demi mm -hmm. Moore, okay. Bruce Willis's best friend in real life is Woody Harrelson. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, in real life. I don't know if it is now, but mm. this movie was done in the 90s. And it was a movie called Indecent Proposal, okay? It had Woody Harrelson. Do you remember that movie? Yep. Woody Harrelson. It had um, uh, Bruce Willis. Uh, no, 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 not Bruce Willis. Yeah. Woody Harrelson, He in the movie, he was... A couple with Demi Moore, which in real life is Bruce Willis's uh, wife. Okay. Yes. So. Yes. And then Robert Redford is in the movie, and Robert Redford offers her a million dollars. Like, I'll give you a million dollars. Is it a weekend or is it a night? I think it's a night. Okay. But pretty uh, much anything I don't goes. Remember. Yeah. Anything goes. It's pretty much like, let me fuck your wife for a million dollars. Okay. And they talked about it in in the movie, and they said yes. Okay, so they went and they did the nasty. They did their thing. He got the money. Okay. Here's my thing. I saw an interview when they interviewed Woody Harrelson and Demi Moore, and they said, "Oh, you know those those scenes were very intense when Woody Harrelson and Demi Moore were sleeping with in the movie." He goes, "Yeah, we actually believe it or not, we actually had a practice for some of those scenes." So I stopped right there and I said to myself, Practice. how can I go to my best friend's house, knock on his door? Hey, uh, is your girl here? Oh, yeah, why? Oh, we need to practice. Okay, so I haven't done any sex scenes yet, so I don't know how you would practice that. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying, though? That's my thing. And then, you know, you know uh, uh, what the fuck's his name? Bruce Willis. Oh, they did an amazing job. Oh, they were great. The chemistry was, yeah, his fucking weenie was up for Google. They were practicing. Like, they were practicing. <laughs> they were practicing in the trailer. <laughs> yeah, you know, great acting. I applaud them both. And, and then they all take a picture so together. so real. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know. Like, we're on break. That. Let's go practice. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, um, Demi, uh, you know what? Is there a room here that we can go practice? Okay, uh, I need you to get we naked. We need more rehearsal. Yeah, we need more rehearsal. Cut, do it again. <laughs> Cut, do it again. She's, she's not slurping right. You know? I don't know. I just couldn't fucking do it and then face my best friend. Oh, no, no. Or my best no, friend fr no. fucking face me. Mm, you know, no. so mm. I, I just, no. I, I, don't, I don't get that. Sometimes mm. I think, like, uh, what's her name? Sharon Stone. You ever see, uh, uh, what was the name of that movie? The one with the ice pick? 
Yes, Sherman Stone. Um, uh, she crosses her legs and then crosses Yes, her that legs. one. Uh, what was the name of that one? Okay, it wasn't a decent, a decent proposal. It was, fuck. Hmm? Ah, basic, basic instinct. instinct. Okay. Thank you. Toxic. <laughs> Can we say toxic bitch? Okay. Basic instinct. The original toxic bitch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, my th- uh, I found out she only got $100,000 for that movie. That's it? A hundred thousand dollars, and wow. she went deep in that movie several times. Dang. So I know there had to be a lot of practicing. <laughs> so now here's my thing. Here's my thing. <clears throat> Say that I'm married to an actress, uh, hypothetically, but I've known already three actors that have fucked my wife on the big screen. Mm, mm. Well, okay. So you know now. I know now they have um, what condoms. They <laughs> Intimacy. Uh, Special, like I forgot the term. Okay, I'm gonna, the term. Op- I'm gonna open a song. Sure, sure. So. Intimacy coaches or intimacy coaches. Text, te- like it, there's an actual position in film where there's an int- intimacy person to make sure that each of the actors feels comfortable, right? But then they teach them how to. I believe I have not done a sex scene, so I don't know yet. But yeah, yeah. Um, your, your show. they teach them how to i guess do it and feel comfortable and make sure each is okay with it or whatever um and then make it look believable too right yeah have you heard even when they're nude they're not nude right 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 right. sometimes sometimes (laughs) no they have okay my cousin taught me this because she's in film she's like there's this do you know what it's called when let's say a woman looks naked but she's not naked Okay, she looks naked in film, but she's not really naked. She she has like a underwear that looks like okay. her part, her lady parts. And do you know what that's called? I, I don't know. <laughs> Hide the cooch? I don't know. <laughs> it's called a Murph. Oh, really? Yeah. So Murph used to be when it goes up your ass, <laughs> but now it's not. And so like you they actors would wear it over their to make it look like they're naked, but they're not. They actually have something covering their body. Okay, maybe that's right? new. How, how long, ask, ask her next time, yeah. how long has that been going on? The reason why I'm asking, because I, I had an uncle, rest in peace, Oscar Alvarez, mm-hmm. and he worked for Universal. And and I asked him. I when I, it's called him. I could be wrong. And, and I asked him, what was, you know, did they, he goes, no, go in. They fuck. What? He, he, he goes, or if not. Okay, that's probably changed big no, time. No, I, I believe it had to have changed. Yeah. It had to have changed. He goes, oh, <clears> or I guess, you know, he says, they, um, this one was funny. They got to pretend that they're, that they're butt naked. He goes, and when the guy gets hard, there's a spray that you spray and it goes back down. What? <laughs> is it like, is it like, um, cold it's or cold. what? Of course. <laughs> Shrinkage. <laughs> That's fucked up, babe. I was trying to get lucky. Oh my goodness. Maybe it's aqua, I mean, well, aqua the, That's the question too. Like, okay, for guys, I don't know. I mean, I don't. Wouldn't I mean? How can a guy not get aroused I in know. a sex scene? Like, how can he not? I don't get how. I don't understand. Like, I haven't done it, so I don't know. Teach see, me, see, but. like, can you can you imagine? <laughs> say I'm an actor, and I have her heels all up in the air. They're on my shoulders, and they go action, huh, huh. And I look up, and her husband's right there. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I'm, I'm pretty just, sure. I'm pretty sure they're not gonna invite her husband, the husband to set. You know, I'm, I'm I not, hope not. Like. He's looking. <laughs> and there's probably like this is the everybody's there like the director, the sound guy with the boom and like lighting, and you're like all these people like how do you even I don't know. Okay, grab your shot right there. I, I sit right. mine, so let's sit. Okay. If you want to down yours, up to you. But I sit mine. Okay. Salute to a long and prosperous one. life. Salute. Okay. Thank you. This is good. And I got this because she said this was her favorite. That's my favorite. Tres generaciones. You know what? It has like mm-hmm. a, almost like a Woody. Mm-hmm. Not Woody Harrelson, but. A wo- <laughs> it has a Woody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a Woody taste to it. I like it. A Woody. So, but, but yeah, those sex scenes in there, some of them are very believable. Now, yeah. you being an actress, okay. be honest with me. Okay. At least in your taste of movies. Do you believe that every fucking movie should have a sex scene in it? No. No. It I, have to. I sometimes I fucking hate when you see a guy a car chasing a car. A guy stops, takes out a fucking gun, kills somebody, boom. Then you got an explosion, and then all of a sudden you see a scene where the guy's making out with the fucking girl. 
what the <laughs> fuck does that have to do with anything? And I'll tell you why, because my dad, uh, uh, he raised me. I, you know, I like to say my parents raised me right. Yeah. I did wrong all on my own. Yeah. Um, but my parents raised me right. So my dad always taught me that in comedy, you don't necessarily have to cuss. You could be yeah. funny. True. You know, and acting yeah. uh, doesn't necessarily have to be have sex. Yeah. You can watch good movies. He showed me a lot of great movies that had nothing to do with sex. Yeah. Like, I seen this one fucking stupid ass fucking movie where this couple, uh, uh, the, the woman sees the boyfriend kill somebody. He's stabbing him. He's got blood all over himself. And then the girl walks up to him and they start making out. She goes, that was so fucking sexy. And they start making love with fucking blood all over themselves. Ooh. And I'm like, that was Ooh. so fucking stupid. Unnecessary. But it went an award. unnecessary. What? Yeah, one of the fucking award. That? I'll tell you after. I'm not trying you don't to give. Want to promote it. I'm not trying to give him any clout. Clout chasing as directors, but <laughs> no, but. not every movie needs that, and it doesn't have to have that. You know, um, sometimes you need it to like carry the story, like if it's necessary, right? But uh -huh. it's not always needed. You know, yeah, but yeah. I, I'll tell you right now. Um, I have a passion project that I'm working on and passion, like passion of the Christ. <laughs> it's, it's basically a, a, a short film, but it's, it's a, it's a, a story based on my relationship with my high school sweetheart, my ex. Okay. And so it, we were on and off for many, many years. And so, um, there in that, in the, in the film that we're creating, there is a sex scene in there. Okay. But the reason why it's a part of the storyline is because um, when you think about relationships, right, you're in relationships, especially if you've been in a long term relationship with someone you're like madly in love with high school, sweetheart, whatever might be like, you know, the first girl you fell in love with. Right. And um, you break up, you make up, you make each other jealous, you break up, you make up like, right. you know, but you can't really let each other go. And that's kind of similar to what we would go through and so there's a scene in there where yeah there's a makeup there's a makeup sex scene mm -hmm. and so i think it's necessary okay. to tell the story because that's a part of what happened in our relationship where you know you you've you've separated and you come back together and there would that there would just be that like connection, you know, and not boring, to say it was healthy, but yeah, I don't get it. But. <laughs> yeah, and I'll tell you why, because I don't look at somebody told me this. Actually, I can't say his name. He told me, man, if you really want to get a girl like you really want her to like you, tell her your best, your best, your favorite movie is The Notebook. <laughs> and she'll be like, oh, my God, that's mine, too. He goes, I never even seen that shit, but every girl fall for it. <laughs> I, I can't that watch. That is not my favorite film. I can't watch movies like that. Alice. I'd be like, is that your favorite film? Really? Right, exactly. Maybe, I, I don't think I want to see you again. Yeah, you must be gay. <laughs> anyway, anyway so, not that there's anything wrong with that, because I don't want YouTube to shut me down. Okay, Alex, I want you to ask, uh, as best way you can ask, would you allow your lady to have a sex scene in a movie? Okay. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, let me tell you about that. Okay. Okay. Um, about allowing your woman to have a sex scene okay. in, in a film, right? So I was, I was engaged once. once. Long time ago once. when the dinosaurs used to roam the earth. I was engaged once. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm obviously not married, so I'm no longer engaged. But, uh, <laughs> and I'll I'm an actor. That. So my boy, he was my boyfriend at the time. Mm -hmm. Um I was performing in San Francisco in state on stage in a in a theater um, in Union Square, like a play or something. <clears throat> yeah, okay. On stage, yeah, in theater, in a play, and um, I this is the first time I had invited him to come watch me live. Like he mm -hmm. saw my work online, but like um, like footage of my work, but not anything live. And yes. so he saw me live, and I was on stage, and I was in a relationship with someone in that in that play, in that scene, and after w it was over. Um, and my family was there, friends were there and stuff. After it was over, he was like, uh, yeah, you, you need to make a decision. You either choose me or you choose acting, but you can't be in a relationship with me and be an actor. So what's your, what's your decision? Like what's, <clears throat> he basically gave me an ultimatum. But, but, but uh, let, let me interrupt you. But he knew what you did when he got into the relationship, right? Oh, I was already full blown actor. Yes. Okay. That's, that's on him, but please continue. Yes. And so I'm like, well, why? 
You know, he's like, I can't stand seeing you with another guy. I'm like, okay, it was a relationship. There was no, there was no kissing. Right. There was no love making. It was just like Maybe a relationship. Hands? We hugged at okay. the end. But in his mind, it was like, oh, hell no. Right, right, he right. He was right, like, right. that's my woman. No way. <clears throat> and so he's like, you got to, you got to choose. It's me or acting. You can't, you, you can't have both. And I'm like, I, I didn't even have to think about it. I'm like, well, then. I'm, it's a no brainer. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm an actor. Kick rocks. Go you home know? and get your cup of noodles and get the fuck out. And like, that, that was it. <laughs> so, but listen, but listen, <laughs> but listen. So we broke up. Okay. <clears throat> we broke up. I'll drink to that. <laughs> I'll, I'll drink to that too. <clears throat> and then that's how we got engaged. Because like a month later he came with the ring and he's like, I'm so sorry. Um, you know, I, I know I you were an actor before and you know, um I I, I respect that you're an actor da, 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 all this stuff and I'm like and then then, then he proposed. <laughs> And you said yes. And I said yes. Wow. <laughs> but obviously there was all this underlying, like he could, the truth was it, he, he did that, but he was still hoping I was going to quit acting and it wasn't going to, there was all these things he was trying to do. I'm like, no, I'm an actor. I'm going to, I'm going to always be actor. So like you got to accept it or not. But Yeah. You, you know, you know, okay. Let's talk a little bit about relationships. I, I had this conversation with a guest here not too long ago, but I think it's worth bringing up. Okay. Uh, one thing that I found out, of relationships, of couples, <clears throat> many times, and this goes both ways, both ways. It, it, it goes for women and for men. But I, a lot of women, a lot of times, are attracted to men without knowingly that possibly that man reminds them of their dad. Oh, hands down. Okay. Hands down. Same yes. thing for men. Some, sometimes, a lot of times, they're attracted to a certain woman, and many times they probably don't know why they feel so comfortable around them, mm -hmm. and it's because it reminds them of mama at home. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I get that. Okay, I get that. But here's my thing, okay? It could be good and it could be bad because you see a lot of these relationships where the woman is constantly choosing, let's just say, a piece of shit to be <laughs> nice. Okay? Over and fucking over and yeah. over. And yeah. you see them on social media. Mm -hmm. All men are the same. All men are... Oh, nobody told you to try yeah, them all. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> so one day I had a conversation with a female because, you know, she was repeating the same cycle. Yeah. So I, I asked her one day, tell me about your father. And she pretty much described all her exes. Pretty much, yeah. So, so what I'm saying, my point is this, yeah. that many times as fathers, our responsibility is treat our children right, treat our daughters right, because that mm -hmm. eventually that's what they're going to end up choosing. Right. All, okay. Not Whether only, it's good or bad. Not only treating them right, but it's how they treat other women, like how they treat your mom or how they treated your mom. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like, for an example, if, you know, if your kids see you loving your wife, mm -hmm. that's what they're going to want. Yep. That's mm -hmm. what they're going to go after. If he's touching, he's cuddling, and he kisses her and tells her, yeah. I love you. You grew up with that. Now, if you see, de la verga, pinche puta yep. culera, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Why do, I, why do I like that guy? <laughs> First, it's so familiar. Yeah, I don't know. okay. Yeah. I get now, yeah. then there's people that just fucking love toxic relationships. <laughs> I like don't the, like fucking the drama, the get excitement, that. the adrenaline rush, I having someone stalking them. <laughs> I don't fucking get that. Like, I interviewed people here when I saw in their name. They just straight told me, I love toxic bitches straight up. See? Yeah, I mean, there's, you I, know? I, I, I have guy friends who, date toxic girls and that's their thing that's and, and, and you kind of wonder yeah. like what the fuck do you see mm -hmm. you know this one guy told me Man, my girl burned my room <clears throat> she she ruined my <laughs> fucking computer she fucking crashed into my fucking car she broke it she, yeah she broke in the window like i have a friend who uh his ex lady broke in the window like tagged his walls inside his house like yeah. um just T crazy psycho shit. It, it, yeah. She cheated on me four times with four different guys, <laughs> you know, and I was like, how do you know that? Well, the guys contacted me. <gasps> what, what, you don't think they were lying? No, I saw the pictures. Oh Fuck. my God. <laughs> and then it's a week time. later, it's time to leave. A week later, I post a picture with my queen. Oh, hell no. That Back bitch, again. You know, queen, she's a fucking possum. <laughs> You're no longer a hood rat. You graduated. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> That's just to put it nicely. Salud. So, yeah, mm. I feel like you know you do, you do, you end up 
a lot of people end up, you know, um, with people that are like the people they watch growing up. You know what I mean? Okay, now let's move on to the next topic of relationships. Um, I have a lot of stories, and like I was sharing with Sonia earlier, I said, I don't have a lot of friends, but I know a lot of people. And for some reason, I'm a magnet when people want to fucking, for some reason, they think I'm Dr. Phil. Can I just tell you what's going on <laughs> in my life? And I'm like, well, my ears ain't trash cans, but since I've known you for a couple of years, if you want to vent, go for it. Dr. Tony, Dr. Yeah, Dr. Yeah. Dr. Wizard. Yeah. <laughs> so this guy tells me this. He said, um, you know, we're in 2021, and I was all for the, o the whole open relationship. Shit. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So let me hear this. So here's what he said that he goes for a year, a year before that 2020, I was trying to talk my girl into let's have a threesome with another female. He was trying to talk his girl into a threesome. Okay. Yeah. Like let's invite another girl, you know, and it's just going to be pure sex, blah, blah, blah. And no cuddling I, after? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I already knew where it was going because I, I know this guy. It's been said also, he's a jealous ah. guy. Mm. So <clears throat> he, um, she, after a whole year, she just straight said, you know what? I don't like girls. I don't want to do it. Mm. I don't want to bring this into our marriage. I don't want to bring it to the home. And, uh, you know, they didn't have any kids or nothing. Well, he, for, please, for my birthday, just do once for me. She finally said, okay. Well, oh, uh, she brought in a girl. He wanted her to bring her in. She brought in a girl that told her, if you ever decide to go by, I want to be your first. <laughs> so she said, who else to ask? So brought her in. They did their thing. Okay. About a couple of weeks or a couple of months later, I forgot it because he told me this story about a year ago. And he just tells me that um, his girl asked him, you know what? I'm not going to lie to you. I really like it. And I would like to do it again with you. Okay. So now it came from her. Shit. Okay. All right. And that he said, um, he's like, <clears throat> um, it's not my birthday, babe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> Pretty much. No. He said, nah, bitch, you liked it, huh? <gasps> I, I know you. Know. So he got upset. Oh, he shit. got jealous. Now he's getting jealous. Yeah. Mm. And, and then she said, well, you it's know what? I, I did it for you and blah, blah, blah. So <clears throat> what ended up happening? She asked, she ended up asking him again a couple of months. I really would like to do it again, but I don't want to do it without you. She mm -hmm. was at least giving him that. Yeah. And he said he turned her down three times, and then he found out throughout the year that his girl was going behind his back mm -hmm. and was doing the nasty with his other female. Mm -hmm. Well, he called her, called her a fucking whore. Mm -hmm. It was an puta. It was this. It was that. I stopped him, and I said, bro, who opened the door, her or you? Yeah. And he goes, I did. And I said, okay, they own up to it. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. If she liked it, then she liked it. You yeah. were the one that was pretty much telling her. You convinced her. Yeah, you she convinced her. She didn't want to do it in the first place. You convinced her. So you know. his girl ended up giving him an ultimatum. Say, said, look, if I can't have her as a girlfriend and it's just sex, then we're good. And he said, fuck it, <sighs> we're good. She packed up her shit and moved in with oh, homegirl. Oh, shit. <laughs> And, 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 and you know what he, you know what he was trying to, trying to tell me? Should I expose her on Instagram? No, that's his fault. He should he should have never started that. Mm, no. Mm -mm. Should I that's expose on him. her? Expose her. Yeah, like expose what? yourself. You're it, the one that introduced her. Exactly. Like, Fuck my mom. Oh no. And I didn't say your name, so if you're watching, don't get mad. <laughs> so you know when you're dining with the wizard, anything, anything goes. goes. So I knew yes. you were to say that. <laughs> Anything so, else? So yeah, so be very, very careful. Yeah, be careful. Well, um, don't be introducing stuff you're not gonna be okay with in the long run because I know it another can, one. It can go but sideways. I'm, I know another one, but I'm gonna wait till I get a little bit more buzz before I share that one. <laughs> Crazy. Okay, okay but wait. yeah. But okay. but you know what? But hold on. Uh really, really quick. One thing that if you're an actress, if you're a producer, if you're a DJ, if you're a podcaster, if you're in the industry at all. Be careful who you choose, because I truly believe this, and this was told to me by my mentor and in my 20s. He said, who you marry will either make you or break you. True, yeah. Who you marry will either make you or break you. Now, if somebody wants to get with you, say somebody named fucking Felipe uh, uh, likes you and he wants to date you, he's got to know that you're an actress. He already yes. knows that from the very beginning. Yeah. Now, if Felipe later on gets fucking jealous, Tell that motherfucker to kick rocks because yeah. he already fucking knew. Right. My thing is this, that if I get into a relationship with somebody in the industry, I already know what this woman is doing. Mm -hmm. You're not going to, I'm not going to hinder. Stop. 
them no. from doing what it'd be like someone coming to you and saying, Hey, you know, right. I like your podcast. I like your, your, your rodeo radio. But when you get with her, she's just like, Oh, I want you to stop that. Mm -hmm. You're like, wait, what? Wait, I what? truly believe that she will love you more if you support her dreams. Yes. Yes. Support her dreams yes. and clap her cheeks. Right. <laughs> and she will love you forever. Take I'm, care of her at yeah. home. That's all I'm saying. And support her. In her work. <laughs> so you were, you were going to say? Oh my God, I forgot what I was going to say. What were you talking about? Make something up. <laughs> oh, would you? Would I what? Would you be okay with... Okay, sorry. If you mm -hmm. met... Let's say you met an actor, actress. Mm -hmm. Right. And she had to do a sex scene. And you had to... Let's just say you... How about this? You're dating an actress. Yes. And she already filmed the sex scene. And she asks you to watch it in the film do you watch it or do you like decline and you don't watch it knowing that you she was an right. actor before she met you okay but she already did it before we got together right no uh not necessarily but well, you, let's just say she did it she did it before you guys you got, got together, we're together. Yeah. okay number one i have no reason to say anything okay nothing but one thing is this i would tell her like this uh what am i going to watch Okay, you you want to know, so you you're not surprised. Yeah, you're yeah, not like that. That's you, what I don't want because you I don't want, want a vision of her with some dude, and you're like, wait, I didn't want to see that, right. right? I don't want to walk in the theater and see her ankles touching her ears. <laughs> I, I don't want, and then like, what the fuck? You can do that. You're that flexible. <laughs> you I don't even recognize you. Were that you. Flexible. <laughs> you know, you know, I, I, and, and then the actor comes. Hey, how you doing? Your girl's great. Bro. <laughs> He's like, she was great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. You didn't fucking tell me that you you saw his long john. But so, in, but anyway, no, okay. If she so told you me, want to know? But let's just say, let's just say she says it's pretty explicit. Like, okay, so it's a sex scene. Yeah, it's a sex scene. We're nude. Okay, then I would be like, okay, look, it. This happened before. I'm just glad you're telling me. Uh, if I care about you, then I'm going to support you. Yeah. Just know that I probably will feel some type of way because I'm not used to seeing you like that. Right. It, it may it may take time for me to get used to that. Mm -hmm. But if I want to be with you, I have to respect you and, and, and uh, uh, how would you say, uh, support your goals and your dreams. Mm -hmm. But please understand my feelings that if it bothers me, take those things under consideration. True. Yeah. That's it. I see that. Yeah. That makes sense. You know, but, yeah. but yeah, I mean like, but if I'm the guy and the girl and I'm humping every week in a <laughs> fucking movie, you know, how do You're I like, baby, come watch this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> come like, watch my moves. <laughs> like, babe, she was great, babe. You gotta, you gotta see it. You, you won't believe what her mouth can do. Like, no, but what I'm saying is, see, it, it goes both ways. Right. Right. It goes, but you gotta we, respect each other's work. I feel like in, and then in my industry, like, like I said, I've never done a sex scene, but I've, I've had kissing scenes. Uh -huh. and now, now, how was that for you? Oof. Um, Good or bad or in the middle? In, um, I, but they weren't bad. Okay. They weren't bad. They're just uncomfortable because you have to kiss this person that you have no Mm -hmm. real chemistry with really there's no connection there's nothing know? there so now you gotta I mean, act sometimes there could be but in, in some cases you're not always gonna feel that chemistry with the with i mean there's on-screen chemistry but it doesn't mean that you can feel comfortable kissing them and then also there's cameras and lights and everything all around you and everybody's watching and you have to do the scene again and again and again cut and like, <laughs> do it again cut do it again cut <laughs> But let me tell you, I um, I did have a, a feature film that I was in where there was a, a kissing scene at the end, and it was very innocent. It was mm -hmm. like just a kissing scene in a car, no tongue or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It was just like a peck. You no know? tacos de lengua? <laughs> yeah, no. And um, my family all went to go support it, my friends, everything, everybody. And then my nephew, who was little, he was little, 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 right, right, right. like young, young, you know, he's a teenager now, but he was little. Um, he went to watch it. Um, it was playing in, in the Bay Area at, at all the indie theaters. So he went to go watch it. I was with him, and then he was like, he's like, ah, when it came on, because he didn't know it was coming, right? Uh -huh. Like you said, let me know when it's coming. He's like, ah, uh, uh, ew, ew, ew. I don't, I don't want to see that. Thea, like, what? You're kissing somebody? No. I. He, he like almost walked out the theater. See, now how do you he's explain like, that to somebody that young and innocent? He was like, I never want to see that again, Thea. I never want to see you kiss somebody again. I mean, and I'm like, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, and so for, he's a teenager now right, and he's right, just right. like, he's like, I'll support 
anything you do, Thea, but I never want to see you kiss anybody again. Like, if it has a kissing scene, I'm not watching it. He told right, me that. Right. He just doesn't want to see it. So I get that. Right, When right. people care about you, they're like, mm, yeah, I can't watch that, you know? Right. No, all good. Yeah. All good. Now, if the girl that I was dating told me, uh, you may not want to see this scene. <laughs> Close your eyes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so my thing is now becomes like, babe, are you going to take any role? Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. So so now, yeah. but that's a that's a valid question. Yep. You just can't say, but I'm an actress. No. Yeah, but you were sucking his cock while he was driving <laughs> in the fucking scene. <laughs> some things, yeah, no. No, there's some, okay, so that comes, that brings up a different topic where, okay, I'm an actor, but it doesn't mean I'm going to take a role like that. I know, and right. I, I just, hypothetical. Right, hypothetical. But I, there was a, um, there was a role that I was offered. Um, it was like this, couple that goes out rock climbing and then all these things happen and they're rock climbing uh you know film and and there's this scene where they're like they do this big hike and they get up on the top of the mountain and And then things happen and things happen they get naked and they have sex and i was reading the script and i was like yeah no i'm not okay with that and so then i contacted the director and i'm like thank you for the opportunity i really appreciate it but i'm just not okay with nudity like I'm, right. just, I'm not okay with that scene. Right. And so if if that scene's not there or if it's implied and I, there's no nudity, then I'll do it, but I'm I'm just not going to take it if there is. And so he's like, uh, unfortunately, I want to keep it as a, I want to keep that scene as a nude scene. And so then I, I pulled my name out of the hat. I'm like, I'm not going to do it. See, sometimes I think, I'll be honest with you, and they have every right to be if they want to because they got all the fucking money. I think a lot of these fucking directors they like filming those fucking scenes, even if that movie's going to fucking flop, just oh. to see you butt fucking naked. Yeah, yeah. I, I truly Absolutely. believe that. Oh, pfft. more Quentin, than you know. When Tarantino wrote that part where Sama Hayek on Dust of Dawn put her toes in his mouth while she put a tequila. He's like, I want that. I want, I want her toes in my mouth. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Alex, give us the results of the question. What was the question, please? What did we ask? I forgot. Watch. The question was, would you let your girl oh. do a sex scene in a movie? There you go. Uh, 24% said, hell yeah. Only 20, see, only 24%, right? And, and 76% said, chale, fool. Right? Yeah. Right? See? A so, lot so of people the, are not okay with that. They're not okay, but there are some people that are cool with that. Yeah. There's some people who like to watch, right? Volts. So they'll be like, oh yeah, hell yeah. That okay, was we're going to get into that in a little bit. So, <laughs> Go ahead, Alex. I said that was 80 out of 89 votes. Okay. Okay. So yeah, it was like a quarter of the people are are okay with it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. A quarter. Yeah. Hey, at least they're honest. So if you're on the live chat and you're honest, mm-hmm. cool. And you're down to. You're, you're okay uh, with your lady doing a sex scene? Yeah. Getting her cheeks clapped. Uh, and you Go watch for it. it. I mean, and then your friends watch it. And your work, colleagues at work watch it. And your homeboys watch I mean, and come your on. Mom everybody's going to watch your lady. It's like. <laughs> but she's an actress look at her but she's an actress i don't know oh the way she moaned right there that was great she wasn't acting homeboy like <laughs> that's why like a lot of you know like a lot of actors who are intimate in scenes end up end up hooking up with the actors right because they get all hot and heavy on the scene and then they end up divorcing their husbands and wives and that's get true. together right i mean he, 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 okay look at, <clears throat> i was watching narcos uh just i only watched the first season with um Pablo Escobar, yeah, Narcos, and remember, I, I don't know if you've seen that one. No, I, no, I okay, I, I never seen the Narcos Mexico, but I seen the, the one uh, Pablo Escobar, mm. and he was fucking a journalist, like this was a real life, like this was a real person, that, uh, uh, I guess in real life he was fucking okay. a journalist, and he was controlling kind of oh, like the media. Is it the movie? No, it was the the Netflix special. Um, who who played the journalist? I don't I know. I think I did see it, but so, go ahead. Some okay. some. Uh, uh, some girl. Okay. And then it's funny because there's a sex scene where he's boner and her dog is now standing up. Okay. Okay. Then she says something that tripped me out that they actually said, you know, on Netflix or in the movie. Okay. She's like, I, I, I. That's what she's doing. And she goes, metame lo para el culo. So then he pulls it out, puts it in. She goes, I. And I'm thinking to myself, if that was my girl, I don't know if that shit would sound right. <laughs> but baby, it's just acting. You were just saying, you just told him to stick it up your ass. And then you go, I. 
No, but I'm not going to lie to you. It, it was on TV. I thought okay. it was hilarious. But imagine if that was your girl. Right? Yeah. See, that's... Okay, I can't. I can't. Like, that can't. I can't. I mean, like I said, I know I'm, we're writing a film where there's a sex scene, but it's implied. It's not mm-hmm. nude or anything. It's like, it's... it's. I don't know. Not like... You don't always... You, you can have a sex scene without even being nude right. but also there's a, a certain extent they're telling a story they want to tell right. a story how crazy their sex was right? right so that makes sense it's it's representing okay. something but like i wouldn't i wouldn't take that part you know yeah so there's yeah. just certain parts i wouldn't take you know but. speaking of movies um there was a couple of movies that i think just rubbed me the wrong way I, it, it just there was a lot of nudity it could have been slash like you know how to say rated Tone r down it could yeah, have yeah. been rated r slash porn <laughs> Hostel. <laughs> Wait, hostel? Hostel. There was a lot of fucking in that movie. Okay, and oh, then yeah, there was yeah. a lot of gore. Gore. Uh, I yeah. can't say it was scary, but it was gory. Yeah. Did you like that it movie? It was gory. <sighs> hostel. Okay, hostel brings back like really, really, really bad memories because. Why is that? <laughs> I, okay, so I've done a lot of traveling in my life. Okay. <laughs> um,. And, and, you know, when they say, uh, what's the term? What, what do they say? Uh, ignorance is bliss, where, mm-hmm. like, if you don't really know, then you don't really, like, uh, you're not really afraid. Like, you're, you're, you're happy because you don't really know. So, but, I mean, I grew up in Eastside San Jose, so I can take care of myself. But right, right. Um, when I traveled, I traveled a lot. I traveled mm-hmm. to different countries by myself. And I'll usually go Is by that my, my choice? Yes, by choice. Okay. But I'll usually go because I know somebody who lives there. Like, oh, I have a friend who's staying in... In, in Budapest. Yeah, or Czech Republic. <laughs> Czech Republic. Czech in the or, house. Or France or whatever. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're staying. Okay, let me come visit you, right? But I'll, I'll go by myself. Like, I'm not afraid to go by myself. And so I've done a lot of traveling on my own. And so... Um, but this one trip that I took um, to... I went to France... And then we, t- I met a friend there, and then we took a bus to Spain, to Barcelona. And we booked a hotel through a third party. A hostel. We did not book a hostel. We didn't. We booked a hotel. Okay, okay. I, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just being yeah. humorous. We booked a hotel. We get to the hotel in, okay. in Barcelona, like they say, right? <laughs> we get there and they're like, oh, I'm sorry, you're, we overbooked the hotel. So we put you in a hostel down the street. And we're like, well, we didn't book a hostel, we booked a hotel. Uh-huh. Like, we, like, they're like, I'm sorry, there's nothing we could do for you. You have to go to the hostel. That's where we booked you. And we're like, this, what? Like, that's, what? Who does that, right? And we're like, well, where else are we going to stay? So we were lugging our luggage all the way down the street to the hostel. And we're like, what the fuck? Like, what do we, we're in a hot, like, I never wanted to stay in a hostel. I, I already, I already watched the film. I already watched right, hostel. Right, so right. I'm like scared of shit. I'm like, I, I don't want to stay in a hostel. Okay. We get there and we're like, what do we do? What do we do? We, we have to stay here. And it's just like the way you see it in the film, right? Like you share a room with other people and stuff. But this one was, it was smaller. So. We shared a room with, um, there was four beds, four twin size beds. I couldn't do that shit. <laughs> I couldn't do that shit. And you're in the room with strangers. You're in the room with strangers. And they give you a key to that room, but yeah, you're in a room with strangers. And then the bathroom's down the hall, but it's down the hall and you got to share it. You got to share it to shower and everything. It's just right. like, it's creepy. So we're like, well, what else are we going to do? We have nowhere else to go. Right. right. Everything else is booked. So we're in the hostel. Um, we end up talking to the girls that are assigned to the room with us, and they're. Can you pass me the little wrestler? And their lim- their English is limited. They're from Vietnam, and they speak a little bit of French and a little bit of Spanish. So it was like really we couldn't communicate. Really, we were, I mean they're from another country. We, like our languages weren't. We couldn't communicate, but we right. knew that they were two girls that were staying in the room with us, right? And and they were gonna leave the next day but Uh not but not that day and so me and my friend were like well okay we plan to go out so we went out right bar hopping and you know we had a good time and then we come back we have our little key to the hostel right we come back and it's in the middle of the night the clubs close really late there so it's like probably i don't know three four in the morning i don't know um 
five. I don't know. We get there and the girls aren't there. And I'm like, that's weird. They didn't look like the partying type. Right, right, right. They should be here because they're not leaving until tomorrow. Like we're, they should be sleeping. Like, why aren't they here? I'm like, that's weird. Like they told us they weren't leaving until that's tomorrow. That's weird. So that's weird. So then I'm thinking the movie Hostel, I'm like, somebody kidnapped them. Like, somebody kidnapped them. Like, what? They, they should be here. Oh, well, right. <clears throat> get in my pajamas. Get ready for bed. Okay. And, and I'm, I don't even want to get in the sheets. Let me tell you, the sheets are like, oh, I'm like, oh, these feel like they haven't been washed in like a month. And so I'm like laying on top of them, right? I'm like, oh, I don't want to. Oh. It, it's dingy. It's, it's dingy. It's like. The worst of the worst of the worst that you could stay at, but it's a place to lay your head, right? So we lay down, we're trying to go to sleep, and then somebody is trying to open the door. It mm. sounds like somebody's like trying to open like with the door with the key or something. Like some naked like white boy with the with the you know the doorknob, and then I I'm a light sleeper, so I my eyes are open. I'm like, oh shit, oh maybe it's the girls, maybe they're coming back. And then I heard it a little bit more. It was like wiggling the handle a little bit mm -hmm. more. And I'm like, okay, they must be having a hard time with their key. Like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. So I sit up, and then I see, I see the doorknob, like, wiggling, and I'm like, dude, somebody's trying to come into the room. Like, what's going on? And so then my heart, as soon as I, like, realize, like, whoever's on the other side of that door doesn't have a key, I, like, I get up. We've been drinking, so, like, I'm tipsy, too. Right. I get up, and I'm like, oh, shit, like, Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. So then I'm I change I I don't my brain is like going and I'm like, I'm gonna change I'm gonna I put jeans on, I put my shirt on, I put my, my leather jacket on, I zip it up, and I'm like getting all my shit ready, and then they start like um really shit. trying to try to oh, break open the door. Fuck. And then they start hitting the door, like knocking the door and like pounding the door, and I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> my friends are already awake and we're like, I'm like, what the fuck? Oh my God, somebody's just, oh my God, somebody's gonna fucking kidnap us. It's like the movie Hostel. Oh shit, oh my God, what do we do? And we're on the second floor, right? And I look out the window and I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, we put, the, we could throw the mattresses down. I'll put the mat, we'll throw the mattress down and then we'll jump off and we'll jump off in the mattress because whoever's on the other side of that door is trying to come in and they don't have a key and they're gonna fucking kidnap us or they're gonna rape us and I ain't going down like that. I'm gonna fight for my life. <laughs> Let's jump. Let's what the jump. fuck happened? Let's jump. So we're like, windows open. We're like trying to like look out to see like, oh shit, how far is it? Like that looks far. Like we're going to break an ankle or something. Right? And then it stopped. And I was like, oh shit. Whoever it was, like, I don't know if they're like listening or what, but they just stopped. And I was like, we were just like, somebody's going to gonna take us <laughs> and they just like stopped i could not sleep the rest of the day the morning whatever i was away so you never found out who that was i never found out who it was i i wasn't about to open the door and figure out who was on the other side right of right that. okay i'm gonna tell you what i would have oh done my God. i'm gonna tell you what i would have done true story <clears throat> i would have done what my boy bundy rest in peace used to do when he used to bodyguard for us in the early 90s no lie we had we had a security for uh, uh um each room and this fat motherfucker used to sleep butt fucking naked, okay? <laughs> Black dude, he was like six seven, straight up, okay? That's a big... Motherfuckers were like... Because they found out that the artist was in that room. Oh. So, so people were like... Ch -ch 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 -ch. And I was like, Bundy, man, we got another one. Shit. He was like, I'll take care of it, Tone. I'll take care of it. What, what's up, Crawford? Crawford was named High C. That was my artist. Okay. Uh, artist I was DJing yeah. and producing for. But our security was right there. And he goes, fuck that. He gets up. His Again. big ass black booty looked like pumpernickel bread. Okay. <laughs> Seriously, he got up and then he starts doing this. <laughs> what the fuck? Dude? He starts doing that. Okay. <clears throat> and I turn on the fucking light and I see him fucking, yeah. you know, playing with the tallywhacker. <laughs> Okay, what the fuck are you doing? He goes, the fucking door. He opens the door, butt fucking naked, hard as fuck. <laughs> Fuck's going on? They see his ass, they fucking run. <laughs> That's what I would have done. Oh my God. That's what I would have done. 
fuck's going on now? Come on back. Fuck. Did you come for me? Yes. That's what he fucking did. I was like, your motherfuckers won't let me sleep. I was like, Oh my god! Yeah. They ran. They fucking ran. <clears throat> so that's what. I, take me to a motherfucking yeah. hostel. Well, so. I mean, yes, we probably should have went with a male. Like we probably yeah, shouldn't yeah. have been traveling alone. You got at least women, a blow up, you know what I mean? And, like, <laughs> and I'm saying that not because I think I'm, I I you know not because I'm being chauvinistic. It, it's it's a chauvinistic country, mm-hmm. and so they own they don't respect women. I know, and that sucks. And And that sucks. If you have, you're right. When I was in another story, when I was in, you're full of stories. Paris, um, man, that country's dangerous. Let me tell you. Always compare this. Okay, if y'all never been to Paris as as a woman, men, you would never know because you're a man and nothing's gonna happen to you out there. But as a woman, I'm starting to think of that movie (laughs) Taken. Yes, Taken. Yes, just like that. Okay, if you watch Taken, that's exactly how it is. So we were in Paris. It's and just business. <laughs> and <clears throat> there was this guy. Oh, there's so many stories about Paris, but there was this one guy who was chasing us. He was like mentally not all there, but he was literally chasing us. Like we were on the street walking and he was like acting all crazy and like taunting us and chasing us and like laughing behind us, but like crazy face chasing us. And then... um we went up to a cop and we're like in Paris. We were like, we told him that this guy was like following us and chasing us. Uh-huh. And then the cop was like, well, what do you want me to do about it? What the fuck? And we're like, well, he's chasing us. And he's like, well, what did he do to you? We're like, he's chasing us. And they're like, he's like, did he do anything to you? Not yet, but he's about to. Yeah. And he's like, well, you're not dead. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, okay, I can't go to a cop. And tell him what's wrong because he ain't gonna right. protect me, so I gotta figure something else out. But, right. th- but <clears throat> the next day we were there, my friend's boyfriend met up with us, and okay, <clears throat> he's she's tall, he's little, okay, he's small, little That's scrawny. They're not question. together anymore, so I can say that. Um, he's not. He, I mean, I could protect us better than he could, but the fact that he was with us. And he was a male. Right, right. Everybody respected us. Nobody taunted us. Right. Nobody called us names. Nobody tried to like, you know, take us because he was there. And if there's a male presence, right. they'll respect you. Right. But if you're a woman by yourself or just women, oh, tch, they'll grab right. you. They'll call you names. They'll Fuck. everything is game there. So my comparison is I would rather be I would feel safer. I would feel safer drunk by myself, downtown, wherever, downtown San Jose, downtown right. LA, wherever, I would feel safer drunk by myself in a mini skirt than I would fully clothed um, in Paris by myself. Really? Yes. Damn. I would feel safer in, in because it doesn't matter over there in like Paris, France, I mean, I mean uh, Spain, like all those, uh, like uh, Spain and, and France, like all those countries, they don't treat women with respect if you're not with a male. Yeah. It could be your son. If you have a little son, it's okay. They'll respect you. But if you're a woman alone, oh, all hands. Like, like anything goes. They could do whatever they want. I think I want to go to Paris now. <laughs> I hope somebody knocks on my door. <laughs> Fuck's going on? <laughs> Where are you guys at? The fuck? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. We were on the subway in 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 Paris uh-huh. and like the subway ended like the line ended uh-huh. and you had to get off and we're like what the fuck we don't know where we're at like what do we do and then you're walking down this tunnel and then there was these like kids and they were just um there was a vending machine and they were like vandalizing it kicking it in trying to break break it open to right, right. get the stuff inside or whatever and I, I so it's a long tunnel right it's all dark but it's a tunnel here's where the the metro is at subway thing and then over there is where we have to go to the stairs to get out to the sidewalk right and so i'm like okay it's here we're here we got to be over there but we got to walk past these kids that are over here trying to break open this like vending machine like yeah that's a challenge because I don't know if they're going to leave us alone or not. Right. Right. So then we're like, shit, we got to get to the other side. So we're like walking, walking, walking. And what do you know? They start fucking with us. Alex, give me another model, please. Uh-huh. And so um, I'm like, fuck, like, dude, we got to deal with this shit, you know? 
And luckily, they didn't physically attack us, but right. they they did everything else. You know, they like. But you know, the they, potential was there for them to. Oh fucking yeah, attack I, you. I, I, I'm Thank lucky. You. I'm alive. I'm lucky because nobody was there. It's the middle of the night. No police. Nothing. They could have killed us, raped us, whatever. Nobody would have known. Damn. Nobody would have done anything. Would you would have been afraid if there would have been like two midgets harassing you? <laughs> I would have been more afraid. <laughs> Especially if they were sitting on each other's shoulder wearing a trench coat, <laughs> look like a tall dude walking around like. <laughs> I'm just thinking about the little rascals. So. I know, right? I right. saw a meme recently. I think who was it? Do you know Anthony Fernandez? He's an actor. He just posted something about just about that with two, two, two like two vatos, like mm -hmm. one on top What's of the on other. What's on my T-shirt? No, they had no. But they had like a, a coat around them, and it, it's actually underneath there. There's two of them trying to be all hard. Like, okay, okay. <laughs> I want to ask you this, and be honest with me. I don't care if you break people's hearts right now. Can you date somebody shorter than you? No. No. Okay. I've never dated anybody shorter than me. Okay. Uh, God, I have to ask you. Can you date somebody that's overweight? Define overweight. Okay, say he's... Six foot, okay, and weighs three ten. Hmm. Six feet, three ten. Trying to think of body proportion. <laughs> Is it like kind of muscle, no. or just like all no, no, soft? No, T tits and stomach. Mm, no. <laughs> cankles and all. And he's got cankles. Yeah. Mm. So. Mm. Oh, uh, I do like Jack Black. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, I, I could understand that. <laughs> He's got so much like School, Schoolhouse Rock. That was, was that. Was, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That guy. I do like Jack Black. Yeah, I do. That's dope. So like someone like him, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. got to make me laugh though. Okay, yeah, he definitely got to make me laugh because then ain't he's not going to turn you happen. on if he just walks in the room. Goes, oh no, hey, yeah. you want some of this? Jack Black, Nacho like, Libre. Mm, give me some of that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am, I He's am married, though. He's married. No, no disrespect. Jack Black. <laughs> that's the first person that's ever said Jack Black. <laughs> hey, you asked me if I would. I didn't say, like, he was my first choice. That's my fault. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Can you date, like, a guy like Antonio Banderas? No. You know what? I fucking can't stand his ass. <laughs> my sisters will go crazy over no. his ass. I couldn't stand his accent. I remember I watched him, I think, in Mariachi. Hmm. They shot at his ass, They're like mm. bullets, okay? Mm -hmm. And instead of saying, you missed, he goes, you missed. You missed. I'm like, oh my God. And my sister was like, oh my God, he sounds so good. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, so I don't like, I mean, I wouldn't date Antonio Banderas, but I would Benicio del Toro. No, see, see, that dude is fucking ugly. <laughs> uh, I don't get that, but he's a fucking hell of an actor, so I get it. I understand. No, I like his like. Um, Look at Benicio del Toro. You know what he looks yeah, like, yeah. and I want you to think about this. He's, he's Mo not from the Three Stooges. He looks like Mo from the Three Stooges, and then he goes like eh, 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 mm -hmm. the way he talks. Yeah. but he's a hell of an he's actor. He's got that mystery about him. Yeah, that like you don't really know who he is. You don't know his personality. No, no, you know, but he's a hell of an actor. Usual so suspects. I, I got, and yeah, snatch. Of course, guys yeah. are so sick. I gotta, I gotta <laughs> give it up to him. But he should have told us, oh, fuck. so I know he probably gets mad, Panoch. Oh, yeah, so, he yeah. does. I'm so. sure he does. I'm, I don't know, but I'm sure he does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, um, l l let me see who's another. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple of actors that I truly believe, like, go under the fucking radar, but I think they're mm. a hell of an actors. Mm. I like Matt Damien. Okay. Matt, Matt Damon, yeah. Yeah, I like mm -hmm. him. I like, you know who else I like? He's fucking dope, is uh, Johnny Depp. I don't hear oh, yeah. a lot of people yeah, yeah. giving that guy his flowers. Yeah. Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. Fucking hell of a fucking actor. Yeah. Uh, um, and even though I don't like this fucking dude because he's always trying to be sexy in every fucking sexy. movie, stop trying to be sexy, homie. Period. Just act. Brad Pitt. <laughs> I mean, you know, this motherfucker shit. I think he's kind of past that phase now. Like, okay, if you look at his younger work, like... Or older Troy, stuff like he shaved his legs, wearing a fucking mini skirt, and instead of stabbing a dude in the fucking neck, he's got to jump up and stab him in the fuck, bro. He's got the like, uh, what is that, um, uh, Zoolander look on his younger stuff. He tries to make that sexy face in all of his roles. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. stop, yeah, yeah, stop. That, I guess that's <laughs> my fucking point. 
That's my fucking point. But he's a great fucking actor. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know who I do like? like, And he he played a great role, especially in Dust of Dawn, George Clooney. You like George Clooney? Yeah. George yeah, Clooney's fucking dope. He's solid. Now let's move on to the older actors. One guy that I fucking dope as actor, Morgan Freeman. Oh, hell yeah. He's... Yeah, Morgan Freeman is fucking goat. dope. Yeah. Another guy, rest in peace, uh, Sean Connery. Mm -hmm. Sean Connery's fucking dope. Uh, um, uh, what's that other guy's name? Um, uh, fuck, I just saw it at the training day. Denzel is fucking oh, dope. Oh, yeah. Have you seen his son? No. His son. Is he the one that, that did that movie? Um, his son's good. Uh, what, I saw him in a... Uh, fuck, what's it called? Uh, the the clan, Black Klansman? Yes. That's yes, him, huh? That's him. That movie is fucking dope. If yes. you haven't seen it, check yes. it out. Yeah. He's a, it's a black guy that joins the Ku Klux Klan. That's it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. That's it. <laughs> yes. that's it. He if is a black man dope. can join the KKK, yeah. convince the KKK to let him in, like, you watch it. That's what do you say? Uh, uh, this is John Starworth. <laughs> He's so good. He's so oh, good. God bless white America. <laughs> You're, you're pretty good with accents. <laughs> oh, man. Damn. Get him on the screen. <laughs> yeah. Just sexy. No, I'm <laughs> no but, but. I like, um, do you, do you watch, do you like Tom Hardy? Who's that guy? Who's, who's it? Tom Hardy. Tom, Tom Hardy. Hardy. He's in, Remind um, me. he's Bane in, um, in Batman? Batman. Yeah. But I got to see his fucking face because so all I remember in, is like, are you un people? <laughs> 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 he's, um. Un, un, what is it called? Uh, God, the one with um, Shay LaBeouf. Venom. He's in Venom. Yeah. Oh, Venom. that's him? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What was the name of that movie? I guess well, they were, uh, I think they were MMA fighters. Him and his brother fight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's good. He's good. He's yeah. really good. He's, he's really in good. Um, Peaky Blinders. He's one of the characters in Peaky Blinders. He's he was Bane? Yeah, he's Bane. Yeah. You can't tell because it's masked up, yeah. but he was Bane. Fuck. I think he's a good. Tom Hardy is a good actor. He's really no, no. Good. I, I, I do think he's dope. Yeah. I do think he's mm -hmm. dope. Uh, there's so many fucking dope actors. I um, mean, I mean, we Oscar can, Isaac. Who's that? The one that plays. He's in the um, recent Star Wars. Um, I forgot what character he plays, but he's also in other stuff like uh, Dune. He's the. I didn't see that one. He's in Dune. He's in. He's on the HBO show Scenes from a Marriage. He's really good. He's <clears throat> he's. Uh, I think he's from Guat Guatemala and uh, Cuba. I think mom and dad, Guatemalan and Cuban. So, but he's such a good actor. He's like, he's like really good, but he kind of, he, I, I'm gonna have to look you know, up. he's Latino, yeah, right? I'm going to have to look him up. And he's done, like, but he doesn't normally play Latino roles. He plays regular roles. Like, okay. I think in Scenes from Marriage, he plays a Jewish guy. But he's really good. Like mm. he's kind of the underdog. I feel like he's under the radar. A lot of people don't even know his name. Yeah, I don't even know who the fuck right? he is. But if I see him, I probably Oscar Isaac. Hey, hey, hey is Alex. He, is uh, he really quick, do we ask any other questions? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Look him up. Look hey, okay, up. Alex. Off the wall question you have to ask because we we have to keep it keep it going. Are there any cuts on the live chat? <laughs> Okay. I'm just learning what that is. <laughs> Don't lie. So. <laughs> but we'll explain do, that in a moment. Do you moment. know what that is? Yeah, we'll explain that in a moment. Let's finish. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Um, Actors. Okay, look. It. I like Keanu Reeves. Mm. Okay, I like oh, Keanu yes. Reeves. Yes. But I'm going to say this. I'm a big fan of all three Matrix movies. Okay. I heard the fourth one was a piece of shit. I like Keanu Reeves. I liked all of John Wick movies. Oh, John Wick, good. John, like John Wick's Wick fucking dope. Yeah. But you look exactly like fucking John Wick in The Matrix. Why did mm. you fucking do that? I'm looking at mm. you and I'm like, that's John Wick. No, it's mm. The Matrix. No, it's just fucking John Wick. Bro, mm. that's the fucking Matrix. And I'm arguing with myself and I'm like, what the fuck is he doing looking like John Wick? He's in the, the same character in a different film. Like, you need to be a different character. Yeah. Right. You know, and in The Matrix, yeah. you take the pill. So he took the pill again. So he took two pills, meaning in this movie he's on the pill. Okay, <laughs> I, I don't fucking get it, you know. And and <laughs> and every time, every and I gave this example before. When he delivers his lines, it's like he's asking questions. 
in like the, for an in example the, in the question mode yeah you know the which pill do i take the red yeah. pill or the blue pill <laughs> no no he'll do like he'll do this <laughs> don't i know you from somewhere <laughs> i'm cold like <laughs> motherfucker if you're cold you're say cold say you're cold yeah don't fucking go around asking the motherfucker like you you should know if you're fucking cold am i cold you know Tell I, me. <laughs> if i was into porn i would do one called the mattress <laughs> okay mattress. That's you what go I'm, into different mattresses yeah, and you yeah, jump exactly. in and you're exactly. like, so I, was, I didn't start with you. Who are you? Yeah, yeah, who Next the, woman. Exactly. Who are you? <laughs> Take this pill. Okay. And then after I'm done, I came. <laughs> <laughs> when did that happen? How did I get here? <laughs> who are you? Where did these midgets come from? So, exactly. Where did these midgets? Yeah. So, so my thing is this. Uh, Keanu Reeves, please don't look like fucking John Wick in the fucking <laughs> Matrix on point. Well, I mean, you probably want to talk to um, costume and uh, hair and makeup and like have them switch it up, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't do Unless that. he's like, I need to keep my hair in this. But song. you know what? I'm still going to see it because uh, I like Keanu Reeves. I support his movies. Mm. I love fucking John Wick and I heard they're coming out with a John Wick part four. Mm, I'd watch that. You know, yeah, I watched that shit too. That shit's fucking dope. Mm. But poor doggy. Yeah, yes, it, yes exactly. <laughs> but please do not look like John Wick in the fucking Matrix. So, because I will Spruce clown your up. ass. <laughs> so, the mattress. So, the mattress. I don't even know when the fuck that came from. <laughs> you have, you have all these, all these titles for porns that you, you're like, that, that name. Like that. that, that okay. That <laughs> like the Sexorcist. <laughs> fuck me. Fuck me. I'm going to. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> bitch. Just wait. Yeah. Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the devil. I'm the devil. <laughs> well, let me get my nut first, and then you can fucking repossess her ass somewhere else. But <laughs> anyways, I'm just being humorous. But, oh, uh, my what, God. What's another movie that you could turn the title into a porn? C uh, 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 hmm. Coming to America. Hmm. Mm -hmm. coming on America. Well, just coming <laughs> to America is its own, right? Just yeah. change the spelling. Okay, what's another one that, that, that you can remix? <laughs> she's like, <laughs> she's like no. there, there, there was a TV show called Kung Fu. You could call it Kung Fu. There you go. Yeah. This guy's like full of them. He's like, I do this when I can't sleep. <laughs> I'm up all night thinking it's a black lady sports. jacking off a dude Kung Fu. <laughs> What's it, what's it I'm not creative like that. <laughs> I can't come up with alternative things. I can freestyle them. So, <laughs> Freestyling. So, yeah, exactly. Okay. Mm. okay what, what the fuck was that? Oh, my cheeks hurt from laughing so much. <laughs> okay. The cuck. Yeah, just explain that. Describe. Okay. I learned the cuck. C-U-C-K. I have to give the whole story because... Uh, when somebody shared, he goes, oh, yeah, so-and-so was a cuck. So in the 80s, early 90s, we used to call crackheads clucks. Clucks. He's a cluckhead. That's an old term. Or we'd say he's a joneser. A joneser? Yeah, like, th that was another one. Like, he will sell his fucking VCR for a fucking 20. Oh, okay. You know, okay. he will sell his fucking nalagas or whatever. But, yeah, he was a joneser. Oh, oh, oh uh, okay, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah uh, uh, okay. And then a fucking a cluckhead. Um but when somebody told me, you know, oh, yeah, so-and-so is a cuck, what the fuck does that mean? Oh, he likes watching his lady get boned by mm -hmm. another man. Mm -hmm. The fuck? That's real? Yeah. And I was like, are you serious? This was during the pandemic that I was taught this. Mm. And I was home, so I had time. <laughs> Everybody you <know>? had time. <laughs> so, and I go, bro, are you fucking serious? Yeah. You know, there's cucks out there. He goes, and I'm a master. Okay, back up. Like Kung Fu master or something? <laughs> and he was like, no. Nah. He was like, nah, I'm a master. And the cuck, his wife is my slave. Okay, what the fuck? What, what do you mean? She does what I say and he watches. So you get to go over there and enjoy his wife while he watches? Yeah, he gets off on it. What the fuck? So we started asking people in the live chat, are there any cucks out there? And there is. Alex, so far, what are the uh, results? 
46 votes. Um, so far. Yeah, uh, 22% said hell yeah. What? And 79% said chale ese. Yeah, so there's people See, out there. The thing is, I want to know, okay, if that's 22% so far and we're still not done, right? You're still, right. You're still taking it. Okay, but do are these people on the down low or are they open about it? Because it's kind of like, it's almost, be is it a secret? Low. Because I don't hear, I mean, yes, I've heard of people wanting to do that and do that but like it's not like it's a lot it's not like i know a lot of people so i mean i would feel like <clears throat> people are keeping it on the down low you know what i mean they're not admitting keep to it, it on the low keep, yeah, keep it on the low i mean they could do that anonymously right or do they have to show who they are yeah no it's no no it's an anonymous. anonymous okay yeah of course they're like oh yeah nobody's gonna know this so i'm gonna tell the truth like yeah right? that's true that or so they're think, trolling or they're trolling yeah <laughs> but there are people that do get off on that Okay, mm, mm. I don't fucking get it. Yeah, I'm not gonna <clears throat> go to work, provide for my girl, mm. love my girl, protect my girl, and then invite a, a guy over. Fuck her. Hell no, <laughs> no, no. But but there are people out there. So. I guess okay. Here's the thing. <clears throat> I would like to. You know what you should do? You should interview a Cucks? cuck. Oh shit. Because I would Listen. like to know the psychology behind what they're thinking. Because I mean. In my mind, uh, I don't, I, I don't know, I don't want to be with a man who wants to see me with someone else. Like, don't you have any pride? Like, don't you want to, like, I mean? But then again, you're I, Latina, so you feel that way. I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah. So okay. So, so now here's my thing. If there's any cucks out there and you want to be interviewed, there you go. And you want to come on Dining with the Wizard, you got to answer all cut questions. All of them. We all want to know. All of us. <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know. I mean, we're goes, all curious, right? What goes through the mind of a cuck? <laughs> so. Yes, please. If there's any cucks out there, <laughs> reach out. Reach out. Because you know that's going to be the biggest, the, lar the, the <clears throat> highest viewed episode ever. Yeah. Everybody's going to watch that because everybody wants to know. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then if maybe you're a beginner cuck and you want to know how to be an advanced cuck, you're going to want to know. Like, you're going to want to know. Yeah. How do you go up to the next level? <laughs> do you take the red or the blue pill? <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. Blue chew. Yeah. It's blue The chew. blue chew. First you chew it, then you do it. You know? So, yeah. So, the guy who taught me all of this cuck, you know, master slave well, see, shit. The master shit. Like. Yeah. Talk about that. Okay. The master uh, servant. So, 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 so I asked him, what is a master? And he said, there are certain girls <clears throat> that want to be told what to do and their husband is not giving it to them because they're not man enough. This is where I learned in 2020, mm. yeah, 2020, I learned for the first time what an alpha and a beta male was. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know what the fuck that was. Mm -hmm. I'll be real. Because, you know, either you're a fucking man or you're a mandelon. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, that's pretty much the equivalent. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's it. what it is. A Mandelone is somebody <clears throat> that likes to be fucking told what to do, mm -hmm. usually by his fucking wife. His wife wears the fucking pants in the house. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, um, so this person told me, you you are an alpha, so you are most, more likely going to be a master. And I was like, yeah. okay, so what does a master do? He tells the woman what to do, and the guy, you know, he accepts it because he is a beta. He's not man enough to tell this woman what to do. So his woman pretty much tells him, mm -hmm. you got to find me someone yeah. to sexually f pretty much fucking satisfy me. Right, right. So, and then I was like, are you fucking serious? He goes, yeah, I have her fucking credit card. I have her car outside and I have this. And I was like, dang. Tough. And she's fucking, and her man's cool with it? Yeah. I know. Okay, so is the girl attract? is the woman attractive? I don't know. I didn't see that bitch. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, is it going to be someone that other men want to be with I, or like sometimes i think they have to be fucking ugly that that's just me sometimes i think that some of the, these women because they marry another they marry another ugly motherfucker i'm tired of looking at your ass so can find me somebody else if you want to stay with me <laughs> that's just what i think now what i know okay because we don't know because we need a cut to come on so you can interview <laughs> i mean bring them on yeah, yeah so yeah so anyways but you know what? I, I interviewed a, a cuck before. Well, he came out afterwards and he told me that he likes it, to. Or in private. Like it, it was off yeah, camera. It was off, off camera. Yeah, and he yeah. told me, he goes, yeah, you know, I, I, I shared my girl. And I was like, oh, shit. are you serious? And he was like, yeah. And he goes, come here, babe, come here. 
He goes, let him know. And I was like, yeah. She goes, yeah. She had me twice with two different guys. And I was like, Dang. I'll be honest with you, the whole time I'm waiting for her. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. You know? <laughs> no. That was a good one. No, the <laughs> no. motherfucker was real. Damn. Motherfucker was real. So, mm. cooks are real. Cooks are alive and well on planet Earth. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I have to say, I, I know, I know one. <laughs> or two. Maybe you could bring them on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not on speaking terms necessarily oh, okay. with them, but <laughs> now, on the other hand, mm -hmm. there are, and the same person told me this, mm -hmm. cuck queens. It's mm. the opposite. Mm. It's the mm. opposite. Um, nah, no, no, <laughs> absolutely not. Well, says, Never, ever. Yeah, I want to see on. you with, you know, with um, <clears throat> my homegirl. All nope. right, cool. Nope, nope. So, nope. Don't even ask. Yeah, nope. but it's out there. <laughs> you don't. Nope, nope. So, anyways, <laughs> let's change the channel. <laughs> Enough cooking. <laughs> 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 oh shit! Okay. <laughs> no more cuck talk. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Let's change the subject. <laughs> Cucks are allowed on Rhodium Radio, so make sure you guys yeah. tune in. So get interviewed. Cucks. Yeah. yeah, that's a fuck it. That's a. I'm not trying to down the cucks. You know, I'm not trying to put you guys down, but I just think that shit's fucking hilarious. <laughs> but it's out there. It's real. You know. But um, okay. Have you ever heard of Ron Jeremy? Okay, I, I, I'm just asking, I'm just asking. Uh, one of my boys, he's a DJ and he flew in, I won't say from where, but uh, he performed at the House of Blues uh, uh, in Hollywood. This is when it was still open, okay? I want to say it was maybe 2004 when it was the shit still open, okay? So here's what happened. Uh, after his concert, we go eat. And then <laughs> he forgot his name, okay? And he goes, what? He, he, my boy forgot oh, oh, who okay. he saw. Okay, got it, got it. Got it. Okay, okay. So yeah. Ron Jeremy's back there. I'm sitting right here, and he goes, hey, that's him. And I'm like, who? That guy over there. That's him. The and guy I'm, and without I'm like, a name. Who? So I'm like, what the fuck? And he goes, the guy, so he's right there. And I was like, bro, what the fuck are you talking to? He goes, the guy with the big one. I don't know guys with big ones. Can you be more fucking specific? Yeah. He goes, he's right there and he points. So I fucking follow his hand and it's fucking Ron Jeremy. And I was like, what the mm. fuck? This guy was wearing some beat up ass sweats, like with holes in them. Mm -hmm. he, the first guy that I ever saw wear Crocs. Ew. Okay. A tight like ass shirt that had holes in it. Okay. He looked broke as fuck. Yeah. So I walk up to him and I was like, hey, what's up, man? You Ron Jeremy? And he was like, yeah. And I said, let's get a picture. And he was like, okay. He's what he said. He goes, okay, um, can you pay for my meal? That's what he what? said. Yeah, and I said, all right, no worries. I told the, told the waitress, hey, uh, put his shit, you know, and I was, hey, you, you want to take something to go? Uh, let him know. Yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you. He he looked broke as fuck. Oh, okay? shit. <clears throat> a lot of people think that he might be fucking paid. He's not. No. So when we walk outside, we take a picture. And this guy literally had sweats. All like above his belly button, so he had like a like a um. A, oh my god, an imprint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you call that when girls have that? Uh, um, oh, um. camel toe. <laughs> but he had a cow tongue. I call it cow, cow tongue. tongue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know when you go to Academy City, you see the tongue right there. So, so I take a picture with them, and two white girls are passing by, and instead of looking at him, they go like this. You don't look that big, and he heard it. Oh shit. And he says, he looks at me and goes, that's what they all said. <laughs> and I said, oh, okay. I said, so man, what are you working on? He goes, shit. He goes, I'm more on, on a, he goes, I'm more on a, um, what, um, what the fuck, what do you call those, stri a strip club tour. I'm on, mm. more on a strip club tour. Okay. And I was like, all right, cool. Yeah. You know, he goes, I host strip clubs. And I said, all right. So he went and he went into an old ass Fiat, like from the 80s. Like a Fiat, a car, yeah, yeah. stick shift, and he's driving out. <laughs> when he fucking drives out, that shit backfires. Ba bow. Yeah, yeah, okay. A month later, I get booked and I go DJ 
in Colorado. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm in Colorado now and I feel I'm, I'm DJing. I don't like nobody fucking bothering me. And I feel this. What the fuck? I turn around. <laughs> fucking Ron Jeremy. <laughs> in Colorado. He's like, hey, do you remember me? No, no, he didn't. He didn't remember me. Oh, no. He's wearing a tank top and his tits are hanging out of his tank top. Okay. <laughs> Sweats again and Crocs. And I said, Ron Jeremy, what the fuck you want? And he goes like this. Can I get the mic? And I go, look, bro, the fucking promoter's over there. Yeah. Go talk to him. I'm not going to give you the fucking mic. Yeah. So he comes back. The promoter says this. So my boy Jesse comes back. He goes, give him the mic. Give him two minutes and then cut his ass off. All right. Hey, everybody. I'm on this strip club tour. And I'll be at this club. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool, whatever. Gives me back the mic. And he goes, hey, just want to tell you thank you. I'm going to give you a coupon. And it's two. 20% off any table dance if you want. 20% off. Can you imagine me calling a fucking stripper? <laughs> Come over here. I have a coupon. <laughs> yeah. I have 20%, 20% off. off. <laughs> what the fuck? But he invited me. I didn't fucking go. Oh my you know, God. that's one thing. I never had a thing for strip clubs. I never had a thing for fucking porn movies. I never had a fucking thing for like porn books. You know, to me, my, personally, I'd rather do it than fucking view it. You know? <laughs> I, I don't be a participant I, yeah, instead I, of a, a, an audience member. Yeah, I don't I don't get off on that shit. But he was like, "Yeah, if you want to come through, you know, I'll be there. We can have a drink together." And I'm like, "I'm good, Ron Jeremy." So, Ron, <laughs> Ron Stallworth. So anyway, it's funny because you think like, man, like someone like that who had a like he's as famous as as yeah. he is for what he's famous for. It's like. Dude, really? <laughs> right. Hey, did you ever see Boogie Nights with Dirk Diggler? Yes. Yes. Fuck. Let me tell you something. Story, Look, all bullshit aside, that was a great movie. It was. It was a good Burt movie. Burt Reynolds, I'm going to give him his flowers, even though, mm-hmm. rest in peace. Mm-hmm. Burt Reynolds is a fucking great ass fucking actor. A lot yes. of people don't give him his fucking flowers. Oh, yeah. No, he's great. He's great. Burt Reynolds was fucking dope. Mm-hmm. The first movie I ever saw was uh, The Longest Yard. Adam Sandler remade it later on, mm. but the original one was Burt Reynolds. That one was fucking better than Adam Sandler. Sorry, Adam Sandler. I don't think you're watching, but just in case, your movie sucked compared to that one. So You know, I didn't know that it was a remake. No, it was a fucking remake. No. Yeah, and, huh. and um, that movie was a fucking dope movie. Mm. Uh, like, he just did so many fucking dope movies, but... Um, <clears throat> what else was he in? He was, he's, I mean, he was in a lot of stuff, but yeah. like... A, he a lot he of was movies. acting all the way till the end. Like, yes. he did stuff till the end, and... He was yes. good. He was solid. I'll yeah. tell you another one. But everybody always always just want to say they're 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 gangster movies, but <laughs> but their acting is amazing. Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Joe yeah. Pesci. Yeah. I love Joe Pesci. You know, uh, I like Joe Pesci when like he can come up to you and be like, "Hey, how you doing? Yeah, hey, how you doing, Joe? Yeah. You got that thing? What thing? <laughs> you got that thing? You, you you got the thing? Yeah, the that thing. thing I came for. I'm confused. Okay." See that window right there? How would you feel if I shoved your fucking head through that motherfucking window? Oh, that thing. Oh, you remember the fucking thing? Mm-hmm. Yes. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mean, there you go. Is that fucking dope? I saw a meme, and I don't know if this is true or not, but I saw a meme um, that my cousin Vinny and mm. Goodfellas, and there was a third thing that he was in, all came out within the same year, I think. Hmm. And like, it's crazy because he did, those are like all classics, right? Mm-hmm. But I think it all came out in the same year. I, I, it could be wrong because the internet could always, you know, I mean, if it's on the internet, it's true. Right. But I mean, I saw, I'm like, I didn't know that it all came out in the same year. Right. Oh, I don't know that either. Yeah. Maybe we should Google that shit. Google it. Let's but. Google it. <laughs> I'm over here straining shit it. out. He's on it. But so there you go, your OCDs. Yeah, look at, oh, cute. look at this. Get cute. It's, it's all like a line. See, look, and see how the line is? It's and all it's a line. Same, same okay, amount of space me, right here. I got to participate. Let me make sure I participate. Los chips. Those are the Lord's okay. chips from Nacho Libre. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord's chips. <laughs> hey, fucking Esqueleto. Esqueleto was fucking hilarious. Esqueleto. I believe in science. <clears throat> He was fucking hilarious. <laughs> <clears throat> I went to win. Why are you not baptized? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, that because fucking... I believe in science. And he picked the right name. <laughs> <He> Encarnacion. <laughs> Encarnacion. But he was like, 
Praise the Lord. <laughs> He's like baptizing him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just came over to see if you want some toast. <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Favorite, if any, Al Pacino movies? Mm. What, what was the first one that came to your mind? Uh, the first <clears throat> one, um, Scarface. Okay. First one. My mind of all time is Carlito's Way. Mm. I love fucking Carlito's Way. Yeah. Okay. Tell um, me why, why you like that one better than Scarface. Because he was the OG that did his time. He was trying to go legit, and this fucking new generation was trying to fuck with him. And he had to check those motherfuckers. Mm. The problem was that he didn't, he didn't take care of it when Benny Blanco from the Bronx tried to go over there and try to, try to check him. Mm -hmm. Look, here's my thing. Benny Blanco tried to tell him, you know what, I'm the, guy, I'm the new guy running shit. I look up to you, you know what, but uh, uh, you know, you're, the, you're the J.P. Morgan of the fucking smack business. He, uh, Al Pacino goes, oh, I never heard that. And he goes, yeah, man, but I, I, I got the small movement that I'm trying to do. I'm trying to move up, trying to do big numbers. At that moment, I would have easily said, look, bro, I don't want nothing to do with it. Yeah. Chill. Yeah. I did my time. I'm cool. Yeah. We'll have a drink. Yes, yeah. Keep it cool. Yeah. But fucking Benny Blanco and then fucking <laughs> finally Al Pacino let us have it. Who the fuck are you? Mm. I was connected. I was made with fucking made men. Who are you? Who are you connected? Who do you fucking know? Right. Go snatch a fucking purse, you fucking punk. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where it all fucking started. But uh, so I get it because in so many ways I can relate to him. Not that I think I'm him. But in so many ways, I can relate with this yeah. new generation. What, what you would have done in that situation, but also from what you know and how you were raised and also like how people behave now. Right. right. Yeah, no, absolutely. absolutely. This generation, uh, uh, many of them have the sense of entitlement. They just feel that they're yeah. entitled mm. to fucking everything. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You got guys yeah, like Carlito that work for it. <clears throat> Did the fucking time, got out. I'm trying to go straight. But you're fucking trying to bring me fucking back in, bro. Mm -hmm. I don't want the shit to do with you. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. but that's a fucking great fucking movie. It's a good film. Um, I'll tell you one, it's the um, Robert De Niro. He did a lot of fucking great movies, but I, I think I like him a lot in Casino. Yeah, what he, loved, he was. Uh, toxic bitches. I know, he was, he was on that. Sharon Stone was getting bucked ooh, ooh, by Joe Pesci. Ooh. His homie. <laughs> that was terrible. You know. That was and that's a true story. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. That's a true story. We're like, man, I've just felt bad for him. You know, like, know. dude, like, let that girl go. Like, but but, toxic. You, you, but yeah. you know what that teaches you right there? That there are some girls, no matter how good. Now I'm not saying all of them. Yeah. But yeah. there are some girls, no matter how good you treat them, they can never be faithful to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, they just they just love the fucking street life. They love the gangster life. They love the money, and they mm -hmm. fucking love the cock. And it doesn't matter who's who it's from. They're no different from a fucking rooster. <laughs> a rooster will say cock a doodle do. They'll say any cock will do. Well, also, I think guys gotta know. Like, you gotta know the type of woman that you're getting involved in with, right? Like you, just just like girls too. You can't. But you know, guy, you you date a girl. Trying to hold into a housewife. Yeah, exactly. I mean, what do you think you're gonna like change her? If she is the way she is, you're not going to change her. I mean, if she's not loyal and good, like, right. what you get into is what you get into, and you got to deal with that. You can't change anybody. Right. So, like, same with girls, like, as a, as a woman, getting into a relationship or, like, meeting a guy and seeing a guy. Like, you can't change him. Like, it, the, what you enter into is what it is. So, enter into what you want or not, right. but don't try to change the situation once you get there, you know? Very, very true. Um, so, but Joe Pesci, when you think about my cousin Vinny, that was fucking hell. <laughs> Did you find out? Was it the same year? Yeah, it was uh, my cousin Vinny, Home Alone 2, and Lethal Weapon 3. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, the, those three? Those three same year. What, what, what was the name of Lethal Weapon? Something Wait. Gets. Remember? Gets. He goes, you get it, get it, get it, gets, gets. Oh, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. He goes, whatever you want, I gets. You know? <laughs> yeah, so he was Leo fucking. Leo gets. Was that? Leo Gets. Leo Gets. Leo yeah, Gets, whatever you want, I gets. Yeah. Crazy. But I'm gonna tell you what's a movie that's been fucking played out on cable TV, uh, or I should say direct TV. But it's a fucking great fucking classic, Shawshank Redemption. Ooh, that one's good. That one is fucking dope. Good. I love the part so deep. where they ask uh, 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 Morgan Freeman. So how did you do after he went to go see Parole Board? Mm -hmm. He goes, same old shit. <laughs> he, he, he ain't getting released he ain't getting released same old shit mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and I was like fuck but that was a fucking dope ass fucking movie it was really good 
Yeah. I didn't, ex- when I, I watched, I don't remember when I watched, but like when I watched it, I did not expect it to be as good as it was. It was so good. Yeah, it was really for a fucking good. Just like <clears throat> uh, a movie we mentioned earlier, uh, um, it's the uh, um, um, Usual Suspects. Mm, yeah. Another fucking yeah. great movie with Benicio. Great he, was a, yeah. he was fucking dope. Yes. Even though I hate to fucking mention Kevin Spacey because he was involved with that fucking Jeffrey Ooh. Epstein bullshit. Mm, mm. You know what mm. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, but you know what? There's a lot of motherfuckers yeah. out right now. Mm-hmm. Artist, okay, and mm-hmm. I, I mentioned the names in the past that I'm gonna leave it alone. Mm-hmm. That are still on TV and still fucking selling records that were traveling and hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein, mm-hmm. and they're still out there. So mm-hmm. you know what? Mm-hmm. You know I'm not gonna say. And their names were yeah. made public, okay? You supported that shit. You were mm-hmm. fucking there. Mm-hmm. You know, Our taking. Now, uh, did you watch the? Je- this is controversial, so I want to be very careful with what I say with my words. Mm-hmm. Did you watch that Jeffrey Epstein uh, um, documentary on Netflix? I started to watch it, but I didn't finish it. So okay. not completely. There was this one girl, and, and, and I'll leave it at this. Mm-hmm. She said, they asked her this, how long were you there? Oh my God, he made me do things that I wish I would have never have done. I was 16 years old. How long were you there? Six years. So then they asked her, mm-hmm. were you ever held against your will? Mm-hmm. No. Did he ever beat you? No. Did he ever rape you? No, I never had sex with him. Why were you there? Mm-hmm. Well, I needed the money, and then I brought my sister to do the things that I didn't want to do. Mm-hmm. My thing is this. Mm-hmm. If you were recruiting people for him, yeah. because she ended up admitting that she brought over 10 girls. Wow. Yeah. So the things that she wouldn't do, he would ask her, do you, name, do you know anybody that would? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. These girls were bringing other girls to him. Wow. I truly believe not only is he a sick fucking monster, yeah. but these girls need to be held accountable as well because you knew what he was doing. Right, right, right. And you were getting paid. Yeah. Mm. You know, don't come out now and say, well, you know, he was a monster. Were you held against your will? No. Did he ever beat you? No. Did he ever rape you? No. Did he pay you? Yes. How long were you there? Six years. So you're basically a willing employee of his and doing yeah. his work. And that has nothing, I'm not saying that he has not, that he's innocent because he's far from innocent. Mm-hmm. And I want to be clear about that. But there has, somewhere in the law, there has to be somewhere where like, well, you were participating. Yeah. You knew. Right. And now you want to come out? Right. That's just my thing. Am it's I wrong? Hard. No, no, you're not. Okay. You're not. Um, it's hard because... I mean, when you started that story, because I haven't, I haven't watched the whole thing, so watch I don't, it. I don't know about that story. But when you started that story, I was thinking that you were gonna, that you were gonna say something like, "Okay, she was, she started it, but then she stayed because she didn't, she wasn't held against her will, but she stayed." Yeah. But that wasn't where you went. And so in my, my mind, I was thinking um, Stockholm sy- syndrome, where you stay with your captors, mm. like. Um, it's a syndrome where like if you get kidnapped or like someone that's abusing you, mm-hmm. you end up uh, looking at that person as your caretaker and like mm-hmm. um, that's all you know. So then so then you have opportunities to escape, but you right. don't, right? But that's not the situation. This is, if she's getting paid and she's bringing women to do the things that she didn't want to do, if she's sister. bringing harm to her sister and everybody, then that's not. That's and not they right. went home every day. And that, yeah, no. And you don't have to go back. No. See, see that, that that's what I was. No. So when I was looking at it, I already knew that I was a fucking monster. I'm not saying he's not. Yeah. And I'm not saying his wife because his wife was cr- recruiting girls too. Yeah. Oh but yeah, when, that chick with the But when you're willingly mm-hmm. keep coming back for six years, and then you admit he oh put me God, through college. Oh yeah, I know. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You work I, for that. I, I traveled around the world with him. <clears throat> yeah. You you benefited from what he was doing, so no. Yeah, yeah, all I'm uh, saying you're, is you're this. You're a participant and you're yes. guilty too. All I'm saying is that you should face some ju- some justice too, mm-hmm. even though he got his fucking justice. He got fucking taken out. Mm-hmm. Whatever, cool. The guy's fucking guilty. We know, the, we know that. I want to make that clear. But when I saw that documentary, I thought some of those girls were contributors yeah. to his fucking, mm-hmm. you know. To the money. Yeah. You know, they were like so, easy money. Now, it's different you know? if they said, I could not go home. He beat me. He whipped me. I was held captive, not on some R. Kelly shit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, you know the whole R. Kelly shit? I don't know all about it, but I know it's pretty bad. <laughs> I don't think R. Kelly's ever going to get fucking get out. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because all of these girls, 
and many of them that don't even know each other have the same story have the fucking right? same story i'm like yeah. when you live in different states and all of these girls come out yeah. i understand if there's one maybe two yeah but bro when you got over fucking 20 girls dude that's oh like that's you know oh, and then you blow oh. up on national tv you know <clears throat> so yeah yeah, I'm sorry, R. Kelly. And, and you know what? YouTube took his music off. All, all the platforms really? took his music off. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. like, uh, and look, I'm not going to lie to you. I was a fan of his music, yeah. but I cannot listen to that shit. Now, yeah, yeah you know. So now, uh, I say that to say this because there's a famous rapper out of Texas, and I'll leave it at that. Many people still support, and he was convicted of molesting little girls. Mm. And they fucking still support his ass. <sighs> I don't fucking get that. Mm. But, oh, well. I'm trying to figure out who that is. No, I'll, I'll tell you <laughs> off Google camera. <laughs> I'll tell you off camera. Yeah. But anyways, let's change the channel. We got a few more minutes. Yeah. Other than that, anything you want to bring up? Anything you want to say? Anything, anybody you want to diss? Or this doesn't matter. <laughs> no, I don't, I, I don't want to diss anybody, but you know... Um, I don't know. I mean, Alex, uh, just... did we ask anything? Oh, the, no, the but final it, it stayed <laughs> it stayed twenty five percent and seventy five percent. Okay, the, okay, tell us again. Okay, the uh, results. Are you, are you a cook? And a hundred eleven. Is your mic on? Yeah. Okay. A hundred and twelve volts and twenty six percent. Now I went up one, but twenty six percent said, "Hell yeah!" and seventy four percent said, "Chale ese." Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm still like, I'm still curious about that twenty whatever percent. Uh -huh. But I'm also kind of happy that seventy five percent of the population that's watching is like, <laughs> hell no. Because <laughs> I'm okay. Okay, let me ask you this: like, what's your what's your preference? Like, you're obviously not a cook, right? What's your preference? Do you like? What's your relationship preference? So for me, I know like in in like when I'm in a relationship. One it's woman loyalty. is enough. One person, that's it. No one else, like, that's all it is. One woman is enough. I'm going to say it again. That's okay. it. Look it, look it. If you love her, you adore her, like, and she's everything to you, one woman is enough. When you start venturing out, that's when, especially if you're a fucking beta or slash mandilon, <laughs> that's when mandilon. shit, that's where shit goes fucking wrong. Yeah. Yeah. But look, let me tell you, if I get into a relationship with someone and that person has got to be my everything, my mm -hmm. all, mm -hmm. you know, kind yeah. of like with uh, my everything, my all, my, <laughs> what was the name of that movie? A uh, fucking, it's the uh, Chris Rock, no, no, Chris Tucker. <laughs> but uh, He uh, starts, he starts the yeah. speech. Wasn't that very wedding. white? He's singing yeah. very white lyrics. So yeah, she's got to be everything to me, like. Honestly, when you're with someone, you don't have eyes for no one else. Mm -hmm. Period. Okay? Mm -hmm. But, you know, some of these cucks, you know, they go into these relationships blind. They're mandelones. They don't mm -hmm. give a fuck. And fuck it, baby. If I can't connect with you on a spiritual level, go ahead. Yeah. Get yourself well, a master. It's not only that. What if it's the dude? What if it's the dude? He's like, yeah, I want, I want something new and different. And, like, I want to see you with someone else. So it's not always the girl. Maybe the guy's the alpha and he still wants that. And he's like, okay. I want to... I want you to do this. And she's like, what? That okay. could be the situation too. Uh, well, well, I'm not that dude, but <clears throat> I, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, so now let's just say that you got into a relationship, you guys are in love, and the guy presents, hypothetical scenario, he presents that question to you. I want you to be with another female and I want to join in. I want to do it one t I want to do it at least one time. No. Okay. What if he says, it's a fucking deal breaker then? No. Would you tell him to la pinche verga, culero? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just I know what I want I know what I right. don't want I know what I'm okay with I know what I'm not okay with Right And it's me And just me Or or just don't be with me Be with someone else Okay Who's okay with that Okay now I have to ask you uh, Actor's question <laughs> You could say next question Or you could okay. answer it I could say pass Okay Um Say I'm a director and I'm like, hey, Sonia, how you doing? Sonya. I'm doing good. Hey, listen, I got this leading role for you, but I need you to play a lesbian. You're going to be with multiple women in this movie. Mm -hmm. It's $100,000, and 
And uh, I think it's going to be a fucking blockbuster. <laughs> you know what? Uh, so what is your answer? What do you mean be with multiple women? Oh, of course. Uh, you're going to have to be butt naked, tongue kiss, everything sexy. Okay. Uh, not butt naked. No. Like, I don't mind being a... Okay, so I've played a role. I, I, I've been in a role with, a, you know, a lesbian mm -hmm. relationship. Uh -huh. I've played that role before. Uh -huh. I've kissed a woman. Okay. Um, so, but that was in a role. It okay. wasn't, it wasn't a sex scene or anything. Okay. So uh, yes, but like, no, not, but naked. Cause I wouldn't do it with a man in a, in a film. So I wouldn't okay. do it with a woman either. Um, well, you know what, but, Sonia, you'll never make it in Holly weird. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to throw that out there and I'm going to make sure I black ball your fucking name. <laughs> Sonia Bacosar, you better fucking change your name. Okay, because Let me tell you. Okay, so there's some shady shit. Okay, Hollywood. Yes, not Hollywood. It doesn't matter. Filmmaker it doesn't matter. There's a lot of shady, shady, shady people out there. Yes, I've seen so. I've <clears throat> been around so many mm -hmm. creepy people that are like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm a director. Oh yeah, I'm a producer. Oh yeah, I can get you, you know, this role. Da, da, da. I'm like, no, I'm not about that. You know, I've had. I've had a director, producer who kept, uh, this was years ago, it was like 2011, I think. Uh -huh. I was cast in this film, and it was like this, uh, four, it was four females that were all like uh, femme fatale, kind of like we all had like powers and fighting skills and stuff. And then the producer slash director kept asking me out. I'm like, oh, I know what he was no. here. He was. No, no. Yeah, he was trying to clap no. your cheeks. Let's be honest. No. Exactly. Yeah. No, no, no. He kept asking me out. As Alex, bring me another beer. No, no, no. And then um, eventually, like, I came to set one day, and he's like, yeah, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're just not going to need you anymore. We're going to, like, um, you know, like. I would not. expose them like, on Instagram. Okay. All right. See ya. Like, I'm not, I'm not here for the role. I'm not, I'm not going to go out with you. Yeah. And I don't need this role. Like, I, because I don't act for fame or money. So you can't get me with that. You can't like tempt me with that. Mm -hmm. And you can't threaten me with that either. I'm going to walk. Right, right, right. So don't, don't try me. Right? right. And so I've seen that time and time again. Yeah. And not everybody's like that. I know. Like I have a lot of good people surrounding me and I'm around a lot of good filmmakers, but there's also the shady ones. Right. And the right. shady ones are shady and they'll do some shady shit and they're out there. Yeah. And it's scary. The Quentin Tarantino's put your toes in my <laughs> mouth. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, okay. So I, I have a job. I'm educated. I can take care of myself. Of course. So of course. I don't need somebody's role or somebody's offer of a role to tempt me or threaten me. Like, no, see ya. See, see I'm but good. you being a strong, independent woman, believe it or not, that's a threat to a fucking weak ass man. Straight up. Look, look, the only person that's ever, in my opinion, who's ever going to like, fuck yeah, I like that, mm -hmm. is a fucking strong man. I want to I wanna support you. You know, I want to take care of you. I know you can take care of yourself, mm -hmm. but let me be the fucking man that I want to be. Let, let me take care of you. The one I, I want to support your goals. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do that. Blah, blah, blah. You don't need those fucking roles. Fuck mm -hmm. those motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. You set the standard high because, yeah. you know what, there's people looking up to you that, that uh, are looking up to you for leadership. And yep. if you take every fucking role, guess what? You're going to build mm -hmm. another generation that's going to do the same shit. People that are willing to do anything. No, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, I have yeah. boundaries. Yes, yes. I'm yes, glad yes, you yes. say that. But I think that, you know, like you said earlier, when we started the interview, you talked about like fathers treating their daughters right. Yes. right? And then fathers being a good example. Like my father is a strong man. So let me tell you, like my father is fucking strong, man. Very strong man. And so he's always been like, he's the alpha in the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the alpha no matter what. Yeah. And so when I look at my dad, I'm like, yeah, that's the example of what a man looks like, right? Mm -hmm. See, like talks like, be, like uh, he, he, he's the alpha. And so I'm only strong because of him. But yes, yes. of course, I'm looking for someone who can be who, who alpha, can, like my dad who can, who can lead <laughs> who can lead yeah you don't yeah. you don't got to be i mean okay so there's a lot of things about my dad that like i wouldn't be okay with for example mom i love you dad i love you 
<laughs> but like my mom has to ask my dad permission to leave the house. Okay. She, I, I, I understand that because that could be old tradition. Old school. Yeah. Seriously I, I, old I school. I understand that. Yeah. Though I condone that, no. Mm -hmm. But I respect it if that's the way they, they were raised. I mean, and they've been married for a long time. Yeah. They made it work. That's how they work. That's their agreement with each other. She's ha My mom's happy. My dad's happy. Yeah, so how can you that's blame that? You know what I, I'm saying? I can't mess with that. I can't be like, Mom, you shouldn't have to do that. No, that's... Right. She, she loves my dad. He loves her. They respect each other. But she can't leave anywhere without asking him his permission. Right. He says, yes, you can go. But she asks him. Yeah. You know? So. Well, you know, maybe it's just a respect thing, you know? Maybe she just loves him that much that she tells him, you know, can I go? Mm -hmm. And maybe he just feels in his heart like... Baby, I love you. You don't have to ask me, but yeah, go. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, and and that's dope. If that if that works for them, mm -hmm. then that's dope. You know, but I know motherfuckers are, bitch. When you fucking get to the market, you fucking better text me. <laughs> when you leave, yeah, my dad ain't the, jealous like that. that exactly. He when trusts you, her. It's just he needs to be right, respected. Right. You know, when you leave the fucking market, you need to text me. <laughs> Bitch, I know it's how long it takes for a fucking plane from New York to get to Cali. <laughs> well, yeah. I know how long it fucking takes for a horse to run a fucking mile. Mm -hmm. So I know how long it takes for you to leave the fucking market. Mm -hmm. You know, there are dudes like that. Yeah. Stay away from those fucking yeah, dudes. Yeah, stay away from those yeah. guys. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, <clears throat> other than that, I um, think I'm going to become an actor. <laughs> So. I mean, come on! You could do accents. How many did he do? He did the, um, you did the Italian. Well, you did the Italian one, the European one, the uh, uh, Keanu Reeves one. Keanu Reeves. <laughs> I did can. all these accents. <laughs> come an actor. And I could do it in Spanish. Chinga tu madre, pinche culero, mamón, te voy a matar, puto. And then I could just snap out of it. So uh, <laughs> back to yeah, exactly. Tony, back to regular Tony. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? To me, that's just like to me. Okay, you know who I met, and okay, Kirk Cameron. Remember Kirk Cameron? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Kirk Cameron. He like changed I, his life. He's like yes, he yes. changed his life. Yeah, he's like big time like Christian now. Yes. Cool. I respect that. It worked mm -hmm. for him. I respect <clears throat> that. Mm -hmm. When I met him, he was so fucking jolly he was so fucking happy mm. like he was what i saw on the screen is really him here's huh. what i got that somebody saw him and said this exactly the way you are in real life yeah i just want to put that on the screen okay because he's like charismatic yes very he's charismatic like, he's got so much energy and like charisma it's like yes. you're like ooh, i want to watch this guy because yes. he's got some something about him right? you know what there is such thing as the it factor. Yes. You have, when you have it, you have it. And you don't, you don't. <laughs> uh, look, I'm going to give a big shout out to my boy Rashidi Harper. A lot of people don't know him, but he does all the filming for Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre. Mm. And he's a friend of mine. I, mm. I, I like to call him a friend of mine. What's his name? Rashidi Harper? Rashidi Harper. Yeah. Mm. You look on his Instagram, he don't even have a thousand followers. Mm. People don't know him, but he's the guy behind the camera. Yeah. He did his own documentary, um, Hip Hop Uncovered. Mm -hmm. it, it was a docu-series, and I interviewed him here. And you know what the sad thing is? He didn't even get 4,000 views. Mm -hmm. And that's the guy that should have got 50,000 views because he's the guy that did all the fucking filming for that. Doc but, but you know what it is? This generation doesn't care about history. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I interviewed him here. Beautiful fucking interview. Okay, so I encourage you guys, go watch Rashidi Harper, especially if, if you're a director, you're an actor. Mm -hmm. This guy films everyone. Mm -hmm. He is Dr. Dre's personal cameraman. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so anyways. <clears throat> no, we, but, but I mean, th th think about that, right? Like, okay, so what you said, right? Yeah. He, he has how many followers, right? Not even a thousand. <clears throat> okay. When I look up the showrunners... And the writers and the creators of some of these really good films that I've watched mm -hmm. or really good um, shows, those people have mm -hmm. a thousand or less followers mm -hmm. because they're not about the image. They're not about being uh, an influencer. They're about the work. They're about the yeah. art. Yes. So that's what they focus their energy on. So that's where all of their energy is going they're not they don't care who thinks what about them 
they only care about them creating their art. So that's this it. guy, he's he cares about documenting. Yes, yes, yes. And that's what he is is focusing on. He's not focusing on the social media stuff, right? Yes. He he told me that he filmed for the first time years ago, uh, when he was barely blowing up when he went solo, mm-hmm. Justin Timberlake. Mm. Okay, so he said he goes oh, for the first time. I got my whole camera crew. We're filming him. Yeah. He went solo. He left his group and he's filming. He goes. This guy went out there, started dancing, the way the crowd erupted. And here's what he said. He's a black man. Mm-hmm. He said, "This guy had the it factor." Yeah. He said it was almost like because I'm not comparing him, and he said it's in an interview. Yeah. He said it was almost like watching Michael Jackson. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, he goes, Timberlake is good. He goes, the it factor is real. Yeah. So there are some people that can walk into this room yeah. and for some reason they just have that aura. You light up a room. Yes. Like, yes. <clears throat> you light up a room. Like you walk yes. in a room and somebody's like, they just walk up to you because you're like, they're like, you they, were the one in the room. Yes. Right? You're right. Yeah. And yeah. and it's the it factor. You have it or you don't. You walk in a room, you light it up. People turn heads. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I can see that he's so, good. He's he's a great dancer. Yeah, I mean, I think, like you said, he's like, he sings, he dances, he's got charisma, he's got personality, like he's got it all. He's got yes. he's got the it factor. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. and, and he was sharing that. So I learned I learned a lot from him. So if you guys have not seen, it, go back and watch Rashidi Harper's interview. What you guys, episode was that? Do you know? Uh, uh, if if yeah. anything, please remind me after this, and I will mm-hmm. show it to you. Mm-hmm. The guy is really really dope. Put it this way. When I filmed my first documentary, I contacted my boy in New York. My boy in New York told me, mm-hmm. I'm going to introduce you to my boy in L.A. And I was like, fuck, I live in L.A. You know? <laughs> and he goes, his name's Rashidi Harper. From LA. He said he's give you 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, cool. So I called him up. True story. And he goes, hey, what's up? My boy told me that, you know, you got this documentary, blah, blah, blah. Can you email it to me? And I was like, okay, cool. He goes, I'll give you 10 minute interview. Not interview, but like a sit, sit down yeah. with you. And I said, all right, cool, because, you know, because, you know, I did uh, uh, um, the Williams sisters, uh, oh, um, okay. Serena, what yeah. he, he did, a, he did yeah. the documentary. Wow. wow. And he goes, he goes, I did the documentary. And he started telling me all these things that he did. And I was like, OK, cool, man. Thank you, man. So I sent him my documentary. That's what we called it. Not docu-mixery. a documentary, documentary. Documentary. So music. <laughs> the very next day he calls me and here's what he said. You sent me the one hour film festival version. Can you send me can you send me the other Real. one? The Real. other one was three hours. Yeah. So he watched it. Because he's a music guy. Yes. So, yeah. The next day he hits me up and he goes, Can we have lunch? What? And I was like, Yeah. It went from ten minutes to I'm gonna have lunch with you. Yeah. Like it, I'm it went give from you ten time. minutes to a two hour lunch. Valuable. Yeah. To a two hour lunch. Yeah. And he said, Please tell me that this is not your first time directing a documentary. And that's when it's my first it time. Was, yeah. Yeah, and he goes, who edited it? And I go, me and my friend. He goes, no, Shit. bro. He goes, you're <laughs> lying to me. He goes, he goes, what was your budget? 100000 a quarter of a million? And you know what I told him? No, nah, it just came out of my pocket. Yeah, yeah. And he, he was like this. <laughs> he was like, like, bro. Impossible. He goes, I'm going to try to sell it to you. He goes, he told me this. I believe I can get about a million for it. That's what he told me. And, and here's what... Here's where I messed up not knowing. Okay. And I said this, but we're already selling it like on the on our website, bro. People can rent it. We were we were selling it for twenty five bucks, mm. and people were buying it. And he goes, yeah. No, you can't do that. Yeah. Because here's what he said: If I take it to you know Netflix, if I take it's it to Hulu, it's already been distributed. Yes, yeah. he, he said they're gonna want exclusives. Yeah. He said you cannot, and I was like, Damn. I already did it. Damn. So he couldn't do nothing with it, but. Yeah. I made a friend with him, and he was just like, "There's no way this could have been your first directing debut." Wow, you know. Wow. So that's why we call okay. it Tony well, Vision because I have a vision. You do have a vision, but what is your future vision? What are your future vi- like? What are your future projects? What do you want to do? Like, what's your dream project that you want? Okay, here's what I want to do. I eventually okay, wait, wait. But if you had unlimited resources, let's just say you yeah. had millions and millions unlimited resources access to all the best everything yes artists. what would you create okay two things okay first i will finish off my chicano rap documentary and i will release that okay but that's just for start that's like a stepping stone to what okay. i want to do two type of genre of movies i want to do horror movies 
<laughs> and action movies. And I know I'm fucking good. <laughs> I know I'm fucking horror good. Horror movies? Like, horror <laughs> fucking what do you movies. Do? Like, give me an example of what you want to do. I love vampires, so I'm bringing back vampires. <laughs> I want to create a vampire movie done in the 80s. Why the 80s? Because that's the best era that's the of era. music. That's yeah. the best. Look, NWA, NWA, yeah. Easy e Dr. Dre, mm -hmm. Yella, all of those guys mm -hmm. performed uh, about a mile away from my house in the mm -hmm. 80s. Mm -hmm. I want to recreate that scene. That'd be dope. Okay? Be dope. But I want to make it fucking 80s, like a Nosferatu type of fucking vampire in the fucking 80s. Dope. And I'm going to tell you why. Why I want to do mm. horror movie, mm. because uh, <laughs> only involving blacks and Latinos. Yeah. Okay. If you look at every fucking horror movie and everybody watching will understand. Yeah. 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 Let's look at Scream. Yeah. Let's look at The Exorcist. Let's look at um, uh, 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 Friday the 13th. Let's look at um, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can go The Conjuring, Insidious. You know what they all have in common? It's all white people. So black people and Mexican people don't get scared. We don't get haunted. We don't get possessed by the, the devil. The, the devil don't fuck with us. I mean, we no. We are fuck. Okay, Chicanos, Latinos, like Chicanos, Latinos. We are the most superstitious, yes. Catholic of all ever. And let me tell you, like my fear as a child was that the devil was going to come and possess me. Like we all yeah. think that. We oh, all Corona, think that. Everything. Like, come on, like. If we're not the example of the believers of the believers of the believers right. of everything that could go wrong, oh, you know, don't go outside with your hair wet because you're going to get a cold. Don't go, don't go outside at night because your own is going to come and get you. Right. Like, if we're not the example, what? what? Yeah, why aren't we not represented? But I have to tell you, the most recent Scream, I know, has two Latinas in it. Two. Okay. After how many Screams? I know. Exactly. So, so your point is made. Yes. yes. There's a little tiny bit of progress. Yeah. But can we do more? Absolutely. Absolutely. Should, should we have been there 10 years ago? Absolutely. Absolutely. Actually, we should have been there 50 years ago. Exactly. So that, that that's all I'm saying. So my thing is this. I want to recreate the crack epidemic, the gang epidemic. Mm -hmm. and in the midst of all that, throw in a motherfucking vampire. <laughs> That's what I want to do. Are you going to cast me? I'll be in it. Hey, if I get the budget. <laughs> no, remember, I don't act for fame or money. Okay. I act for, for creativity in the art yeah. and the content. That's what I do. Yeah. You, you know who I want to be my main star in this movie? Mm. I already thought about it. A lot of people may trip out on what I'm about to say. <laughs> He's a fucking amazing actor. Doesn't get his flowers. Who? John Cusack. John Cusack. No, I respect him. John Cusack. I respect him. Okay. He's a good actor. Yeah, so that's what yes. I want to do. He's a good actor. It's going to be based in the late 80s. High fidelity style. Yes. Yeah, you remember so high fidelity, John right? Cusack, if you're watching, yeah. I don't think you're watching, but just <laughs> in case, you know, I'm going to be hitting you up. So, yeah, so I, I want to yeah. do a fucking scary <clears throat> movie. That's why I want to do an action movie and then come back to a fucking scary movie. Yeah. I, like, I swear to God, I want to outdo The Exorcist. I'll do it. I want to I'll outdo do the fucking Exorcist. Do it. I grew up, look, The Exorcist came out in 19, I believe, 73. Yeah. I was born in 68. I was five years old when I saw that motherfucker. And I was <sighs> fucking traumatized. No. So whoever the director is, yeah. I'm going to outdo your bitch ass mm -hmm. straight up. Cause I'm I was gonna get her. Too. Yeah. I, okay. So I'm gonna get a real demon possessed toxic bitch. So, <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna do for the San Fernando Valley. So anyway. let me tell you, my mom, my mom, my mom made us kids, me and my sister, watch The Exorcist. Okay. So I told you on a previous episode, right? Okay. I said I said you couldn't pay me a million dollars to watch The Exorcist, which is true. Right. But I because I watched it when I was a child. Okay. Because my mom made us watch it on like a VHS thing. Yeah. Because she was too scared to watch it by herself. So she had us watch it with her. Yeah. And I was traumatized as a child and I couldn't sleep. Okay. But like that is, okay, The Exorcist is the ultimate of Epitome. the ultimate of the ultimate of the ultimate of scary films it ever. Is. It is. So if you can top that, 
kudos to you. No, I am. Props I am. To you. Especially if that fucking bitch, <laughs> fuck me, <laughs> fuck me, and then fucking stabbing her pussy with a fucking cross. <laughs> like what demented ass director? You know what I think? Who thinks of that shit? Yeah, I think she needs. She stab. I think she needs to stab her pussy with a cross. So, uh, somebody give me a cross. Cross. Okay, cross. give it to her. Action. Cross. Fuck me. <laughs> Fuck me. I had nightmares for years. Years I had I, I could not sleep. I couldn't I, even go same, to the same, bathroom. Same here. I was scared. Same here. Same here. Yeah. So I'm going to do that shit. Believe me. <laughs> You're going to do it. I believe I, you. I, I, I believe like in gonna, you. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make up a fucking fake demon possessing bullshit. <laughs> and I'm going to fucking I'll do that. So mm. watch. You'll see. But that's what I want to do. I want to do a fucking vampire movie. Then I want to do an action movie. Mm. Then I'm going to come back to horror. Uh, um, I love fucking horror movies. Mm -hmm. You know, especially, you know, us Mexican people. You know what the crazy part is? We got so many stories. We yes. got so many superstitions and stories. And You're like from the Czech, from the Czechel. Okay. I'm also, I, I just call it Czechel for short. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, the, the reason why I call it Czechel because I had a homeboy from the neighborhood called Czechel. So I asked him one time, why do you call him Czechel? Why you call why you call yourself Czechel? Because yeah. I be checking fools. Oh. That's what he said. So I said, okay, cool, Czechel. <laughs> So anyways, he was about 400 pounds and stank like shit. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, so <laughs> every, every Mexican family has a story. Mm. Se me pareció el diablo. Yes. The devil appeared to me. Yes. And he was handsome. He had his hair slicked back and he had a fucking goatee. <laughs> Bitch, you just described me. You know, like. Wait, but, that sounds like dad. <laughs> yeah, Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> No, like, let me tell you, every single family member, yes. every single, okay, so my mom, I believe my mom, I believe my mom, my mom, my mom has this ghost story. <clears throat> she does. Share it with us. So my mom, okay, let me tell you, let me, let me set the setting. Yes. I'm a little kid, me and my sister, I'm probably like five years old, me and my little sister are at my aunt's house with my dad, my dad, his sister, my aunt, and my cousin. My sister, we're all there. I'm pl I remember this clearly in my head. I'm probably five or maybe younger because my brother wasn't born. And I remember playing in my cousin's bedroom with a, like a fireman hat. He had like a fireman hat and we were playing there. And then my dad b burst in the room and he's like, hurry up, we gotta go. We gotta go home and I'm like, we're like, oh shit, okay, all right, all right. So then me and my sister, we run out, we go with my dad, we jump in the car. No, This was the no seatbelt era, right? No seatbelt, you just hop exactly. in the car. Nobody wore seatbelts. You hop in the car, my dad is like speeding home. We get home and my mom, it's, it's weird because I remember this, my mom is, when we drive up to the driveway of our house, my mom is outside in her nightgown, which is all white. And she's like standing outside in like the sidewalk with her nightgown and my mom looks like she is fucking frozen and her face is like white. And then she tells my dad she saw, she saw a ghost and she's like screaming, crying. She's hysterical. And this is my mom. So I'm believing my mom saw a fucking ghost and she describes what happened. She said, I was laying in bed and there was this like skeleton that like appeared and I saw it and I sat up on my bed and I started ch like chasing after it. I turned on the light and it was like running from me. And, it was, and she's like, I was turning on the light in the hallway in the bedroom and it was running and it was like a skeleton of a, of a body. And she's just like, what the fuck? I just saw a fucking ghost. So she called my dad because she knew where he, he was right. at and we were at my aunt's. And so they came and she was like, I'm not going back in that room. I'm not going back in that room. She's like crying and everything. I'm like, my mom never lies about shit. My right, mom right, saw right. this shit. Like that's real. Right. So in the house, we never went back in that room. No, no. I, I believe that never. there's fucking something Ever. on the fucking other side. Ooh. And I ain't trying to fuck around with it. Ooh. Seriously. 
You you think you could be the hardest motherfucking gangster, mm. but when fucking something pushes you and you can't see that shit, you're gonna motherfucking run mm. straight up, homeboy. Mm. So that's my thing. I believe in that shit. So that's why uh, I'm gonna make a fucking dope ass fucking movie. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah. And with vampires. <laughs> you know, you know. Okay, let me ask you. We got a couple of minutes. Uh, um, Sonia, do you believe in UFOs? Do you believe that there's life outside of Earth? I do. I, I because it's. It's scientifically possible. The, like, why wouldn't it, it be? I'm glad you said possible. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad you didn't say proven. It's not proven, but it's possible. Okay. Yeah. Well, anything's I mean, possible. It might be proven, but I don't know. But I mean, I'm like, sure there's might be fucking secret, fat people secret, on right? Mars. Right? Yeah. But, you know, but my, but th my it's thing. It's possible. My yeah. thing is this there is such thing as proof and evidence, mm -hmm. okay? I want to see it. <laughs> I I want to believe uncover your shit. Yeah, I want secrets. to believe in UFOs. I want to believe in Bigfoot. I want to believe in chupacabras. <laughs> I fucking want to believe in all this shit. Show me proof. Don't just tell me I saw it and me, I need to see it, it abducted me and it for it forced me into a weight loss program and then it dropped me <laughs> off six months later. You know, I mean, fuck. I'm like, cool story, bro. But oh. Show me proof that there's life outside of here. Mm -hmm. So far, the government has not provided anything. In 2021, they said they were going to show proof. Mm -hmm. Come June, they just show blurry ass fucking, you know. <laughs> like, Fake, like, uh, bro, we got CGI. Yeah, we got phones <laughs> that will shoot better shit than that, bro. <laughs> My you, nephew can shoot better yeah, shit than that. <laughs> like, we stop. Stop with your 1970s bullshit. <laughs> My, so it's, now, let me, do you believe in Bigfoot? Do you believe Bigfoot exists? Mm, I believe there could be a version of something that looked like Bigfoot. What do you mean that version? Exists? Like Meaning a like, remix? Yeah, like like there's something that, yes, there is some type of formation, some type of aberration that it exists in this world that people have seen. Because it didn't come out of nowhere. Uh, I, I mean, what if it's just a deformed, hairy kid? <laughs> With a lot of hair? Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying like... like well, you know, my thing is this: show me proof, because all we have is the picture of this motherfucker doing I mean, this. I mean, come on, like a footprint. That's all a we have. No, show me. Yeah, give me some more substantial proof. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you believe in chupacabras? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, I believe in it, but I pronounce a little different. Chupa y cobra. She sucks and charges. So yeah, she usually comes from the San Fernando Valley. But anyway, yeah, chupa y cobra. Not chupa cabras, but chupa y cobra. So Those yeah, exist. we usually call them Miss Pac-Man. Those exist. Yeah, so, because they think they can gobble up enough balls and move up to the next level. And that shit never happens. But anyways, go ahead. So chupa cabras. Okay, chupa cabras, what else do, we what else do you want to ask about? Um, Llorona. Do you believe that Llorona exists? We have a bunch of crying ass bitches, mm -hmm. but do you believe that Yorona, mm -hmm. the one who drowns her kids, you know, she cries and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so, um, I kind of half, I kind of like half believe it because. So you're <laughs> half ass about it. <laughs> okay, well, because I'm, I'm realistic, but also like, okay, so my grandmother and my uncle. Uh-huh have like experienced these things in Texas in like a cemetery. Like mm -hmm. my, my, my grandmother outside of her house and the stories like she's experienced outside of her. I mean, I mean, this is a ranch in Texas right, right, right. where it's pitch black outside. Very and pitch black. And when you so look outside and you're like, if I see some red eyes and yeah, yeah, I'm seeing that shit. Like, so, so my uncle who, who was the realest of the realest of the realest of the realest. Right. My uncle would not lie about that shit. He's like, he's like no nonsense. Don't even joke with me. He's not even, right. I'm not even going to laugh at your jokes kind of person. If he says he saw something, I'm going to believe him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he saw shit. So it's like. Uh, even if it was him. just a butt naked midget on all fours <laughs> with red glasses. I, if he saw it, he saw it. I, I'll believe my uncle. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. You know, but it's just hard. Yeah. See, here's my thing. So please forgive me. Yeah. If I don't believe in a lot of these Mexican traditions yeah. of like these horror stories, I just need fucking proof. Well, what it is about the Yorona, I think it was mostly for our for our, our grandmothers and our moms to keep us inside the house so that right. we don't go outside at night, 
right? Like, yes. don't go outside. You don't know going to get you, right? Okay, so then I was scared to go outside. I'm not going to sneak out the right. house because I'm like, you don't know going to get me. So why would right. I do that, right? So I get it. It's like a, you know, I'm going to scare you out of getting out of the house kind of thing. But, <laughs> all right. you know, I I'll, don't know. I mean, I don't necessarily believe in Yorona, but I believe in like spirits. Yeah. 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 All right. Cool. Now, do you believe that a person could be demonically possessed? I do. Okay. Now, do you, mm -hmm. now, now let me remix it. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that a person could be demonically possessed and not know it? Hmm. Like she could, a person could be demonic and not not hmm. even fucking know that she's demonically possessed. I believe that. Why? Why? Because I've seen it. Tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me <laughs> more. Like does he have a car? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> tell me more. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've heard a bitch's voice change in front of me like a fucking man. Oh, shit. Everything was like, hi, Tony. Hi, this. Hi. I'm going to mm -hmm. take this phone call outside. All right, cool. We're, I'm sitting right here. All oh, of a sudden. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. What happens? All of a sudden, I hear, fuck that motherfucker. <laughs> Tell that son of a fucking bitch he's got it fucking coming. He's going to fucking pay for it. Watch what's going to happen to him. I'm like, who fuck? is you? So I tell I tell my boy right here. I go, yeah. what the? Is there a you fucking? You were here. You were here. Yeah, he goes. <laughs> I go. Is there a fucking dude outside? So I walk outside, and I oh, see okay. the same girl right here oh, shit. with a soft voice. Tony, I'm gonna take this phone call outside. I'm gonna take a phone call outside. Tell him he's got a fucking come, and I'm gonna expose that son of a bitch. And I see her, and I'm like, I'm gonna fuck his and, ass up. Yeah, and, and then she goes like this. So I come back in. <laughs> fuck was that yeah no i just had to talk to somebody really quick <laughs> i just had to talk to somebody and i'm like you <laughs> fucking <laughs> demonically possessed ass bitch <laughs> she had a fucking man fucking voice that was fucking reagan from the exorcist <laughs> the sexorcist the sexorcist all the yeah. pseudo names <laughs> yeah i was like what the fuck like, Shit. that's just one of the many. I could keep going on, but that was one of the fucking many. There's no way that a woman could have that fuck. A demon was speaking through that fucking Damn. bitch. Straight up. A demon was speaking mm. through that bitch. Mm. So if you want another model, let me know. So, yeah. Sure, sure. Alex, bring me another one. model, please. Yeah, please. Right. yeah. Yeah, bring, I had... Bring I me had, one, too. I had so. um, an ex of mine. So... I used to have an ex who was uh, in the military and he like was stationed in different parts of the country. What was he like? R I mean, I mean, ROTC? I mean, no, he was fucking military. He was like, he was airborne. He would like fly out of, he would drop out of planes. He would like, he was legit. Yeah, yeah, he was legit. Legit, legit. And so um, he was stationed different. <clears throat> he was stationed in like all these different places. So I would go like, go see him. He was in Korea and Germany and like North Carolina, like all these different places. Yeah. And so um, for him, like for him as a person, he wasn't about to lie to me about his experience. Right, 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 right. right. And so he had called me one day. He's like, let me tell you. He goes. I met a demon possessed whore. He goes, he goes, last night. There was a fucking demon over me. Like I was laying in bed and there was a demon that was over me. And he was like holding my chest down and holding uh, me down. Like a sleep paralysis almost. Yeah. And he's like, I couldn't move and I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't talk. I couldn't move. And he was just like, it's this fucking like devil demon that's over me. And I'm like, what the fuck? And like, he's not one to like Lying lie bullshit. about his yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if he's telling me this shit yeah. is happening, it's happening because he's a, a strong person. And if you're confiding in me that this should happen, I'm like, this should happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it kept happening. He kept calling me. He's like, it happened again. Yeah. And this fucking demon was haunting him. It yeah. kept haunting him and haunting him. And like, I'm like, what the fuck? 
Like that, like demons are real, you know? I believe that. Checo, yeah. do you believe the demons are real? Yeah, I believe. <laughs> you believe? Yeah, I believe. Now, now, yeah? now, now, just for people that don't know, we have a guest that's from where? Czech Republic. Czech Republic. And what is your name? Lenka. 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 Her name is Czech Republic, so make sure you get that Lenka right. <laughs> okay. Visiting from the Czech Republic. Yeah. So for now on, we're going to call it Czech. So, Czech. Yeah. Czech. Czech here. Republic. <laughs> now, where exact for the people that are maybe not that educated, uh, where is the Czech at? Where Czech Republic at? In the middle of Europe. It's the heart. What is in, it next to? What are Germany, the next? In the heart of uh, Germany uh, and Europe? Europe. Yeah. Okay. okay. Germany, Poland, Slovakia. Okay. In okay. the middle of Germany. Uh, Poland, Poland. Austria. Austria. Slovakia. Slovakia. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. I've cool. been to Germany. You've been to Germany, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I've been to Germany. Okay. Okay. So if I'm a router, I'm going to hit you up, Checo. Okay. <laughs> So, all good that's, okay so that's if you've ever been to disneyland mm -hmm. and if you've ever been to main street on okay. disneyland that's what germany looks like <laughs> for real yeah well i mean okay so i've only been to i've traveled to frankfurt and stuttgart in germany and like when i walk through the streets i'm like this looks like main street in disneyland like what is this? Right. Okay, I, like I'm going to ask you a question. I don't know if you know. I don't know if you know. When my friend married his girl from Germany, mm -hmm. and he went out there. Keep in mind, mm -hmm. out here in, in the United States, we look at Hitler as a bad person. Right. Oh, yeah. That in Germany, he said this, that they look at him different, the opposite, like almost like a hero. I don't know I don't if that's know. true. I don't know. Is you that true me. or not? I don't think so. Okay, I don't yeah. think so. Okay. Maybe that was just his girlfriend's, you know. Interpretation. Yeah, interpretation. Of it. Because yeah. that they, because he, his girlfriend took him where, on the concentration camps, yeah. where the Jewish people were killed. Yeah. And that they were telling them, like, a tour. Yeah. Hitler had great ideas. Hitler this, Hitler that. So they were looking at him like he was something great. Well, the, what I know, I, I don't know a lot about Hitler. Right. But what I know is that he didn't, grow up the person that he was when he was Hitler, right. known as Hitler. I heard that. Yeah. But like, okay, so leaders, if you're a leader, if you could lead people into the vision that you have, no matter what the vision, whether the, whether, whether the vision is positive or negative, if you're a great leader, you can lead people, right? Right. And, and, and so, so for my day job, I'm a, I'm a leader. So I lead people. Okay. And so I, I lead with values, but it depends on what those values are. So for Hitler, his values happened to be negative, but he was a charismatic leader. So guess what? People followed him mm -hmm. because he was a charismatic leader. We need more charismatic leaders that are in the positive, that are in like Look, doing the good. Right? Like let, let me give you an example. I didn't vote for Obama, but Obama was a very charismatic person. <clears throat> you didn't vote for Obama? No. Why? He was a senator for two years <laughs> and he came out of nowhere. You know why? Because Oprah promoted him mm -hmm. and he became a president. You know what that told me right there? Yeah. Anybody could be president if somebody popular promotes you. Mm. Here we have the penetrator, I mean the terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, he became was, governor all because he was the penetrator. I mean, terminator. You know. So that was unfortunate. That was unfortunate. So I'll just I'm publicly saying that that was unfortunate. <laughs> but no, but I didn't vote for Obama because I didn't know who in the fuck he was. No, I voted for Obama. Let me tell you, I was fucking livid. So I was, I was, <clears throat> I was so for Obama. I was so for Obama. My boss at the time, I had an Obama sticker on my car. I had an Obama sticker on my bumper of my car, and my boss goes. <clears throat> in the business environment. <clears throat> I think someone vandalized your car. I'm like, what? What happened? Someone vandalized your car. I'm like, what? Someone put an Obama sticker on your car. I'm like, excuse me? I put that sticker on my car. And he's like, really? You're voting for Obama? I'm like, 
yes, fool, I'm vote, voting for Obama. Like, yes. And he's like, oh, I thought someone vandalized your car. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> no. Then I realized where I was working, I'm like, where I was working at the time, they were all Republicans and I was the only fucking Democrat. No. I'm like, okay, yeah, I gotta leave. See like, you, I'm neither a Republican or Democrat, but I didn't know enough about, about Obama to vote for him, hmm. other than fucking, oh, fucking fat ass Oprah, uh, Orca, <laughs> that, that fucking was promoting yo, him. Yo, 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 Oprah's my girl. Like, I, 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 I get it, but Oprah. I don't, whatever. <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oprah can fucking say tomorrow. She says, "Don't eat meat. Nobody eats meat, and the and the meat market goes out yeah. of business." That's exactly. what I'm saying. She could say, "Ron Jeremy's president." People and then will, Ron Jeremy becomes yeah. president. He, <laughs> that, she has that, so much power in her in her voice. Exactly. Yeah. So my thing was like this: like, look, whoever was going to step into office was going to mm -hmm. step into debt. We already know that. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you a fucking dumb fuck who's in office right now is fucking Biden. <laughs> I'm not for Trump and I'm not for fucking Biden. Here's my thing. This is the best we got? This motherfucker's a month away from dementia. Like, seriously? Like, no wonder what everybody oh, outside of the U.S. is fucking laughing at us because of this fucking clown, fucking I'm a Biden. Democrat, but no comment. Yeah, I, <laughs> Biden over here fucking with his Michael Myers hair, you know, like seriously, like the fuck, like. Yeah, I can't. But I rather take Biden over fucking Hillary mm. ass, fucking murder, murder ass Clinton, you know. But, but yeah, whatever. Anyways, <laughs> let's keep it pushing. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you right now. Obama's reign is not over. Obama's are probably going to have Michelle, you know, uh, um, you know, run. Hell but, yeah. But Hell here's, yeah, I would vote for Michelle. Here's my Hell thing, though. Hell yeah. Let's would be honest. Would y'all vote for Michelle? Now, uh, hold Hell on. yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. Be honest. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard the rumor that Michelle's a man? Hmm. Let's be honest. Have you ever heard? Yes or no? Just yes or no? I've never heard it, but, you know. I could see the like, okay, so, so every relationship, like we're talking earlier, we were talking relationships. There's always a balance between alpha and beta, beta right? Yeah. So, okay, this may not be, this is not popular opinion, but my opinion is, okay, there's a balance. Female sensuality, I don't want a man that's a beta. I want an alpha. Right, you so, want a leader. So if I'm, okay, I know I'm a strong woman, but like, I want a man who's gonna be the masculine and I could be the feminine. Right. So that I can be the female that I am and be the feminine the feminine that I am. But I need a man to like be the masculine so I can be my femi feminine and there's a balance. So when it comes to Michelle and you know Obama, I'm like, yeah, Michelle's an alpha. She definitely is the alpha in that relationship. So how does that work? Right? But she but might be an alpha because she's a man. <laughs> There's a video on YouTube where she's dancing and you can see her ball swinging. <laughs> Look it up. Michelle Balls. Okay? Oh my God. Whether that's true or not, she's dancing and you can see her fucking ball swinging. So they were saying that those kids, no disrespect to the kids, yeah. but they were saying that <laughs> this is social media. Obama's a, a reptilian that Michelle is a man and those kids were rented. She's not a man. Those kids were not rented. He, they, they're a real relationship. But the truth is when you, okay, so if you were to look at the balance between the masculine and uh -huh. feminine, okay, Michelle is like right here and Obama's like right here. Like right, right there. Like, okay. like right there. Like right there. Okay, now, Joan Rivers. We're going to look it up after, okay? Okay. Joan Rivers said this. We've had our first gay president. Mm. Mm. Joan Rivers, before she fucking died, before she kicked the bucket, she said, our first gay president is Obama, and he is married to a man. She said that? Yeah, Joan Rivers said, fucking mm. said that. Now, she might have been talking shit, yeah, talking whatever. Shit. She might have been feel, full of tequila, but <laughs> <coughs> but she said it. 
Mm. Okay. Yeah. No. I, mm, no. When you got people yeah. like that in high power <laughs> exposing your ass. So, no, let me tell you. So, Joan Rivers, right. Uh, what's her daughter's name? I forgot her daughter's I don't name. Know. Her daughter is also in the industry, right? But, um, so, in San Jose, there's this, there was this football team called the San Jose Sabercats. And mm-hmm. um, Joan Rivers' daughter, I forgot her name, sorry, was like part owner of it or something. And so I was, so I would go to the games, the okay. football, indoor football games, and I would see Joan Rivers' daughter at the games and stuff. And so I know, and sometimes Joan River would come too. And it was indoor football and it was like all a big thing in San Jose and stuff. But like, I always felt like, Joan was like fucking she like she was always the alpha. Mm-hmm. She was always like like I'm gonna over I'm gonna like bulldoze anybody and everybody who's in my way. And uh, so her daughter was there. She I think I, I would see her at a lot of the games, but like I always felt like there was always this like need to approve being the man of like well, being the masculine of everything and i'm like dude just enjoy the fucking football game enjoy it you know what i mean like why do you gotta be that way like just chill enjoy like you don't gotta be the master of everything you know just right chill, right 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 you know but i mean i don't know like i don't mm, joan rivers i don't know i don't know me neither really. i'm just telling what you said <laughs> so all of this is public knowledge, and I'm just mm-hmm. relating it to it. She said Obama was gay, and yeah. homegirl was a man. When I saw the video of her dancing and her balls are wiggling, <laughs> I believed it. <laughs> unless you, unless your pussy got bat wings, you know what I'm saying? And those CGI, fucking, CGI. Yeah. I mean, anybody can edit anything yeah. nowadays. Like I don't even ex- <clears throat> anything that I see online. I'm like, that's not real because someone could right. edit that. Someone could CGI it, that. Yeah. Someone could PDF. That. Someone could Photoshop that. It doesn't. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing online is real ever. Editing ever. today is amazing. Ever. It's amazing. Look, let's be honest. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow, they could put you on, and then put a penis on, a penis print, and then say, "So yeah, but how does a man?" Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> but I, I'm just being hypothetical. But that's true. People can do it today. Yeah, yeah. You know, people can do well, okay. it. Okay, so, so let me tell you. Okay, so let me tell you. Yeah. So, I was a part of this production. Shady-ass production. Shady. There's what a lot the of shady of, productions out what there. What was the name of the production? I ain't gonna say. Ah. But, I left the production because of the shadiness. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not about that shit. I'm not doing my acting shit for fame or money. I'm huh. doing it because I want to act. So if you, you can't res- if you can't respect me as an artist, then I'm not going to do it. Right. So I left. But I heard from everybody that in retaliation for me leaving production, there's all this shit talking about me. And I'm like, <laughs> like, really? Come on. Anybody who knows me that knows me knows I'm not about that shit. So you can't, you can't, you can't talk about me like, like nobody knows who I am. Everybody who's ever worked with me, and I've been in the industry for so long. Yeah. Everybody who's ever worked with me, anybody, any director, any producer, any actor, any extra who's worked with me, hair, makeup, wardrobe, anybody who's ever, ever, yeah. ever, ever ever worked with me has nothing bad to say about me but this one production Mm -hmm. was trying to talk shit about me because i was leaving because i was like this is not about my values i can't i can't it's not aligned with my values so i left talk shit about me and i'm like "Mm, yeah no so if anybody knows me knows i'm not about that i'm not gonna stay on this shit because you are you say who you are and because it's gonna pay me whatever you're gonna pay me no i'm gonna leave because you, if you're not respecting me for who I am as an artist, exactly. I, I'm not going to stay. So you have to be able to have some values and some like, like, like a uh, uh, line in the sand to say, I'm not doing that shit. Right, right. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. 
you can't you can't do that to me. And if you're going to talk shit about me, that's fine. But everybody who knows me knows I'm not about that. So I've got so many years in the, in the industry for them to say, no, Sonia's not about that. Mm-hmm. So so no, I don't believe you. So I have no worries. I have no worries. Adult. But there's so many shady people in this world. There's so many shady people who are about trying to use money and fame as the reason for you to do something. Yeah, of course. You know, let me say this, and it pertains to what you're saying. Mm-hmm. I've interviewed female artists. All of a sudden, I, I posted the flyers. Mm-hmm. Okay? I get a phone call. Oh, yeah, man. I heard that bitch used to be a part of this group, and everybody ran a train through her. Mm. Okay? Another phone call. Oh, yeah, I heard my homeboy discovered her, and he fucked her, and that bitch is easy. All right, cool. All right. Third phone call. Yeah, I heard that fucking bitch, like, she's a fucking straight fucking hoe. She gives it up to anybody. You're probably going to get laid tonight. All right, cool, man. All right, bro. Gracias. <laughs> Hang up. The female comes in. I ha- I'm going to tell you right now about everybody, everybody fucking watching one thing that I've been blessed with, that I have a good, uh, uh, um, how would you say, what would you call it? Uh, uh, gauge, like a good uh, uh, gauge or measurement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, of a person's character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. so when I meet someone, mm-hmm. I could shake someone's hand and mm-hmm. immediately know si es una persona buena o una persona mm-hmm. mala, mm-hmm. a good person or a bad mm-hmm. person. Mm-hmm. And I met the person that everybody was talking about. And shaking this female's hand, and I immediately knew those motherfuckers were lying. They were hating. Yep, yep. So I sat down Mm -hmm. with this person, and we started talking. They started opening up. Mm -hmm. They started talking about these fucking people, how they were all fucking lame. Yep, yep. And then I'm like, there's always two sides to the story. Always two sides of the fucking coin. Okay? Always. I'm still friends with this fucking person. Mm -hmm. And those fucking lames Mm -hmm. prove themselves who the fuck fuck they are. Mm Mm-hmm. Puro pinche chismosos. They were just trying to throw fucking dirt on her fucking name. Yeah. Probably because they asked her out and she said, no. I'm That's not exactly about that. what happened. Or like, I'm not about what you're about. Yes. So I'm cool. Mm-hmm. But like the rejection, they're like, oh, fuck that. I'm going to talk yes. shit about her. Right. There's a meme that says this. <clears throat> fuck that hoe. And then in the bottom it says, the fool that didn't fuck. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> And when I met this person, I thought this person was successful. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest with you. I have a pretty good judgment of character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I thought this person was such a beautiful person. Mm-hmm. And I told myself, there's no there's fucking no way. There's no way. There's no fucking way. I get that. You know? I get that. I go, these motherfuckers were just fucking mm-hmm. hating. And then I found out later that they were just trying to get laid. And she said, yep. fuck you. Yep. You know? And, then, and I'm like, I get it now. And yeah. I became such good. I've known this person now for two years. And she's, she's never have mm-hmm. let me known anything wrong with her character. Like, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, dude, come on. Like, how can you fucking try me? Mm-hmm. Dude, do you fucking know me? Don't try me. Like, no. Nah, yes. No, nah, I'm not about that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's... it's, it's and, and, and that's the problem <laughs> with Hollywood, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of these guys think because... Okay, look, I won't mention the name, but tell me to tell you his name afterwards, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> please, honestly, say, Tony, okay. you told me to mention this director's yeah. name. And he's a Latino. Yeah. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I was hanging out with this di- so-called director. Mm-hmm. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I'm 53 now. At the time, I was 51. You're not gonna impress me, bro. I was signed yeah. to Disney, I and I was there. For, shit. Look, I was there for seven, <laughs> seven years with Disney. Yeah. One of the biggest companies in the world. I was label mates and doing remixes for Queen, Freddie, Freddie Mercury. Okay, you're not gonna impress me, bro. Yeah. Okay. What you so, say? So I'm just there listening to him. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I did this. I did this. I did this. So we were talking, and there was a cooler full of beer, and a girl comes by, and he goes. Hey, he goes, hold on. He goes, hey, here's my phone. Put your number in it. She goes, 
Why? Because I'm taking you on Chicago. I got a boyfriend. Fuck your boyfriend. Do you know who I am? <laughs> goes, I'm a director to this next new movie. Put your number and? there. I'm taking you out to dinner. <laughs> and? <laughs> and you know, you know what I said? Hey, big dog, I'll, I'll go in and talk to you later. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. Hey, I just followed you on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Follow me back. Never follow that motherfucker back. Yeah, no. Okay. No. No. At that moment, that motherfucker showed me who, who, who he was. Yeah. So I posted a picture where there was like five people yeah. in it, mm-hmm. and he was in it. Mm-hmm. Five different girls, okay? Five different girls hit me up and told me like this. Hey, how, how well do you know that guy? Yeah. And I said, uh, I, I just really met him well. that day. Yeah. And he just happened to be in the picture. That motherfucker not only tried to rape me, the next girl, not only that motherfucker forced himself on me, not only that motherfucker fired me from the set, mm-hmm. not only that, because they, he would, uh, she wouldn't mm-hmm. give them up. Mm-hmm. Okay? I've been through that shit. Yeah. I've been through that shit. I'm like, okay, you're going to fire me? Remind me to tell you who that is after, you're gonna please. You're going to fire me? Yeah. I'm like, okay, all right, see ya. I don't need this shit. Mm-hmm. I don't need, mm, oof, oof. That's like upsetting because I'm like, yes. okay, I don't, I don't need this shit. I'm not a desperate right. actress trying to get some work. I ain't going to like bow down to you because you say you're a director, you're a right. producer. No, no. If you're not going to respect me, mm-hmm. fuck that shit. No, respect me and then I'll audition. I'll go through the, through the normal chains. Mm-hmm. I'll audition. I'll earn my part and I'll get, I'll, I'll do the work, right. but you're not going to try to get shit out of me for this shit. I'll leave. Why? Because I don't need this shit. Right. 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 That, 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 that's dope. I'm glad. I'm glad. And most, like I said, weak men would be intimidated by that. A strong man will say, look, I'm going to respect you. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me show you a couple of more roles and tell me which one you feel comfortable with. Mm-hmm. Cause I really want to work with you. But I, I mean, I mean, but like, 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 okay, so, but, but the truth is, it's like, there's a balance, right? right. So, and <clears throat> that's my work life, but relationship life, it's like, okay, so, you know, you don't want a weak man, right? <laughs> but you want a man who's like, going to be like, I want to see you. Oh. I want to like someone who's going to want to like take control so it's like, like you said earlier, like your father. So my father's like alpha. He's right. the alpha of the family. So, so I mean, if somebody's an alpha of the relationship, it's like, okay, you know, that's what I respect. I respect mm-hmm. that. So it's got to be a balance, right? Mm-hmm. So there's masculine, there's feminine. There's got to be, and I'm all about being femi- feminine, but you got to be masculine to right. allow me to be feminine. Otherwise, I'm going to take the role of the masculine. Right. Right? Like like some okay. girls. Right? Quick story. Uh, I hope he's not watching because you know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want his- a beer? Do you want a shot? No, you're good? <laughs> Anybody want a shot? Come here. You want a shot? Alex. You want a shot? Okay. Alex, <laughs> give, Alex, give her a shot. Where's the cup then? Okay, give me a hat. <laughs> Alec, come over here. Give her a sh- serve her a shot, bro. Show her a fucking good ass. Serve morning. her a shot. Show her how us we medals fucking <laughs> serve shot. So we're shot. trying to introduce Lenka to the American life. Yeah. And Lenka's from the Czech Republic. So we call her Czechle. Czechle. She's Czechle. Yeah. Her nickname is Czechle. Her nickname is Czechle. Yeah. That's my lady, my girl, yeah. <laughs> my best friend, <laughs> my roommate. No, bro, you want if you want a shot. Oh, uh, there's a, a cup over there. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think relationships have to have. Right. Oh, so, so, so like, okay, so my dad and my mom, right? So right. I mean, I don't know how you how you raised. But everybody's raised different. I get right. it. But my father and my mom. My mom is the ultimate wife. She's the epitome of what wife should be like. It, she she cooks for my father. She cooks breakfast, lunch, right. dinner. She makes sure he's fed. He's right. he's like she she like 
attends to him. My, my dad protects my mom. Right, 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 right. And makes my mom feel protected and loved, like wanted and needed and supported and needed. So like they have the masculine and feminine right. balance. Fucking awesome, dude. That's old school. Yes. Who does that shit? Who does that shit now? Today, nobody does. Okay. Nobody does that shit now. It's like, who does that? Like, I fucking, can you go to the classic masculine, feminine balance, right? Right. right. Nobody does that. And you, and you know what the sad thing is that today, <clears throat> this generation is raised on TV shows and music. Yeah. Oh. And a lot of these guys are based, fuck. Mm-hmm. A lot of these guys are fucking pussies today. <laughs> let's, let's just be honest. A lot of these guys are fucking pussies. <laughs> say it again. What you say? What'd a lot say? of these guys today are pussies. Straight up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this this story was told to me two years by a female friend that I've been knowing since high school. Mm-hmm. A female friend. She heard the fucking the door. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The husband. Her man, whom I know, woke her up and told her, just, babe, babe. Somebody's at the door. Somebody's at the door. Go get it. Go get it. <laughs> she goes, yeah. Do you hear that? Yeah. Go check. Fuck no. Go oh, check. hell no. If I'm a fucking woman and you're a fucking man and you're my man, you need to go check that shit. E- exactly. Because you're protecting me. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I do? Yeah. If my woman woke me up, Babe, someone at the door. You know what I do? Mm. <laughs> and you know what I do? I'm like, baby, well, I'm baby, getting my stand behind me, baby. Set up. <laughs> stand behind me. No, I'm gonna get my on. gun ready. No, no, hold on. Stand behind me. <laughs> the fuck's going on over here? <laughs> No, the, oh, the gun over here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Baby, they I'll left. Like, Baby, they left. Like, yeah. I don't think they're fucking here. Come on, let's go to the room. <laughs> All right. Ain't <laughs> 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 hey, no motherfucker my, my, my scare me. Fuck that. They were like, oh, shit. Look, if I saw a motherfucker creeping through my window, you know what I do? I pull that motherfucker in. Beat the shit the out shit? of that motherfucker. You want to see this shit? Yeah, beat the shit up. You know what I do? And I strip his ass, tie his ass up, and call the motherfucking cops. Do that shit. Yeah. I'll do that shit too. Yeah, come through. Do and you know what I do? do? Here's my property. Exactly. I'm going to tie your shit up. I'm going to call 911. There's an intruder. In my house. You know what I do? I shove a fuck. I restrained him. Yeah. I shove a bat up his ass. And you know what I'll say? Your Honor, he came in like that. I didn't get it. I don't know where the bat came from. Yeah. He he came butt naked with a bat up his ass. I don't get it, but I protect him. I fear for my life. So. Oh, shit. Why were you hard, sir? Well, you know, I just wanted to open up the door. <laughs> Why were you hard, sir? I heard your girl had a gun. <clears throat> it was my love gun. So yeah, that was me. So. My gun, where I <laughs> execute love. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Fuck. Let me, let me stop. <laughs> okay, let me stop. Oh let me my stop. Oh my God, right this is awesome. This is <laughs> yes, awesome. Yes, 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 yes. This, this, right. this is better than hostile. Okay. Better than hostile. Okay, yeah. so I'm alive. Yes. I didn't get kidnapped. Yes. I didn't get raped, but I thought I would. Yes. So. And you were ready to jump out of the window. The only reason why I'm alive today <laughs> is because I was raised in the east side of San Jose. Right? Because Eastside San Jose prepared me for all the shit that I would experience as a woman in my <laughs> adult years. Yes. And I was like, fuck that shit. No, nobody ain't gonna kidnap me. Yeah, exactly. Nobody gonna take in me. They ain't gonna nobody get away gonna, with that shit. Nobody gonna, like, 
you know, outsource me. Oh, hell no. Do they know who I am? Do, nah, I mean. Do they know where I'm from? Oh, hell no. So I'm like, no, 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 I'm going to jump out this window. I'm going to jump out this window. Nobody going to kidnap me. I will die before somebody kidnaps me and rapes me and puts me as like some friggin'. <laughs> no, 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 no. Do you know who I am? No, no. <laughs> No, but it, no, no, but obviously I'm alive. <clears throat> I was never kidnapped. I yes. was never raped. So, like, I mean, yes. So <clears throat> I'm here. All I'm good. here. Yo, I want to give a sh- big shout out to everybody <laughs> in the live chat, everybody who's commented, subscribed, whatever, uh, shared, or whatever. So, um, once again, <laughs> want to thank everybody. Uh, I'm waiting for people to start dropping money. You know what I'm saying? Mega Man will be on here soon. Uh, he's taking care of a personal business. Uh, and he has yet to give me a date, so that's why he hasn't been on. But other than that, we have none other than Sonia Balcazar, and she's been an awesome, awesome guest. And I'm going to say this. This is not her last time here. We need a part two because, you know what? She, she knows how to be an awesome guest. That's all I'm going to say. So other than that, uh, <laughs> somebody put Tony. Tony is wet. How in the fuck can I be wet? Seriously, how in the fuck can I from the ass, motherfucker? Like really? What the fuck? So, so <laughs> Tony, what the fuck? What? Uh, not, not I'm a man. I said I said Michelle was a woman. I mean a man. A sh- so, Michelle so, was a man. Yeah. So now I'm no. a woman. What the fuck. <laughs> So anyways, Alex, uh, any updates? Anybody sh- shoot any money other than uh, Robert Hernandez? No, nobody. Okay. <laughs> Let's give a sh- once again a, a shout out to Robert Hernandez. Robert Hernandez. Is that his name, bro? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and give it. Uh, Robert Hernandez. Yeah, shout out to Robert shout Hernandez. Shout out yeah. to Robert uh, Hernandez. Yeah, thank you for uh, making it rain. Mm-hmm. And I uh, want to thank everybody who's given. And those that ha- haven't given, those are on the fence. Once again, if you want to give, cool. Mm-hmm. If you don't, cool. Uh, once again, we have Sonia Balacastar, mm-hmm. and we have her friend. Uh, what's your name again? Lenka. Lenka. Uh, uh, from the Czech Republic. From the Czech Republic. It's hard for me to remember that, <laughs> but Lenka, once again. Lenka. Yeah, Lenka. I- I've never heard that name before, so please forgive me. From the Czech Republic. And she is here in the motherfucking house, house. in the city of Wilmas. So Ooh. other than that, um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> she said, Ooh. so if you want to draw money, cool. I, I'm not talking about emoji money. I'm talking about real fucking money. Okay. So, uh, yeah, people are dropping emoji money. Like, you know, that's like, you know what? Being popular on social media is like being rich in Monopoly. It's true. It's very fucking true. It's true. And some people let that shit go to their motherfucking head. I'm certified. Mm. Bitch, you're still living with your mommy. You're 35 years old sleeping on the fucking couch yeah. with a blue check mark. Yeah. Mm. Get the fuck out of here, you mm. fucking lame. Mm-hmm. So, bro, you know what? It's funny because people have told me like this. Hey, I want to interview. Uh, submit your music. I'm certified on Instagram. Bro, you could have bought that shit. I don't ever fucking heard of you. Yeah. You know, exactly. yeah. you know, sorry, motherfucker. So <laughs> stop dropping fake money. You know, here, Tony, somebody dropped a fuck. <laughs> somebody cook, somebody named L.A. Rams. Yo, I love your sense of humor, bro. But drop some real shit. So <laughs> if you want your business promoted, you want your uh, uh, OnlyFans promoted. If you want your strip club promoted, your business promoted, whatever. Drop. I don't give a fuck if it's a dollar. Drop it, and then we'll go ahead and promote you. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> so, other than that, I'm good. I'm going to keep sipping on this fucking tres. And then I said, bro, we're fucking almost done yes. with this motherfucker. Oh, my God. We did that shit. So, oh, shit. So, yeah. How much more you got left? What's that? Fuck. <laughs> I got to give you a refill. <laughs> so, so if you, you got a nice drive home. Mm-hmm. So... So, nah, I mean, mm-hmm. so, anyways, so, mm-hmm. Sonia, 
Is there anything we didn't talk about? Anything we didn't share? Anything you wanted to bring up other than the cucks? Mm-hmm. You know, um, we're good. We're good. We covered a lot. Okay, yeah, we did we cover covered a lot. A lot. Oh, <coughs> we covered probably more than I thought I would. You thought you would, huh? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, Okay, here we have oh, bird flight, nineteen oh four. Here's some agua for you, Tony. Ha ha! He dropped two dollars. You know what? You know what? You know what? Two dollars buys me two top ramen. <laughs> Thank you. Two top ramen. You know what? That's dope. I'm glad that you gave big dog. Mm-hmm. So once again, bird flight, nineteen oh four. Muchas gracias. So I'm gonna eat one. And Sonya's gonna eat one. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna get the packet, smash that motherfucker, throw it in the fucking hot water, open up the hot packet, fucking do that mm-hmm. shit, and then we're gonna mm-hmm. eat that shit. Mm-hmm. And then we're gonna Facetime each other and eat that. <laughs> shit. <laughs> Tony, you eating yours? Simon. So yes. So um, other than that, Sonya just announced that she's gonna be an American Me Part Two. It's called American Me, huh? So we're coming well, up. Well, coming out is yeah. um, um, King of Downey. King of Downey. Our our pilot episode is being chopped out. Right? Uh huh. That Doctor West Ferber is my second film. Also uh, in Broad Daylight, which is in the film festival circuit. Um, uh, Monochrome with Joe Chacon. So there's a, like a lot of stuff coming. Oh, sorry. There's a lot of stuff coming out in 2022. So look out. A lot of shit coming out. And then I'm creating my own content as, mm-hmm. as well. So like there's so much, so much, uh, so much opportunity. I'm like blessed, blessed and grateful. Mm-hmm. Happy. Thank you. So yeah. <laughs> I want to encourage you out of the company of your home. Yeah. Believe it or not. Start your own podcast. Start your, start your own podcast because really? I truly believe really? people will be interested in your story and whoever you want to interview because you could take it any way you want. Mm-hmm. You know, acting, adult content, and just talking real shit. Yeah. I truly believe people will tune in. Yeah. So I'm asking everybody not only follow her, support her. Thank you. But whatever she comes out with, you know, be there because this is a very, very interesting individual. I truly believe in her talent and I truly believe that she's going to make it. And I'm just thankful that this is my second time that I yeah. get actually sit down with you and talk to you. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. and Thank I support you. her. So Sonia, whatever you need from me and my Rodian radio team, we're here for you. Okay. Thank you. Whenever you want to come back, just let me Thank know you. and we'll make it work. Yes. I, uh, the question you asked earlier, it says, would you vote for Michelle Obama? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 83 votes and um, 37% said yes and 63% said no. Mm. Mm. Probably because she has balls. <laughs> <laughs> so. well, thank you, but thank you. Like, uh, the truth is, <clears throat> I am blessed to be on your show. Yes. I am blessed to be on your show, Tony. I am grateful to be on your show. Thank you so much for like supporting me, believing in yeah. me. I'm grateful. That's it. All I want to say is I'm like sending you so much gratitude. That's it. Gratitude. 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 And you know what? I, it's important for me to say this, okay? And I mean this like like truly 100. I'm 53 years old. In March 28th, I'll be 54. And I've always said this um, when I hit my 50s. And I, and I shared this with my son. I said, mijo, when I hit 50, I said, I have more years behind me than in front of me. So from here on forward, I want to help our people. Yes. I want to help yes. our people. Yes. When I, when I die on my tombstone, it's the, I only want one thing read. Here lies Antonio Roberto Alvarez, a God-fearing man. Mm-hmm. And he tried to help. Yes. Yeah. That's all I want, okay? Yeah. So whatever I can do to help, you know, if I have a platform that people watch, guess yeah. what? Just hit me on my email and you'll be here. Yes. Okay. And Sonia, mm-hmm. I just want to help you. Thank you. And, and, and you know, all I expect in return is this. 
that you help the next person. Yes. Yes. That's all I, I want. I believe that. I believe that. Yes. Thank you. So, yes. from here on out, whatever you got coming out, hit me up. Say, Tony, I got, I'm singing now. I'm rapping now. I'm, you know, I got a movie coming out. <laughs> You'll be back. So that's it. That's it. It's all about her. Because let me tell you something, Sonia. If we don't help each other, who who is? Exactly. Exactly. Rasa. 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 We gotta help each other. Like, let go of the egos. Let go. Let go. Let go of your egos. We gotta help each other out. Mm -hmm. We gotta help each other rise up. Let it go. Like, rise up. Help each other promote each other mention each other's names and yes. rooms we're not even in like do that shit that's the only way the ras is gonna rise up do that shit because that's what i'm all about do that shit yeah i appreciate absolutely. it absolutely thank, thank you so much i'm so grateful i'm so grateful tony i'm so grateful you. well you know what you're very very welcome because let me tell you something now that we have a platform here at Rodium Radio, I yeah. encourage other people that if you have a platform, let's just help others. Yes. It's not about numbers. Look, at, I know other platforms, and sad to say, sad, all they want to do is talk cheese me. Mm -hmm. They just want to gossip. Mm -hmm. This is the latest. This. I could do the same thing, yeah. honestly, and get views. Mm -hmm. I don't fucking care about that. Because if I did that, I would be exploiting mm -hmm. our people. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I don't want to do that. I would right. rather help our people than exploit our people. So here we have a platform because we don't have a Mexican or a Latino MTV. We don't have yeah. a Mexican or Latino right. Vlad TV. We don't have a Mexican or a Latino, you know, a no jumper. We don't have a Mexican or a Latino fucking drink champs. We don't have any of that. But you know what right. we have? We have Rhodium Radio. Right. We have Dining with the Wizard, where people come here and they share the story. Yes. And you know what we have? You know what? Radio. Yes. I have Latino. Dining with the Wizard. I have my own people tell me, all you're doing is interviewing a fucking bunch of nobodies. <laughs> Who do you want to see? Here's what they mentioned. Dr. Dre, Snoop, Game, Too Short. You know what I answer? Mm. At one point, Dr. Dre, Snoop, uh, uh, Too Short, Game, they were all nobodies because yeah. nobody knew who they were. Yeah. At one point, they mm -hmm. were all fucking nobodies. Yeah. So now, according to you guys, help me make these nobodies a somebody. Somebodies. Yes. It, well, why would it hurt you to support? Exactly. Why like, would it? Why would it hurt like, you to share, to like, like to that's, comment? That's what we're doing right now. Like. That's what you're doing right now. Yes. It's like, okay, so all these people are like already made. I get it. But you got to make new new people that you're supporting. So you got to do that. Yeah. You got to do that. You you got to do that by supporting yes. new artists. New artists and like, uh, Road and Radio is getting these artists on. Yes. And like promoting them. And you guys support Support, 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 support Rasa, support yeah. Rasa. We gotta support each other. That's what, that's that's what it's all about. Support each other, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, somebody commented and said, "Oh yeah, they're both drunk. Whether we're drunk Fuck or not." Shit. Here's my thing. I, you know what? <clears throat> okay, hold on. If I'm chilling with my brother or my cousins. I'll be saying the exact same shit. Thank you. If I'm chilling with you, with you, whoever is saying they're just drunk, I, if I'm chilling with you, I'd be saying the exact same shit. Yeah. So believe me, if I'm expressing this here, yeah. I'd be expressing this with you directly yeah. if you're chilling with me and drinking. So... Know that this is real. Yeah. It's real, right? Absolutely. And, and if you feel that yeah. way, you know what? I'm going to say this. You are part of the problem. Mm -hmm. If you're Rasa and you feel that way, yeah. you are part of the problem. 
if you're saying, how come we never climb up? How come we never go up the ladder? How come we're not famous? How come we're not popular? Especially mm. if we're hip hop's economy. If you're saying that, you are part of the problem. True. So, True. other True than story. that, uh, Sonia Balcazar. Oh. It, is there any oh. shout outs you want to give? Let's go. Oh, shout out to my cousin, Red Balcazar. <laughs> Red Balcazar in Vegas. I'm flying out there tomorrow. 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 My cousin. Oh. So let me tell you, my Balcazar family is fucking strong. Mm -hmm. My Balcazar family is fucking in the hundreds. I got cousins in the hundreds. First cousins in the hundreds. Balcazar, I'm seeing you tomorrow, Red. Uh -huh. Oh, so shout out to my, my cousin Red. Shout out to my brother, brother love, brother love, my my brother, Cisco Balcazar. Oh, shout out to you. Shout out to my brothers, Jaime Sanchez, Darius. Oh, I'm just like so blessed to be surrounded by so many good people. I'm just like, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I love you guys. I love you guys. And let me tell you, I'm surrounded by so many good people. That's all I know. That's all I know. So oh. thank you. Sonia Balcazar in Ow. the motherfucking business. <laughs> in the motherfucking building. In the business. Okay. So once again, I'm going to give a shout out to Checo. Checo. <laughs> yeah. Czechoslovakia. No. Czechoslovakia. What was it? What is it? Lenka from Czech Lenka Republic. From the Czech <laughs> Republic. I'm, I, I apologize if I said Czechoslovakia. But, okay. So, yeah. So, once again, I'll give a shout out to her. Let me give a shout out to my boy Alex, Alex Arvantes. Let me give a shout out to my boy Anthony, the hip hop Jedi. My son, B. Scandalous. And the new oh. member to our team, Norbert. So, I'm gonna, we're going to have to give you a new name because Norbert doesn't sound cool. <laughs> Even, I'm going to call you an NB or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> NB, you know what? He just had a, a burrito de carne asada. <laughs> so let me give a shout out to him. Uh, let me give a shout out to everybody that like, commented, liked, subscribed. Everybody who was positive, everybody who's negative, I don't give a fuck as long as you tuned in. Mm -hmm. uh, um, everybody who dropped money, cool, whatever. I thank you for that because Rodian Radio would not be here if it wasn't for you. And I want to say that. We would yes. not be shit without our fans. Mm -hmm. How many other podcasts would say that? Okay? Yes. We would not be shit if it wasn't mm -hmm. for you guys. So thank you. Thank yes. you very, very much. Yes. We'll be, we will be back Sunday with a very special guest. Other than that, I want uh, once again, I'm going to extend my gratitude and my love to Sonia Balacazar. Once again, uh, on the description, her uh, um, Instagram will be there. And her Instagram was there on during the interview. Make sure you follow. Make sure you make sure you support her. Oh. I think that's truly, truly important. If you mm -hmm. truly claim that you're for the raza and you want to support, look, it doesn't help to like, comment, and share. It doesn't. It doesn't hurt us. Yeah. Look, let me be an example. I support her. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mm -hmm. comment. You know. You. I share. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Let's do that for each other. Because let me tell you something. No other ethnicity is going to do that for us mm -hmm. except for us. Mm -hmm. Okay? Stop looking for everybody else to support us. Let us start right now, 2022. Mm -hmm. You know, put your pride aside and mm -hmm. let's say, I want to see Sonia make it. I want to see Tony make it. I want to see Joe Blow make it. I want to see. It's not that hard. We're not asking for fucking money. Mm -hmm. We're just asking for, for support. So, yeah. other than that, um, you know what? Um, I don't know. You anything else? Support Rasa. Yeah, support Rasa. Eat them up, eat them up, eat them up, eat them up. So all you cooks out there, uh, thank you for tuning in, and um, you know what? We'll see you soon <laughs> next week. So uh, much love to all you cooks. Go ahead and play that shit, Alex. <laughs> Yeah.
You got it.